Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, good morning and welcome to the Cattlemen's Congress. We are excited to get started with another day here at the third annual Cattlemen's Congress. The show is managed by cattlemen for cattlemen. We're excited to have each and every one of you here with us in Oklahoma City. Over here in ring two, we're going to get started with your pulled Hereford Bull Show. We'll be bringing in class one pulled spring bull calves born May 3rd of 2022. Over in the Shorthorn Ring, we will get started with your junior purebred show. First class in the ring will be class one, late spring heifer calves. Well, good morning. What an excellent way to start here with a single entry. This calf could have stood a lot of competition. He's a really rugged calf. He's exceptionally sound on his feet and legs. He's taking this trip good, too, for a May baby. Got a lot of rib in this bull when you get behind him. He dang sure doesn't disappoint you at all. Uh, maybe a little bit tight on his ankles when he gets out there, but I don't think that has anything to do with his structure because he does get around so good. It's probably just the stress of the trip, but really a massive maid. Really good individual here to start. Well, congratulations over here in ring two. Results of your first class here in our Pulled Hereford Bulls show. First place and congratulations. We'll go to back number 303-21-LF-8121, home record 2150. Bred known by Connor Rhodes of Paris, Illinois. Now entering ring two will be class two here in your Pulled Hereford Bulls show. These will be spring bull calves born April 3rd of, through April 20th. We're excited to welcome your judge today in ring two, Mr. Jason Hoffman of Thedford, Nebraska. He's a seed stock producer that sells over 600 bulls, Hereford and Angus, in the sand hills of Nebraska. He ranches with his parents, Denny and Dixie Hoffman, along with his wife and three children. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome our judge in our Hereford ring, Mr. Jason Hoffman. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting started with your Shorthorn show over here in Ring 1. This will be your junior purebred show. We're excited to welcome your judge today, Sheremy Viator. Sheremy grew up in South Louisiana. As a student, she was very active in 4-H and junior livestock activities. Eventually, she, she served on the National Junior Angus and Brangus Board of Directors and won national showmanship contests in both breeds. She attended Clarendon Junior College and graduated from Texas A&M University. While at A&M, she was a member of the Livestock Judging Team. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome our judge in the short horn ring this morning, Ms. Shermie Viator.
nice trio of heifer calves to start off with on our short horn purebred side. Heifer calf that separates herself from the t uh, just the other two in terms of base width and, and, and just the combination of traits. She travels away from you with more lower base. She's squarer at the hock as she goes. She's wider chested. I think she's the combination female in the class. With that added width, you can see she opens up at the top of her scapula just a little bit, but nature says when you have a big hip, you're going to have just a touch of shoulder. Really juvenile, fresh kind of a female stands here in the mid spot. She's one that, uh, she's the youngest female, but you love that attractive, just really feminine angular look. You want to change her just a bit as she goes away from you. She closes up and narrows at her base, just a little tighter at the ground. Young man's female, she's the boldest bodied, higher performing female. You see quite a bit more maturity up through her head, neck, and brisket, been pushed along a little further. Love the rib shape and the cow look from her mid rib back. Want to tidy her up in that front one third to be more competitive in this class. Nice class of Hereford bull calves over here. <clears throat> a lot of give and take in these bulls. There's some features I like on some bulls in two, three, and four better than I even do in this calf. But I think he's the combination calf. Got a lot of look to him. Maybe like to see a little bit more fore rib there and just a little soggier, but he's a youthful appearing calf. It's got a lot of shape over his top and back through his hip. He's got as much natural muscling as anything in here. A lot of breed character and extra pigment and freckles and just a lot of extra bells and whistles. I like this calf here in second awfully well too. Really like the back two thirds of this bull. The problem is he wants to labor a little bit off of that front end. Just a little straighter design in that shoulder than maybe what's ideal, but, but man, he's really an expressive calf, and he too has plenty of muscle in him. The calf here in third is another very youthful appearing calf. He's a soggy made bull. He's really loose made, and I like how he gets around the ring. Um, his testicles want to twist ever so slightly. That's not what's got him beat, because it's probably just an attachment of the skin there. He just doesn't have the overall style and balance of the two calves ahead of him. This calf in fourth here is really, really massive, really soggy. He's the pounds heavy bull of the class. He's a little bit more narrow gauge than what you'd think from the outside and probably just a bit much for me at this stage of the game. Well, congratulations over in the Shorthorn Ring and a good way to start out your junior show. Congratulations in Class 1, exhibited by Morgan Vondra, GCC TRN, Dream Only 28. Second place in that class, and congratulations will go to Jessica Turnbaugh. And third place will go to Tristan Hobaugh. Now in the ring is Class 2. These will be late spring heifer calves. Back in the Hereford Ring, results from Class 2. Congratulations, first place. Bred and owned by Clay Huber is BCH. Showed Pingo, 12 ET. Second place in that class, and congratulations. We'll go to Burns Farms of Pikeville, Tennessee, with BF Savage Son, 4K ET. Third place in that class, and congratulations to Pied Piper Farms. In fourth place to Andrew Ray. Now in ring two, we have Pulled Spring Bull Calves, born March 11th through March 22nd. We'll place these cattle as they came into the ring. And, and the two females, when you watch them and you just study on them, they're actually fairly similar in terms of rib shape, in terms of overall length. So it begins to be a structure contest. And the female that we start with, the young lady with the spotted female, we watch that female get out and go. And her advantage steps, it starts up at her loin and how she handles her pin set and all the way to the ground. She just gets out and handles her hind leg more correctly, probably has just a 
touch of advantage of length to her front one third as well. Young lady, let's leave that spotted heifer out. Young lady's female that stands here in second is really bold and powerful in terms of her lower stifle and that added muscle and just she's a little more uh, rigid or, or excuse me, a little more restricted out of her hip and then as she goes to the ground, just doesn't handle her hind leg quite as soft and confidently as that one that wins the class. Both of those females are really high quality, good doing, big body kind of females separated them on design of their hind leg. Well, congratulations over in the Shorthorn Ring. Results of Class 2, first place exhibited by Talia Ferguson Sanders of Chickasha, Oklahoma, with F. Dorothy Spice 26-12. And second place, and congratulations in that class, exhibited by Adeline Vaughn of Maxwell, Iowa. We'll now bring in Class 3, late spring heifer calves. There's some give and take in this class, and uh, these bulls are plenty stout for their age, I think, but they're really masculine, especially this calf that leads the class. like a lot of things about him. It'll be interesting to see how this bull develops because he's awfully good right now. He's uh, really, really massive. He's as sound from the side as any of them. Gets around, fills his track good. Got a big top and a big hip in him. Just a very efficient type bull with added look. Presentation's excellent. The bull here in second, I like a lot of things about. He's probably the big, high-performing, long, lengthy bull of the class. A little bit more tubular in his rib design when we compare him to the bull in front of him. Like the big square testicles he's got. Maybe like to widen him up just a little bit when you watch him walk from behind. That's an awfully good bull that adds a lot of length. This bull here in third matches the bull in second awfully good. Really appreciate this bull for the youthfulness he possesses. He's really a good, attractive bull. I think his best days are ahead of him. If this bull go ahead and body down, he's as good as the bulls ahead of him. That's a really neat set of bulls. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring. Results of class three. These are pulled spring bull calves. First place and congratulations. We'll go to Curry Herefords of McAllister, Oklahoma with CH Premier 233 ET. Second place in congratulations goes to M&M 611 Kingsman 207, bred known by M&M Cattle Company of West Burlington, New York. And third place in that class, exhibited by Cameron Oaks of Toluga, Oklahoma, with VH2R United 233 ET. We're now going to bring in your first and seconds, and our judge, Mr. Jason Hoffman, will select his champion reserve pulled spring bull calf. Really a good class, and there's going to be a pair of these bulls that match up really good. The oddball probably being the calf out of the second class. Relative to his class, I thought he put the most quality up. This calf in the back here will be your calf champion in this division. Let's pull that second over, and we'll look for reserve. Well, congratulations in your first division, your champion. We we'll go to Curry Herefords with a CH Premier 233 ET coming out of Class 3.
quite a bit of variation in these cattle, both in a phenotypic standpoint and genotypic standpoint. But the young man's female, I, I think she's the compilation female. When you look at her in terms of structural integrity and body and rib shape, and I'll be the first to tell you that for, I believe it's uh, May heifer calves, they're plenty mature for me and, and carry plenty of condition. And I don't think we need to go any further on that. Um, but this female, you set her in motion, she hits her track better. I think there's probably just a bit more extension to that female in terms of length of hip. I think from a balance and eye appeal standpoint, she has the advantage. Big bodied, soft, a little uh, bigger middle female stands here in second. I think she's one that carries more chest, carries more condition up front, maybe just a quicker mature kind of a female. I don't read quite the length and extension of body and just total length as we have out of our class winner. Love the, just the, the attractiveness to her front one third. Female that comes here in, in third, she's one that gets out there in terms of our birth weight predictions and has some challenges there. You combine this with the fact that she's lower set in her pins and, and she as she gets out and goes, this contributes to how she handles her hind leg. She's the most juvenile female out here and I appreciate that about that female. She's really green. As she progresses and fills out, she's going to be really attractive. We just want to redesign that hip structure. This next one comes to us with quite a bit more openness through her forerib and with a chest floor, really expressive in her muscle pattern. But with that added expression of muscle, she's out, stands on the outside of a skeletal wall behind. We give, want to give her more flex angle off her shoulder and redesign her hawk for her to be sounder down the road. But still, big bodied, stout made kind of a female. Well, congratulations back over here in the Hereford ring. Your reserve champion in that first division coming out of class one. Congratulations to Connor Rhodes of Paris, Illinois with LF 8121, home record 2150. We're now going to bring in class four. These will be Horn Spring Bull Calves born May 17th of 2022. Too bad this calf's a single entry because I think he could take a lot of competition. Just a very complete calf. He's got some added look to him. He's got some extension up through that front end, yet he's still bully enough for sure for this stage of the game. Tons of rib, lots of natural depth through his heart and back to his flank. He's got muscle in him, just really thick, really complete. Got some extra cosmetics too. This is a really nice single entry. Well, congratulations in class four, first place. Bred known by Purple Rain Cattle Company with Purple Santana 101 KET. Next class in ring two will be class five, Horton Spring Bull Calves, born April 19th of 2022. Back to the Shorthorn Ring results from class three, late spring heifer calves. First place in congratulations will go to J.S. Cecilia 2J02, exhibited by Barrett Griffin of Batesville, Arkansas. Second place was exhibited by Dixon Fry of Independence, I Iowa. Third place in that class, and congratulations to Jocelyn Phelps. And fourth place in that class will go to Emery Robertson. Now currently in ring one, we have our final class in this division. This will be class four, late spring heifer calves. Another really nice single entry. This bull's got some added look and extension up through his front third. This bull's really expressive over his top. Got some shape back to his hip. Maybe not as massive as some will see, but he's very youthful, and I appreciate that about him. Got a big old set of square testicles underneath him. He's pretty clean sheath. Just a really good individual here. Well, congratulations in ring two, class five, Horn Spring Bull Calves, first place. Bred known by Pied Piper Farms of Hamlin, Texas, will be PPF Honcho 34K. We're now going to look to see class six over here in ring two. These will be Horn Spring Bull Calves, born March 3rd through March 21st.
exceptionally exceptionally good class here of these March bull calves. Bull that wins the class is exceptionally long. Um, really, really long body. Back when he first came in, I thought, man, this bull might just be a little bit short strided. He's not. He's so long bodied, he actually does a really good job of covering his track. He's a long extended bull. He's got as much length up through that front third as any of the bulls in here. With that, I think he's got as much natural muscling as well. Really squaring out on the corners on his feet and legs. He's got a good set of testicles. He's a freckle face bull. That's as high a marbling bull as we've seen yet. The bull here in second definitely got a lot of luck. Love this bull on the standstill. When he wants to move, he's just a little bit straighter and coarser up in that shoulder. Probably doesn't have the forerib I'd like to go with that. But man, super attractive, presented to the nines. Lots of look. Uh, when you get behind him, he doesn't disappoint you. He's got a lot of shape to him. This bull here that concludes the class kind of matches the bull there in second in terms of look up through that front end. He's a little bit of a lower profiling bull. I also see him as being a little bit more narrow gauge than two bulls ahead of him. But super long relative to his frame size, he's freaky long. He's got some shape to him too and big testicle. Three very useful types of bulls. Well, congratulations over here in ring two, results of class six, Horn Spring Bull Calves. First place in congratulations will go to GKB Cattle with GKB 86-88-6011 Bel Air K102ET. Second place in congratulations goes to Sarah Orr with YB Buster Moon 756-212ET. And third place in that class, congratulations, bred and owned by Samuel E. Hunt. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in, and our judge will select his champion reserve spring bull calf here in your horn division. A little bit of give and take in this division, but when it comes right down to it, I think there's a bull that probably suits many of us as breeders to turn out. That'd be this bull out of the third class here. He'll be your division champion. Then I'm going to follow with the little young calf up from the first class for reserve. Nice, useful bulls. There's some give and take in all these bulls. All these bulls have their place, and you can see them for what your needs are for your own program. But when we get out here and we combine the show ring with the numbers, and the quality and the herd bull potential, I think this lines out nice. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring. Results of your first division here in our Horn Show. Congratulations. Your champion will go to GKB Cattle with GKB 86-88-6011, Bel Air K102ET. And reserve champion in that division. And congratulations goes to Purple Rain Cattle Company with Purple Santana 101KET. We'll now look to see your next division. This will be Class 7 here in your pole division. Junior Bull Calves, born February 1st through February 26th. 
This is lots of fun to sort through, and as shorthorn breeders, I'd be really proud of this set of females from top to bottom. Female that just kind of works her way to the top because she's the one that's the combination female. Um, she's the soundest at the ground and still has some freshness and combines that with lots of rib shape and body. You read her from her chest floor back to her flank. She balances well. She's plenty heavy in condition for me. I guess that's the one thing it is I wouldn't want to go any further on that female. But she has an advantage when you how her shoulder hooks into her forerib, how she's just more pulled apart there, and, and just the design of her forerib into the point of her shoulder is more correct than the female that stands right here in second. The one in second is probably just a touch leaner in her forerib, so you see more boldness to her shoulder, but you really one that's nice, nice and high out of her neck, and, and you like all of those things. She just doesn't hold all those pieces and parts together quite as nicely as the one that wins the class. She gets out and goes in her hind leg, and when she comes to the ground, she's going to stay sound forever, just not quite as attractive and soft as our class winner when she hits the ground, but still one that I appreciate in terms of just being a touch fresher in her condition, a little tighter in her forerib, not quite as complete as the one that wins the class. I love the pattern of this one when she stopped. She's one that's really, really sharp in terms of her lines, in terms of femininity and presence. You appreciate that. She gets to where she's shorter couple but really the thing I'd change on her she goes away from you the weights on the inside of her back foot she wants to bring her hawk in some and just kind of wedges in and downward as she goes away beautifully presented high quality female the one if I was going to show next summer this is one that I'd sure be betting on she's green right now and of those top four she's the greenest and I like this maturity on this female the extension is right on this female the flex and the give is right in her structure she drops her pins ever so slightly just gets a little flatter in her stifle width relative to those ones in front of her, but I love the juvenile look of this female. She's right in her maturity. And that's the advantage she has over this next female. This one's big and bold and stout and powerful and pushes the envelope in terms of some growth opportunities there. But you read this heifer about her head and you read her just in terms of the condition she has. She's a bit mature. If you want to say she's the bold, stout one and run her and, and higher up, I don't disagree with you. Just for me, I, I think that she pushes the envelope in terms terms of maturity, but she's big powered, stout, good moving, just want to freshen her up some, make her a bit more juvenile. Young man's female is a little bit leaner in her presentation, but she's also straighter in terms of the angulation to her shoulder and knee. She reads with that knee setting further forward. Just want to give her a bit more flex there, give her a touch more lower stifle. Young man's female that comes around next gets pretty rigid out of her hock. She doesn't set down as with as much authority and give as we'd like to see, so just loosen her up there, just redesign her structure. Young lady's female is long and attractive, very feminine. She's the flattest and lightest muscled female out here. We just want to give her more power to be more competitive further up in the class. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring results of Class 4. This is your final class before we go into Division. First place in congratulations went to Berg's Miley Myrtle Bow, exhibited by Caitlin Berg of Osage, Iowa. Second place in congratulations went to Morgan Brooks of Venus, Texas. Third place exhibited by Miller Smith of Pendleton, Indiana. Fourth place in congratulations goes to Josie Heater of Raymond, Kansas. Fifth place was exhibited by Abilene Sullivan. Sixth place in that class, and congratulations to Cannon Clear. Seventh place exhibited by Zach Johnson. And eighth place went to Annabelle Rose. Now entering the ring are all your first and seconds here in our late spring heifer calf division. What an awesome lineup of bull calves. The calf that wins the class, he's hard to pick a hole in. Man, he is good looking. He's got plenty of rib. He's got plenty of depth to his heart. 
this age, he is just phenomenal on the eye. His testicles might twist a little bit, and I, you know, nobody's ever been able to tell me what's wrong with that. I don't think we want anything extreme. I don't think we'd ever want to really mess up our bull market. But if I was to pick on him, that'd be about the only hole I see in that calf. I don't want to pick on him because he's a really good one. The calf here in second is probably one of the pounds lighter. Well, he is calves in here. But I think in terms of design and freshness and just mainly youthfulness, this calf needs to be second. Along with that, he's super sound on his feet and legs. There's a tremendous amount of quality here. As this calf develops, I think he'll close the gate more on the calf in first than any of these. The bull here in third, I sure like a lot of things about really like him on the stand still because he's got some really intriguing pieces. He's super long up through that front end. He's a bold sprung calf and he's super deep. I think this calf's got a little more condition on him than what you might see from the outside. And I think he's already deposited in some of that in his underline. I like to tone him up, harden him up a little bit to get him further down the road. Um, the back two thirds of this yellow calf have herd bull written all over him. Massive rib, deep sided, really thick. Just like to give him just a little bit more slope to that shoulder when you ask him to go around. The bull here that follows him, of course, are in his design. And to a point, his birth weight EPD matches that. Uh, this bull's got a little bit more shoulder, tons of bone and power, as much muscle over his top and back through his hip as any bull in the class. Just doesn't line himself out as nice as the other bulls. We get into a pair of bulls here on the bottom. I think they're a little bit more shallow in their heart and mid rib. And they carry that all the way back to their flank. Really long, extended bulls just like to soggy them up a little bit to get any higher. We'll keep it pretty simple on our divisions today. And you'll, uh, I'll get to where I sound like a broken record, but the cattle that are the most complete are the ones that are going to surface to the top. Heifer, that one's our oldest division, checks all the boxes for me, our oldest class. A so young lady, let's pull her out. She'll be our division winner. Congratulations. Gets a little closer when we get uh, to our second in here and just start looking at the cattle for uh, in competition. But I think as a pair, when you consider the two cattle, she's the one that's ne next most similar to this one that wins the division. She's going to be our reserve. Congratulations to those young people. I don't know who's picking the music, but y'all are doing a really good job. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring out of our first division, your champion coming out of class four. Congratulations, Caitlin Berg with Berg's Miley Myrtle Bow in reserve in that division. Coming out of the same class, congratulations goes to Morgan Brooks of Venus, Texas with SFF CPRU. Roses are red, RK 247ET. We'll now bring in class seven. These will be early spring heifer calves. Back over in the Hereford ring, we have the results from Class 7 first place, and congratulations. Went to Moore Cattle Company of Medill, Oklahoma, with CMCC Cool Profit K001ET. Second place in that class was bred known by Drew Perez of Canyon, Texas, with RPC 84460007 Rocky 228ET. Third place, and congratulations to Curry Herefords of McAllister, Oklahoma. Fourth place was exhibited by Delaney Herefords Incorporated of Lake Benton, Minnesota. Fifth place was exhibited by Prairie Rose Cattle Company of Sherman, Illinois. Sixth place went to Cayenne Eck of Putnam, Oklahoma. And seventh place in that class, and congratulations, goes to Quentin Ray of Brooksville, Kentucky. 
Now entering ring two is class A, pulled, pulled junior bull calves, born January 1st through January 30th. Really interesting quartet of cattle to sort through, and I, I think this one wins the class. 
um, and she's still she's not perfect by any means but she's bold and powerful and stout and still has a feminine matronly look as in terms of her neck and shoulder design for as much power as she has in her hip and bone she's nice enough in her shoulder she's on I guess probably on the edge for me in terms of how wide she stands behind but she's still more accurate in terms of her ha how she handles her hawk relative to some others behind her I think she's just the one that's the combination and has to surface to the top the real decision comes in the middle pair for me we have one here um, that if you're looking for genetic spread she has that opportunity there but with that said she's also one that's just, she's shorter fronted and that's because she her shoulder blade lays further forward we want to lay that shoulder blade back and, and just see her with more extension to her front end she's one that looks to be just a touch quicker pattern to me but what uh, I think about these two cattle and I kick them out in the pasture in my mind there's more chest floor width to that female there's more doability I, I just see her more pulled apart as a mature individual now the female that stands here in third is longer sided she's longer hipped you read her in terms of just lower base width and that's her disadvantage she gets tighter in her chest floor and her forerib she goes away from you quite a bit flatter and narrower behind I don't argue that pair very hard at all because I think there's give and take in that pair and then we conclude with a female that has some uh, just straightness of lines you want to change her in terms of how she handles her hind leg it starts up at her pin set and then as she goes away from you really has a lot of rotation in her hawk but still attractive from the side nice in terms of parallel lines could use some more body as well Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring. Results from Class 7, early spring heifer calves. First place, and congratulations will go to Anna Reddy. Second place in that class, and congratulations went to Ethan Connor Tapscott. Third place, exhibited by Lauren Berg. And fourth place went to Georgia Rose. We'll now bring in Class 8 over here in your Shorthorn Ring. These will be early spring heifer calves. Really an interesting class, <clears throat> several different types of cattle represented out here, but the combination bulls, this youthful appearing calf that wins the class, so sound, <clears throat> he's so wide based, I really like his angles. For a youthful appearing calf that isn't too far along in terms of condition, he's got a huge set of testicles underneath of him, he adds a lot of extra look and presence. But when you get on this calf, everything matches behind that. Then you get this calf on paper, and I think he excels. Really nice herd bull prospect here. The calf here in second matches him <coughs> quite well in terms of type and look. This calf's maybe a little bit lower fronted, but he's so sound on his feet and legs. And relative to his frame size, he's exceptionally long bodied. He, too, is a big testicled bull. I think he's got a lot of breeding value. The bull here in third's a little bit more on the extreme side. He really dark and pretty and got the cosmetics. He's a big bone bull that's got a tremendous amount of length. 
maybe just a little bit tighter in that fore rib, uh, a little bit higher in berth on paper. That's not what gets him beat. Those two just match up really good. Good types of calves up there in the front. <clears throat> the bull here in fourth, beef bull. Tons of mass and feeding efficiency. Like to give more slope to that shoulder if I could change this bull and maybe square his testicles up a little bit. As well as the calf that follows him. He needs more angulation in that shoulder. But with that, he's also tighter in his forerib and flank. He's an exceptionally long bull. It's easy to look at in terms of color and pattern. He's got a lot of breeding value. And he's just enough more bull to get over this calf that concludes the class. This calf's a little bit quicker to pattern and just plainer than a lot of the bulls in front of him. Very useful in terms of efficiency, though. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring in Class 8 Pulled Junior Bull Calves. First place goes to Grimmel Shockey Cattle Company of Manhattan, Kansas with GSCC Magnitude K02ET. Second place and congratulations goes to Brumley Farms with BF8029, the Rio Grande 01201K. Third place and congratulations bred known by Cooper Curry was CH. MR8212 Harold 205 ET. Fourth place in congratulations goes to Churchill Cattle Company of Manhattan, Montana. Fifth place exhibited by Piper Collier. And sixth place in that class in congratulations goes to Drew Perez. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in. Our judge will select his champion reserve, Junior Bull Calf, here in your pole division. Really a nice division of bulls here. Um, we're going to start, or we're going to make this you know, our calf champion right here out of this first class, and reserve will be the calf out of the second class. Really nice, useful bulls the whole way through. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring coming out of your junior bull calf division in our pulled show. A big congratulations in Class 7 will be your champion, bred known by Moore Cattle Company of Medill, Oklahoma, with BKCMCC Cool Profit K001ET. And reserve champion in congratulations goes to Grimmel Shockey Cattle Company, Manhattan, Kansas, with GSCC Magnitude K02ET. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. Now in ring 2, we'll look to see Class 9 as the horned junior bull calves born February 11th through February 20th. 
there wasn't a doubt in my mind and as I watched the cattle of which one I was going to start with and, and this is a female I'll steal a term from a lot of the college kids she's not the EST heifer she's not the extreme in any one trait but she is the most complete female out here and you read her you get her in motion and I think that's where she really shows off in terms of her balance and just how sound she is and still nice necked and big bodied and, and it's just hard to poke a hole in her when you get one that's that fun um, to evaluate you just have to appreciate her there's a lot of mating diversity in that type of cattle the one that's a just really dark maroon female is probably just a notch longer sighted she might be just a little leaner but I think that leaner leanness comes that she's probably the heaviest muscled of the top trio of cattle she didn't right over the top of her scapula she's a little bolder but that comes with that added muscle and I just found one that I probably like just to touch better in terms of how she hooks in behind her shoulder and into her forerib taking nothing away from this female because I think she's really high quality really good at the ground next female is extra long and she's probably the trimmest fronted most extended sharpest neck female uh, of the trio uh, of the females but she's also the flatter bone flatter muscled female and I watch cattle travel away from you quite a bit and you can tell a whole lot about muscle shape and skeletal width as you watch them she just closes up just a little bit but boy she's beautiful in her presentation and extension and really maternal and feminine and I like that about her her freshness is to her advantage relative to the, this next female um, our fun right in front of her is a little bit more attractive headed this female you read the white meat on her in terms of just the condition and you peel that off I don't think there's as much true muscle width to this female as you watch her go away from you again one that gets a little flatter stifled but she's open through the midsection of her body big bodied cowy level hipped nice design I just don't think there's quite as much of her when you peel all that off of her and then we get into a trio of cattle and the little cow person that sits on my shoulder says well this one is kind of lean and green and attractive looking but she's not going to hold together in terms of doability as those next two but I'm going to give her the doubt uh, or the benefit of the doubt today because I think she's sounder has more flex out of her hind leg more reach but we certainly want to body that female down and open her up through her midsection two more forage efficient looking females we conclude with they're just a quicker pattern cattle want to lengthen that red solid solid red female up give her a bit more attractive as to her head neck and shoulder same thing with the big bodied soft easy made one that we conclude with want to extend her out make her a bit more attractive up through her front end good doing kind of cattle to conclude the class there. Well, congratulations in your shorthorn ring. We have the results from Class 8, first place. Go to CF Crystal Lady, 290, exhibited by Mark Inskeep of Lafayette, Indiana. Second place in congratulations goes to McInley Evans of Lorenzo, Texas, with SN Chase and Dreams, 229 ET. Third place was exhibited by Kaya Hendrickson. Fourth place in that class in congratulations goes to Tyler Vondra of Mineral Point, Wisconsin. Fifth place exhibited by Abby Brown of Linwood, Kansas. Sixth place will go to Caitlin Moffitt. In seventh place, congratulations, goes to Ava White of Chandler, Oklahoma. Now in ring one, we're bringing class nine. These are early spring heifer calves. Really good class here. There is some give and take again, but the most complete calf wins. 
He's as good as any on his feet and legs. He's an attractive bull. He's got plenty of rib to him. He's got natural muscling to him. Maybe a little bit tight in his spine when he moves, but I think most of it's just because he's fighting this young man a little bit when you get him going. Kind of wants to droop off in his pins a little bit as a result of that. I don't think that's necessarily how the calf is probably every day. Really, the big powerful calf's here on second. He adjusted a little bit heavier on birth weight, and that kind of matches with his shoulder and bone and construction. This calf's awesome to look at. I'd like to smooth him up through that shoulder as much as anything. Tons of muscle and bone, and he's sound enough for as heavy constructed as he is as well. I like the youthfulness of this calf, and I really appreciate it here too. Um, I just don't know if this bull's just going to be sappy enough as he develops. The outline is fantastic. He's good up through that front end. He's laid in knee to his shoulder. He's got some shape relative to his condition as well. Really a nice, youthful, attractive calf. Calf that concludes the class doesn't balance out as nice as these other calves when you look at him in his heart girth and back through his flank. Relative to his size, probably like to see him just a little bit deeper there with a little more eye appeal as well. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring. Results from Class 9, Horn Junior Bull Calves. First place in congratulations goes to Hudson Carter of Stratford, Oklahoma with GHC BKMT, Kickin' Bird 51 KET. Second place in congratulations went to Cayenne Eck of Putnam, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Drew Perez of Kenyon, Texas. In fourth place in congratulations will go to S&W Pulled Herefords and Leading Cedar. Now entering two, we're bringing class 10. These are horned junior bull calves born January 2nd through January 14th.
some power and you know I I just can't believe how far this breeds come in terms of presentation um, the bull that wins the class I think he does so rather comfortably there's one concern I have with this bull and it's in his shoulder and his forerib but I think as we strip the condition out of these two bulls behind him I don't think it's a disadvantage this bull does have a little bit more shoulder he's a little bit more powerful there but this is the widest base classiest look and most youthful bull of the class love his style and design the way he is in the sweep of his rib the shape to his rib the upper hip and you get behind this bull and he is out on all corners he's as square and as wide based as any we've seen yet the bull here in second I like a whole lot about <clears throat> I'd like to tone him down just a little bit I mean there's plenty of bull here but I think he's got an unbelievable presence to him he too is wider base than the bull here in third got a lot of shape and masculinity to him huge testicle uh, I can't believe a bull of this quality can stand here in a class like this. This is a really neat class, but this bull's got plenty of condition on him for me. I don't think he's as wide base as the two bulls ahead of him. I like to pull him apart there and give him some more natural muscling. But from end to end, a really, really useful set of bulls. Just a bit of a, a physiological lesson here in relative. When God made cattle, when he puts muscle on a skeleton, is sometimes when you widen that skeleton up and you add muscle shape, those cattle become rounder ribbed versus deeper ribbed. When you get them really flat muscled, sometimes you give up and, and they're more uh, rafter topped and just deeper bodied. So with that said, we have a variation of cattle in here in terms of muscle shape and in terms of rib shape. And it's because of some muscle variability in the cattle and physiologically how they're designed. But when you just pick, look at them as individuals, the young man, let's lead that heifer up just a step. That heifer has a ton of presence. And then you look at her and, yes, yeah, she's bold bodied and big ribbed, but she also has some true muscle shape. She's round ribbed and she's deep ribbed. And she's one that I think that has a, a combination of a maternal blend with some power. And then you get this out and, and she's flat necked and real attractive, fresh in her presentation. So she surfaces to the top and wins the class. And, and I think she does so because of that combination of having some roundness to her rib, having some depth to her rib, but most importantly, the combination of soundness and freshness with that rib and muscle design. This female here is just not relaxed. And as you read her, she's the boldest, stoutest top, big hip, big footed female. She's not comfortable out here. And, you, and I asked him to walk her again. I think she's sound though, even though she wants to fight when you, when you read her and just, if she'll ever just relax, um, there's some slope and angle. To her, to her design and to her structure. Um, she's one that gets a little bolder and she's the outlier in terms of growth and the outlier in terms of birth weight of this top pair. But all of that fits together if you just kind of follow the, the design with that female. Young lady does a nice job. Bold, stout, powerful female. Just not quite as nice off of her hind leg when she gets out and goes today. But I still appreciate that type and kind. This is a female that I'm referring to when she gets just a bit deeper size but you look at that depth and she it's to her disadvantage because she's also lighter muscled you read her right behind her shoulder and in her stifle she's quite a bit flatter made she's a bit more maternal looking to me though than the one that stands right behind her she's truer and nicer in her toe shape particularly up front I just like this female and she just kind of hit me a little harder as my type and that's why she's there young man's female is a bit more pulled apart in terms of true muscle width but you back away from that female Again, she's a rounder rib kind of female that's a bit more tubular and racy in her rib shape. She's one I want to change in her front toe shape. She gets out and goes. She's a bit more restricted and it starts out of her hip all the way to her pin set and consequently at the ground doesn't have as much reach. Just a good functional meat and potatoes heifer that we conclude with. Big bodied kind of a female you're going to kick out in the pasture and she's going to maintain her flesh, young, male, young man. She's nice in terms of just design through her head, neck, and shoulder relative to her age. I think she's a bit lower in terms of performance and weight per day of age. I want to give her a bit more gas there. Really a nice division of bulls over here. And our champion and reserve in this division, I think, are going to match up exceptionally good. And that's not always easy to do 
when you don't have big numbers like you do on the heifer side of things and we're not going to worry about following the exact pattern every time because the quality comes in different shapes and sizes but today this calf back here will be your calf champion and the calf right in front of them will be reserved nice pair of bulls they really fit together well not only cosmetically but with the base and quality and youthfulness Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring, your champion horned junior bull calf coming out of class 10. First place in that class EXR bankroll 2008. Owned by Cummings Landing Cattle and bred by Express Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Reserve champion of that division coming out of class nine. Congratulations, bred known by Hudson Carter of Stratford, Oklahoma with GHC BKMT Kicking Bird 51 KET. We're now going to start your next division here in our pulled division. This will be class 11 pulled senior bull calves. Back over in the Shorthorn ring, we have the results from class nine first place and congratulations went to CF Mona Lisa. 281 LLXET. Congratulations to Keegan McGrew of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Second place in that class was exhibited by Michaela Hunt of Wellston, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Kennedy Brogdon of Waxahachie, Texas. Fourth place in congratulations goes to Laramie Piper. And fifth place in that class will go to Landon Marvel. Now over here in ring one, we have class 10 here in your junior shorthorn show. We're going to leave these bulls just how they came in. I just see more shape and fore rib to this bull, a little more depth to his rib and flank as well in our class winner here. Bull here in second. I really like how long and extended he is up through that front end. Cosmetics on him are phenomenal. Really a dark red bull with big old goggle eye. And he's got some shape to him. Um, he's got some good to him, just not as massive metal as what we might like, but very usable types of bulls. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring in class 11, first place. Bred known by Morgan Brewer of Mount Vernon, Arkansas. BCC OLE Red Catapult M11J. And congratulations in second place. Going to Elizabeth Covey of Van Brunen, Arkansas. We'll now bring in class 12 over here in your pulled division. This will be pulled senior bull calves born October 5th.
Really a high quality power bull here. Um, like a lot of things about this bull, he's just so wide constructed. He's easy on the eye with his markings and his color as well. I think you get inside that bull, a lot of spring of rib to him, a lot of natural muscling and stifle to him. You can see the jump muscles come up when this bull moves around. Just phenomenal in terms of power. Really an impressive individual. Well, congratulations in Class 12 over here in the Hereford Ring. First place, we'll go to WF Pit Boss 1214 ET, bred known by Wheeler Farm of Chickasha, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in Class 13. These will be pulled senior bull calves born August 28th through September 25th of 2021. There's a lot of give and take in this class because there's a lot of variability. And I, I'll be honest, there's not one heifer that wins a class easily for me. And I think there's a decision here at the top that you have to make. And you have to decide if this heifer is soft enough in her pastern. And I, and I guess today I'm going to say she has, she's okay. But I sure would like to relax her in her pastern and just give her a bit more flex there. Um, you just let her be a little more comfortable. Her big advantage over the heifer that stands in second is just lower base width and I think she's more mature at this point um, and, and but with that said though you want to give her a bit more flex just out of her hawk and her pastern but she's the big square top big heavy muscled female of the top pair the one that's going to come and just as she matures and gets sta gets more mature I think she'll bait widen out she has the pattern and, and I actually like the levelness and design of this heifer probably from a maternal standpoint even better than the class winner where I want to change her she goes away from us today she just closes up and gets pretty flat and narrow going away from you I think some of that is just maturity and time because that's a really nice maternal built female this is the big outlier in the class in terms of scale in terms of just having a little more birth weight to her uh, you know she's a good big one I, I don't have a problem with cattle having some scale but when you have that much scale I think you probably need to have just more power power in terms of fore rib, in terms of rib shape, but she's sound, she's good doing, and, and just has some extension to her, kind of a logical fit. Cavanese option, 
comes next, and she's one that you like in terms of just being soft and big ribs. She gets really short-sighted relative to the cattle in front of her and, on, and behind her. I want to stretch this heifer out. The moderation of frame doesn't bother me. It's the, the just short coupled is where I want to change her. But sure enough, a lot of breeding diversity for the young man with that female. One that has some extra extension, has some reach to her structure as she goes out here. She's, however, too flat, too narrow. She gets just too, too flat in terms of muscle design. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring, Class 10, first place. We'll go to JCB Dixie's Pride, 209K, exhibited by Cade Smith. Second place in congratulations goes to Ryder Heater of Raymond, Kansas. Third place in congratulations exhibited by Case Glazer of Loyal, Oklahoma. Fourth place was exhibited by Cade Lott of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And fifth place in congratulations will go to Chloe Carlisle of Amarillo, Texas. Now in ring one, we'll bring in class 11 here in your early spring heifer calf division. I think the bull that just possesses the most quality and good has to win this class. He's a functional bull that gets around good and when he's relaxed. I think this is a bull that's really good on his feet and legs. He's a bull that's got some shape up high when you get behind him and he carries that all the way back through his hip. I think he's just soft enough or more soft in his forerib. Go ahead and get around this bull here in second. He's also got a little bit more condition on him. This bull is pretty raw. What you see is what you get. I like that big old forearm on the bull, and it's to the point where he isn't too straight fronted, I don't think. I mean, there's some power in this bull. A lot of upper shape and hip. Just like to body him down, give him a little bit more there in his forerib. I like the condition of this bull a lot. I like how fresh he is. I like the look of him. I like how he blends into that shoulder. I'd like to bot Body him down, right, especially right there in his flank. I'd like to deepen him up, and I'd like to see him a little bit more correct off of his front feet. But the bull here in fourth, when you get off of him, I just don't know if there's enough middle in this bull. He's a little more tubular in his design. I'd like to body him down a little bit. He's sure got some muscle, especially when you get behind him. 
The bullet concludes the class, another really raw design bull, huge testicle. He's sound enough when you ask him to go as well. Really correct in his lines and dang sure got his place in the breed. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring. First place in class 13 will go to Buck Cattle Company of Medill, Oklahoma with BK Jet Smooth, J-A-T-N-E-T. -E Second place in congratulations goes to Todd Kim and Casey Herman, BJ Herman and Sons in Stumpland and Cattle with SSF, KKH, 15U, Standard, 132ET. Third place in that class, and congratulations, will go to Perks Ranch, Thomas Cade Boatman, and Taylor Kendall Boatman. Fourth place in that class was exhibited by Buck Cattle Company, and fifth place to Sean Crutcher. We're now going to bring in those first and second, so we'll select a champion reserve here in your pulled senior bull calf division. A really good division here. Not a huge division by any means, but I don't think a lot of things would change on the front end of these classes, even if you had more, because they're really good individuals to represent their classes. Um, I think in terms of quality and just the way this bull's laid in, a little neater at his shoulder and the angle of his shoulder, um, I'm going to use this bull. He's more relaxed when he gets around the ring, or I should say when he does relax, his angles are a little more soothing than the bull here that's going to be reserved. This is the power bull. He just hinges up a little bit straighter off of both ends, and our bull is going to win the division. But two really, really good bulls. Young man that wins this class, he and I made a deal. He's going to slow down on that show stick, and I'm going to let him win this class. So that's our trade-off because he's getting pretty speedy out here. Two exceptional females, and I think you have to appreciate the positives of both of these cattle, and just they're so different, but yet both so high quality and so just really right today. Young man's female, you okay, buddy? She stepped on your foot pretty good. Young man's female is at 12 o'clock in terms of just how she gets out and moves and just the athleticism and the flex and the give. You like that about the female. And sure, I wouldn't want to see her any, any heavier condition. I wouldn't want to see her any more mature. But as I think of a, as a March female, I don't think she's way out there. Uh, I just think that the quality combined with soundness and rib shape and mass and still to be able to go with all of those things is to her advantage. Young ladies female super fresh and sharp fronted and freshness is to her advantage but with that freshness comes that she's just not as pulled apart. She's a bit more refined in her bone work. You can see here she just wants to get a little closer up front. She doesn't have quite the flex out of her knee as our class winner. And I think that's getting really nitpicky on a high quality female. Those two females are good kind of bovines. Then we get into a female that you like from her mid-rib back in terms of mass and expanse. You like the foot size and shape to that female. When she goes, though, she just kind of gets a bit shorter strided, and it starts up at her loin edge, and then it contributes back into her hip. She just doesn't have the flex and give, not quite as nice in her lower forerib compared to those two females in front of her. One that here you like in terms of depth and boxy shape to her rib. She balances up well.
well, but she ducks her pins. When she does so, she comes up underneath herself and gets a little closer. She goes away. More conventional kind of a female would conclude with. The one that has some shape and some width. Want to just get prettier up from the side profile. Really, an efficient type of bull. He's an extremely easy flesh, and he's a dark colored bull that's attractive. Uh, on paper, he's really good in his utter and teat scores and growth. Um, and I commend this bull for having his genomics done. Well, congratulations over here in ring two. You the results of class 14 Horn Senior Bull Calves. First place, bred known by Burns Farms of Pikeville, Tennessee. BF Voltage Spike 1277ET. Now bringing class 15, these will be Horn Senior Bull Calves. Back over in the Shorthorn ring, results of class 11. First place and congratulations goes to Braylon Schaefer of Hagerstown, Indiana with Pioneer 261ET. Second place in that class exhibited by Riley Bivens of Burleson, Texas. Third place and congratulations to Sheridan Fox. Fourth place exhibited by Skylar Ward. In fifth place and congratulations to Shaley Conrad. Now in ring one, we have your final class in this division. This will be class 12. A lot of give and take in this class, but I think structural correctness sets it apart. Um, I prefer the body type in this bull here in second, but the bull I'm going to use is ultra lean. You get off of this bull and you can almost count every rib in him. I appreciate that and his freshness, and you get on top of him, he's really expressive. This bull's got a tremendous amount of shape, but where he beats number two is where they get the, when they get to going. He's got more length of stride, and he's more comfortable as he gets around. He's probably a little bit cleaner throughout in terms of joints. Really like the feet on that bull as well. Standing still, I think this bull probably needs to win, but when you get him going, he can't. This bull's really dense. He's dense-bodied. He's thick when you get behind him. Square out to his pins. Two definite herd bulls in this class. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring. Results of class 15 in first place. And congratulations, we've got Austin Lane breeding with BNC Rush 1306J. And congratulations, second place in that class, exhibited by Buck Cattle Company of Medill, Oklahoma. 
really maternal built kind of a female to win this class and an incredible presence you like just the the balance that she has from her chest floor back into her flank her advantage comparative to the next two is just how she puts together balance and enough structural integrity i'll tell you she's not perfect in her structure because she does drive her hawk fairly hard but i think she's the one that has base width and maternal build this next one comes to the second spot this kind of logically gets there um, beautiful in terms of presentation today but her balance doesn't align for me she's a little deeper from the top of her neck to the base of her shoulder and then when she goes away from you she gets pretty narrow so you want to pull her apart change her up in terms of that front end assembly more muscle shape comes with this next heifer but she's also one that carries more condition and you see her chest floor pushing out some wants to stand on the outside of her skeleton a bit on her hawk so just there's some give and take you have one here in third that's wider based and stouter doesn't move as nice as that one right in front of her young lady female here is a bit piecey and, and you read her in terms of having more shoulder she's extra long necked but when that, you get from her neck to her shoulder it doesn't blend into her forerib appropriately a little bolder shouldered more convention on her hind leg but still practical kind of a female as is the young man's female really round and soft made through a rib shape she drops her pins she's a little crusty over the top of her neck just not as attractive and feminine as some of those ones up in front of her congratulations that class had a lot of variability to sort through. Really an impressive individual here for a lot of reasons. A couple little things I'd change about him, but I think in the big picture when you get on top of this bull, I like the condition he's in. He's got a big top in him. He's huge hip. He's very accurate in his underpinnings. Look how wide base that bull is. It matches him well on paper. And, not, and to mention that, I, these type of numbers sell bulls. I think quality in this bull, and we'll look at him when he comes back in division. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring. Results from Class 16, Horn Senior Bull Calves. First place will go to BRE 133, Bel Air 1314, bred known by Riley Barber of Channing, Texas. We'll now bring those first and seconds in. Our judge will select his champion reserve here in your senior division. Back over in the Shorthorn Ring, results from Class 12, your final class in this division. First place and congratulations goes to Caroline Schumann of Kimmel, Indiana with CFNB Demi 250 RBXET. Second place and congratulations went to Alyssa Carter. Third place in that class was exhibited by Tenley Whitman. Fourth place, congratulations to Ella Helton. And fifth place exhibited by Andrew Triplett. Now in ring one, we have all of your first and seconds out of our early spring heifer calf division. We had some variability in this division, and I'll just kind of walk you through what I'm seeing. The far right, the female that uh, wins the youngest class, was a really stout featured, wide pin kind of a female. She's one of the leaner ones out here. Um, but with that extra power, she has a bit of roundness to her shoulder. You can see that she doesn't quite tie in together there, maybe as ideal as you like. And some of that is you see that because she is a little leaner, but I appreciate the power on that female. The next female is one that I called just ultra complete and not extreme in any one place. Um, she's one that gets out and goes and is extremely soft in her structure and stout enough. Um, you know, you get super critical, you might just give her a 
touch more length, but that's getting really, really critical because I think that female is very complete, very sound. Main thing for me is that I see a, a really nice cow prospect. Next female that wins the third class is really sharp fronted, has a lot of presence to her. Um, when you get her out here, maybe not as expansive it, comparative to a couple of others out here, but still lots of presence, lots of pizzazz in terms of balance and eye appeal. Young man's female, the, the solid red, white bellied female. She gets maybe overpowered out here in, in that class. We didn't have one that just suited me to the highest degree. She wants to ratchet up in her pastern just a little bit, not quite as comfortable as some of the others. Outlier female stands here, the young man's female. And, and you ask yourself, you know, did she come from the Midwest and she's been pushed along a little bit? And that's what we see in terms of maturity in that female. Um, I, I see that in her, but I also see the good in that female and that she's big footed and stout and really sound. Really, she's the biggest barreled female out here. Um, I, I'd lean her up just a, just a smidge, I guess, is my concern. Um, but I do like her really, really well. And then the female that uh, concludes uh, the vision lineup here, she was one that is, is as maternal and matronly built and feminine and angular as any out here. You compare her to the others and you see she gets just a touch smaller footed and smaller in terms of bone work relative to the others. But again, very maternal and attractive. I'll take one more look. Let's give a round of applause for our division here, a bit more challenging to sort through. I think there's some definite herd bull candidates um, for several different programs and for several different reasons, but the all-around bull that suits me the best is a single entry out of the last class. He'll be your champion in this division. We'll follow with the bull directly in front of him. Bulls are made a little similar in a lot of ways. They're very expressive bulls. Probably like to deepen them up just a little bit, but they're exceptionally long bulls. So somewhere in there, you've got to give the balance of length and performance and actual weight for depth of body and flesh and ability, and, and neither one of these bulls are hard doing by any means. So just really unique type of bulls when you study them. They're so expressive in terms of their muscle and shape. Very impressive. Nice division. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring. Results of that last division, your champion coming out of Class 8. Congratulations to Mark Inskeep of Lafayette, Indiana with CF Crystal Lady 290 UR, URX. And reserve champion in that division, congratulations. Coming out of Class 11, your champ, reserve champion goes to Braylon Schaefer, Hagerstown, Indiana with Pioneer 261 ET. We'll now look to start your next division here in our Junior Shorthorn Show. This will be Class 15 Junior Heifer Calves. Back over the Hereford Ring, results from your Horn Senior Bull Calf Division. Your champion, bred known by Riley Barber of Channing, Texas, with BRE133, Bel Air 1314. And reserve champion coming out of Class 15, congratulations, bred known by Austin Lane Breeding, with B&C Rush 1306 J. We're now going to bring in Class 17 over here in the Hereford Ring. These will be pulled early summer yearling bulls, born May 3rd through May 20th of 2021.
a unique pair of bulls. They differ a lot in time. We're going to lick them just how they came in. I'd call this bull up here special. You get a bull like that with plenty of bone to come out here and compete like that that's almost a negative birth weight or is right there. I think he's pretty darn unique. Along with that, he's really long and extended. He gets around good. He's a comfortable moving bull. Tremendous length of spine. Got some shape to him. Got some hip to him. Testicles set right. That's a pretty darn neat bull here. The bull here in second, I love the cosmetics on him. Dark, almost red to the ground, especially up front. Really catches your attention. He's a moderate frame bull that's still got plenty of look up through his front third. He's deep. Uh, he's got some shape to him. I'd like to limber him up when you move him around a little bit, maybe just tone him up in terms of his composition. But you got a definite herd bull here, too. Two really good, useful types of individuals. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring. The results from your last class and division. Your pulled champion intermediate yearling bull. Congratulations to Hallie Littow of Valco, Oklahoma with LPH 785F, Javelin 229G, 445J. Second place and reserve in that division goes to Joseph Hale of Sapalpa, Oklahoma with JDH the Gambler 145J. Well, now let's bring in Class 18. These will be horned late summer yearling bulls. Really a neat, well-made bull here, long and extended. Really like the top two-thirds of this bull. Uh, he's a long neck bull that blends in neat at the point of his shoulder. He's got a lot of length of spine to him. He's got some shape, too, when you get behind him. He's raw. I like his confirmation in terms of condition. Just a very good bull with some added shape. Um, very sound and clean in his joints as well. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring. Results of Class 18. Congratulations goes to Addison Kuntz of Thomas, Oklahoma, with SG Sensations Edition J111ET. We're now going to bring in Class 19. These will be horned early summer yearling bulls, born May 2nd through May 15th. Big stout square ended female to win this class and that added base width just makes her even more attractive to me and with that much power she's still nice over the top of her shoulder at her scapula to the point of her shoulder really big bellied and just nice when she gets out and goes you could tweak her front feet ever ever so slightly but that's getting super nitpicky. 
picky. Very attractive, very freshly presented female stands here in second. There's just not as much of her in terms of base width, in terms of just dimension relative to her class winner, but very attractive, very sound. You read the flex and angles of this female. She's as nice a one as we've seen, just not as pulled apart. Bigger middle female comes here. You watch this female and you read the expanse or midsection. You appreciate that about her. I get behind her and I see just a touch of utter development there and wonder what's going on even with that female. Extra long sided. She's just not as attractive through the top of her neck and through the just a, the front end build relative to that one in front of her. Fairly uh, and just I'd say sound is, but not as attractive in terms of how she moves off of her hind wheels. White female gets a bit more tubular in her rib shape. We want to give that female just more drop from her chest floor back to her flank, but still in terms of bone and foot, maybe has as much advantage there as any in the class. And we conclude with a very conventional kind of a female, one that's going to stay soft and easy flushing out on pasture for the young lady. I appreciate that she balances really well. Just want to give her more weight per day of age and performance. Two very useful bulls that differ in type and kind. Again, this bull up here in the front uh, matches the bull he had out here earlier. He's raw in his design. What you see is what you get. Tons of shape and expression in this bull. Big old forearm. Love the foot quality of this bull as well. Like the cosmetics, he's easy to look at because of the way he's marked. Uh, there aren't many distractions in this bull. He could be a little bit soggier like this bull here in second, but I think this bull here in second's got a big disadvantage today. He's really wanting the labor on that left side, it looks like. I think it's up in his front end, but I'd like to loosen him up a little bit and put him where he, you know, where he really is comfortable. When he's kicked out at home, I bet he moves a lot different. But with that being said, he doesn't have near the shape or the performance of the bull here in first either. That bull up there is really, really expressive. And you, when you look at that front three-quarter view or you get behind him, he doesn't have near the stifle, the overall shape that the bull, our class winner does here. Two very useful bulls. They differ in kind a little bit, and I think if this bull was being himself today, it'd make it more competitive. But I think when you analyze just the structural soundness and the length of stride and foot quality, I think we have an obvious class winner. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring. Results of class 19, first place. We'll go to BNC Mighty Option, 1217J, bred known by Austin Lane Breeding of Miami, Texas. And second place in that class, and congratulations. We'll go to Ryan Cox and Trip Phillips with Cox, Basil Hayden, ET. We'll now bring in those first and seconds, and our judge will select his champion reserve here in your horned intermediate yearling bull division. And back over here in the Shorthorn Ring, results from Class 15, first place, and congratulations. Go to CF Crystal Lucy, two, 230, RKXCT, exhibited by Paige Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana. Second place, and congratulations, went to Carter Meyer of Needville, Texas. Third place, exhibited by Reagan Easton of Bethany, Illinois. Fourth place. Exhibited by Natalie Stelska of Stillwater, Oklahoma. In fifth place, and congratulations goes to Maggie Bass of Burton, Kansas. Now over in ring one, we have class 16. These are junior heifer calves. Analyze the more you analyze this bull here out of the second class, the more I like him. That forearm's really something else. Tons of shape and hip. His uh, scrotum doesn't look as big as a couple of these other bulls, but he reads really big there. He he's a unique bull. Love his character up through his head and his neck and the way it sets, how it ties into his spine and all the shape he's got to him. He's a logical division winner here, and I'm going to follow him with the bull directly in front of him for reserve. Two very good bulls, similar in type and kind.
Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring. Results of your intermediate yearling division and our horned ring. Congratulations, champion goes to Austin Lane Breeding with B and C Mighty Option 1217J and reserve champion bred known by Addison Koontz of Thomas, Oklahoma with SG Sensations Edition J1118. We'll now look to start class 20. These will be pulled spring yearling bulls born April 9th through April 17th. Real attractive female wins this class, and you combine that with the amount of rib shape and just cow design that she has, and I think she surfaces to the top fairly handily. I'd like to just correct her on her front feet ever so slightly. She just wants to pigeon in a little bit, um, but just big barreled cow look to her, nice rib shape. Um, I think her advantage is over the female that stands here in second is just simply there's more of her in terms of rib shape and expanse through her midsection. She's longer sighted as well. Young man's female stands here in second. She just kind of ends up being a logical fit because of her balance advantage over the next female because she follows our class winner in terms of soundness and you read inflection at her knee, read this to give to her hawk as well. Just as I said, she's kind of a logical fit here. One that's a bigger scale stands right behind her, but when you read this female and you just really get to study in on her, she ducks her pins some, she, she just doesn't balance up as as well, a little plainer through her chest floor, one that uh, you like in terms of just having a, the rib and mass of our class winner, but she doesn't balance because of the way she handles her hip, well, both on the go and, and when she stops. Young ladies, female here is one that's quite a bit more rigid out of her front end. The slope to her shoulder needs to be laid back and just give her more inflection at her knee. She tends to wing out on her front. Soft, middled, easy doing, moderate frame female comes here. Want to lay her down in her tail head, relax her in her hip just to a little bit. Uh, see her go probably just a, a bit more reach off of both ends would be more appropriate. Same thing with this next one in terms of give and reach. She's one that's a bit more restricted, a bit more terminal in terms of how her muscle under skeleton. You can see she's extra powerful but a bit uh, more tubular in terms of her rib shape and more terminal in her design. A, a major herd bull over here. I like this bull quite well. Uh, big old forearm in him. He's correct on his feet and legs. He's really a wide base bull. He's square and the dimension in him is unbelievable. You know, this bull could be a little round hipped, and I actually really appreciate where his tail head sits in that bull because, boy, it squares that old hip up. But all that turn and shape to him, and then you get him right here on paper. 
this is a very useful type of a bull. He belongs out here because he's got enough quality to him. He's got plenty of eye appeal. You put him here in paper and he'll match the best of them. Very impressive. This bull here in second, when he walked in, I was like, golly, because look at the presentation of him. Look at the cosmetics of him, that goggle eye and dark color, and the freshness of him as well. He's really a long, extended bull. He's good out through his hip. He doesn't have the sogginess or the depth or dimension of our class winner, but presentation's unbelievable. And I like him because he looks like a big old calf. He's very youthful in his appearance, very fresh, just ran into just a power bull that kind of puts it all together. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring. Results from Class 20. First place went to Dry Creek Farm, Walker Pold Hereford Farm, Landgren Ranch, and Dirt Road Farms with Land Slinger, 2296-1046. Second place in that class, and congratulations to B&C Cattle Company. Now in Hereford Ring, he's Class 21. Pulled Spring Yearling Bulls, born March 2nd through March 28th. Back in the Shorthorn Ring results from Class 16, Junior Heifer Calves. First place and congratulations will go to Michael Frisbee of Buckingham, Iowa with CF Mona Lisa 22, 222 LLXET. Second place and congratulations to Cade Lott of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Third place was exhibited by Brock David Studer. Fourth place and congratulations to Kimberly Holland. Fifth place exhibited by Jessica Shelton. And sixth place to Caitlin Moffitt. Now over in ring one, we have class 17 junior yearling heifers.
I think it was the year of COVID, I believe it was 20 in Denver, my uh, niece and her husband went on a trip and they were scouting Angus herd bulls and, and they stopped and looked at some Simmental operations to fit uh, my niece's husband's needs and things like that. But they said all anybody could talk about was the bull show in Denver, the Hereford bull show in Denver. And you get into a class like this and that's why. You got herd bulls all the way to fourth. The thing that stinks judging these things is you got to put a bull with that much quality or you got to put bulls like that second, third, and fourth because it's unfair. They just ran into a really good bull, a really good class, and I think this is why we have such a stronghold and respect in these bull shows. You know, a lot of them are dwindling. Ours seems to get stronger. Really good bull here. Love how he's made. Maybe not the most expressive bull we've seen yet this far, but in terms of design and just that flawless, um, he's just flawless from the side. Love his head, love the way it sits in his shoulder. Really neat at the point of his shoulder. He's great through his spine. He's good back through his hip. When you get him to go, I think he does so quite well. Like I say, maybe he's not the shapiest thing. Is there enough there? I think so. The bull here in second's got a lot of shape to him. Uh, maybe not quite as good up through that shoulder. He's just a little bit straighter there. You can really tell when he moves. Uh, maybe not as much um, you know, shape to stifle as the bulls on either side of him. This is a really good bull and a definite herd bull. Could be used in a lot of different scenarios. I really appreciate this bull and I appreciate this class. Bull here in third, I love the cosmetics of sharp pole on him, good eye in him, good pigment, dark colored, tons of muscle, tons of expression up high, tons to his hip. This bull's just a little bit tighter in his heart and, and he carries that back to his flank. I'd like to soften him up. He can find himself higher. Would I use a bull like that? You bet. I've got plenty of cows that can use him. Bull Eric concludes the class. I love him in terms of his composition. I love how clean his joints are. Look at that bull move. He moves like a cat. He's just not stout enough to run with those bulls ahead of him today. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford Ring results from class 21. First place and congratulations. We'll go to GKB Cattle and Dylan Wayne Gottkamp of Clayton, Indiana with EKSDWK B26 final chapter J10. Second place and congratulations. Bread known by Kyle Lemon of Manchester, Maryland with KLLKLD Triumph for JET. Third place in that class, and congratulations, goes to Kyan Eck and Square G Ranch. My apologies on that. Correction in class 21, third place. Went to Abbey Hill Farm and Perks Ranch. Fourth place, went to Kyan Eck and Square G Ranch. Now over here in ring two, we have class 22. These are pulled junior yearling bulls, born February 11th to February 24th. There's some give and take over on the shorthorn side, and I'm going to use a female that's probably on the edge of moderation for me. Um, she's one, though, I think you read her in terms of just durability to her rib shape, and, and I kick her out in the pasture in my mind. I think there's more softness to that female. Big top, square-ended one that we'd probably want to give just a touch of upward growth and, and relative to the one that stands behind her. She has a slight advantage in her, in her birth weight EPD as well, uh, Cavanese direct, etc. A young man's female is ultra nice in terms of flatness to her shoulder and maternal look to her. Both of these females carry some condition up in her chest and in their chest, and I think hers is probably a bit more obvious. Her disadvantage is just lower stifle punch relative to that one right in front of her. But I like this pair of females very well. I wish I could combine the two of them uh, and come closer to the ideal because they're very different in their type and kind. Young man's female is one that you like in terms of lines. She She's one when she gets out, you realize that she has a bit more chest floor. She comes underneath herself and sits further back on her heel. Maybe even to not enough heel depth for me, I guess, is my concern. Um, and gives her some added curvature to her hind wheel there. Young ladies, female is one that has some added extension, added growth to her. Doesn't get out and travel as nice as we'd like to see. She wants to short stride off of her hind leg. And it's caused by the fact that she doesn't have enough flex out of her pastern. Just want to give that female a bit more looseness. 
And then we conclude with a, just an attractive fronted, long, strong spine female. Gets a bit shallower in her rib shape. Want to drop her down through her midsection. I'm telling you what, folks, the Hereford breed's got as many useful tools as anything going right now, and this is another very, very good bull. I love this bull. Like, you look at his front feet. He's got big old round feet underneath him. He's got a big forearm. He's got a herd bull head, and it still sets right into how his neck ties into his shoulder. Good back through his spine. He's level from his hooks to his pins. He's very easy to look at from the side. I like this bull a whole lot. Just a ton of quality in this bull. Bull here in second. has got a lot of look and presence to him. Really up-headed. Very attractive. Looks like a female maker to me. Um, he just kind of, he just gets a little weaker when he goes. He's kind of up on them ankles a little bit, and they're just a little bit softer than maybe what's ideal. I'd like to mass this bull up and just pull him apart, make him a little bit more masculine, but a true herd bull. Uh, the bull here in third, I love the character up through his head and neck. He's really a crusty bull. It's got some shape. He's got some forearm to him, got some muscle. He plays out underneath. He doesn't carry that muscle down into his lower quarter. He's just not quite sappy enough for me, but a bull that's got a tremendous amount of turn to his upper hip. Well, congratulations in Class 22 over here in your Hereford Ring. First place exhibited by TR Cattle Company, Glencoe, Oklahoma, and GP GKB Cattle with TR GKB, AC Red Kingdom J16. Second place in congratulations will go to Jessica Co and Cody Jensen, as well as Silvera Brothers. Fireball in California with CCJ Silvera's Paramore 321J. And third place in that class, and congratulations, we'll go to Abigail Ralston. We're now going to bring in your next class. This will be class 23, Pole Junior Yearling Bulls. Go ahead and pull your bull out here first. These are two really, really good bulls. I like the type and design and the correctness of this bull here in first. It gets a little bit close because I like, I think they're just a little more true depth than the bull here in second. Top two-thirds of this bull, though, are awesome. And then you get in between. He gives up just a little bit, but then you get him back down on his lower third, and, boy, those are good big old feet. Tons of luck to this bull. Presentation's excellent. It really shows off how he's made up through that neck how it ties into his shoulder. He, too, is a long spine bull, exceptionally square out to his hip, and I think he gets around the ring more comfortable in our bull here in second as he's better footed. This bull here in second, it's got that breed character up to his head and neck and got some power to his forearm, got some shape to him. He's not quite as good footed as our bull that wins the class. He's a little bit more timid in his stride, but I think he's very useful. Got a big old set of testicles that sit extremely square. Well, congratulations in class 23 over here in the Hereford Ring. First place will go to GKB Cattle with GKB 195C Extra Deep B004-1308. Second place in that class, and congratulations will go to Leaning Cedar Herefords and S&W Pulled Herefords. 
We're not going to bring in those first and seconds. Our judge will select his champion reserve here in your pulled yearling bull division. Two tremendous females in our Shardhorn class here, and their foot shape and, and how they handle their structure is a bit different. Young ladies, roan female is tremendous in terms of her rib shape, and you love the, the boxy square rib. Um, she's one that's flat in her shoulder relative to the amount of hip width that she has, and, and she does miss her track just a little bit, and that's what I was really studying on, and I had them walk her, and, and I don't read that to be uh, a a skeletal problem. I, I, I think she's a bit lazy. I read that female to have enough slope and, and give to her structure and she's flatter footed than the female that stands here in second. The one in second when she goes I, I, she does hit her track but she's a little shallow and she's one that I just I'm not as comfortable with when you look at her in terms of how her front foot sets down she's a bit open at her knee she's not quite as true as she goes away from you uh, on her hind leg in terms of flex and just I'm not sure it, it's just quite as it, it, honest there on her hind wheel but two exceptional females there at the top end here big bodied similar to a female comes here in third she's one that has quite a bit more shoulder and just roundness and boldness to her shoulder, not quite as attractive over the top part of her neck, but still lots of power, lots of quality in that female. Young man's female is kind of just meat and potatoes here, and she'll do a nice job for him as far as for a cow prospect. Has some rib shape, has some doability, not as attractive, not as big footed as those ones that stand in front of him. Well, congratulations over here in the short horn ring. Results of class 18. First place was exhibited by Jacqueline Thomas of Pikeville, Tennessee, with CSF Margie 2210 FB. Second place in congratulations went to Carter Cornegy of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Alyssa Carter. And fourth place, congratulations to Leighton Robertson. Well, now bring in those first and seconds, and our judge is going to select her champion reserve here in your junior heifer calf division.
could be the end of the bull show, and I'd say we had a successful one if it was. Um, just a tremendous um, lineup here. So many different directions you can go. I'm looking for the all around, and it's this bull up here. He'll be your division champion. Well, congratulations, your division champion. Coming out of class 20, congratulations to Dry Creek Farm, Walker Pooled Hereford Farm, Langergrind Ranch, and Dirt Road Farms with Landslinger 2296 1046. Over on the Shardhorn side, had a really fun division to sort through and get these cattle back out here. They're similar in terms of body and rib and design. There's one female I think has an advantage in terms of freshness, combination of traits. One directly in front of me that wins the first class. Congratulations to that young lady. She'll win our division. I'm going to keep the power and stoutness together in this division. Young lady that wins the last class, you're going to come in and be reserved. Congratulations to her. Well, congratulations. Back over in the Hereford ring, the reserve in that division goes to GKB Cattle and Dylan Wayne Kotkamp with... EKS DWK B26 Final Chapter J10. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors there in the Hereford ring. We'll get started with your next division. We'll bring in Class 24 a Horned Spring Yearling Bulls, born April 8th of 2021. Back over in the Shorthorn ring, we have the results of your Junior Heifer Calf Division. Congratulations, your champion. Exhibited by Paige Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana, with CF Crystal Lady to 30. RKXET and reserve champion that division. Congratulations, Jacqueline Thomas of Pikeville, Tennessee, with CSF Margie 2210 FB. We'll now get started with your next division here in our junior shorthorn show. This will be class 21 winter heifer calves. Really a nice single entry relative to his frame size. He's exceptionally long bodied. He's long up through that front third, exceptionally long over his spine. Like the cosmetics of this bull, like his feet, like the way his testicles sit. This is a really good usable individual. Well, congratulations back in the Hereford ring. Result to class 24, a Horn Spring yearling bulls. First place and congratulations goes to Burn Farms of Pikeville, Tennessee with BF Logic 1115. Well, now bring in your next class. This will be class 25, Horn Spring Yearling Bulls, born March 5th through March 21st of 2021.
This is really a unique bull to start this class because I think look and length and presence, eye appeal really match structural width of base. Uh, you get behind this bull and he has got a big old rear end in him. Uh, really square on his feet and legs. Just a tremendous individual, so easy to look at too. I really like a lot of things about this dark red bull here in second as well. Uh, really like how he's made from his hind leg down to the ground. Wants to get a little bit shorter, uh, striding up in that front end. Then our class winner here, just a little bit straighter there. He's not as long bodied, he's not as pounds heavy. Not quite as much bull there, but very, very useful. And a lot of cows can sure use both these bulls. I don't know about y'all, but a Friday morning with that kind of music and this kind of passion out here is a pretty good day to be an American. That's what went through my mind. Young lady, I appreciate your grit and heart out here, but what I really like is the soundness that I see in your heifer. When she gets out and goes, this heifer's better in terms of design to her shoulder and knee. She's got more flex and give. She sets down more correctly at the ground. Both those females, let's go ahead and lead them around. They're both big-bodied, stout, featured, good, good design cattle, but I think there's just the added soundness up front lets her, this young lady's female win the class. Um, as you watch her go, she just reaches better out of her knee. Young lady's female in second is one just a bit more rigid out of her front. You can see when she stops, she tends to open up and her shoulder blade lays further forward. Maybe not quite as much lower expression as her class winner, but still one that uh, you like in terms of pattern. You can lean her up just a touch. Big stout featured female comes around in third, labors around the ring just a little bit out of her front, drops her pin set some, not as attractive up front as those two in front of her, but I appreciate she's as big back and expressive muscled as any as we out have out here and really wide base kind of a feature. Fe female, not quite as attractive. Same thing with this next one in terms I'd like to pretty her up about her head, neck, and shoulder. She has some base width to her, just not as attractive up there up front. And then we conclude with one that's bigger scaled. She trends upward from her chest floor back into her flank with the amount of frame that she has. We want to see a bit more flank width there, just a bit more tubular, but still big hipped, wide pinned, and good at the ground in terms of being able to get out and travel. This single individual here, he really, I guess, showcases what makes the Hereford breed so unique. We don't even know how good we have it at times because the one thing we usually don't have to worry about is structure. This bull is exceptional on his feet and legs, so wide base, sets him down square. When he moves, he does it so fluently, and they can still pack some muscle and get around. And I think that's an edge. These Hereford bulls last forever when they're turned out in the commercial scenario. And the number one reason is structure, and on top of that, it's efficiency. You got a good bull. He's also got added luck and a lot of shape when you get behind him. Really a good individual, good representation for the breed. Well, congratulations. Back over here in the Shorthorn Ring, results from Class 21. First place, and congratulations. We'll go to CLF, Proud Starlet, 2111. Congratulations, Sailor Norvell of Tuttle, Oklahoma. Second place, exhibited by Haley Jester of Moreland, Indiana. Third place, exhibited by Carissa Dalquest of Wilson, Kansas. Fourth place, and congratulations to Emily Lucas of Fairview, Oklahoma. And fifth place in that class, we'll go to Kimberly Holland of Tecumseh, Oklahoma. Now in the ring is Class 22, winner Heifer Calves. Back over in the Hereford ring, we do have the results of that last class. That's 26 Horn Junior Yearling Bulls. First place and congratulations goes to GKB Cattle with GKB 6034, Clayton 6068, Now entering ring two is your final class in this division. This will be class 27 Horn Junior Yearling Bulls, born January 2nd through January 8th.
will lead this heifer class with one that has an attractiveness advantage and probably like her a bit more when she stopped than when she goes. Um, one that you just compare in a comparative manner, a bit more attractive up front, flatter shoulders, but still has some cowiness to her rib. She doesn't just get out and stride maybe as easy as you want her to. She reads to be sound. I think she might be just a bit lazy, but she wins the class hands down for me. Big wide pin, big hipped female that stands here in second, gives up some of that attractiveness about her just over the top of her neck. She's a bit crestier, wants to get just underneath herself ever so slightly as she gets out and goes. She'll stay sound forever, but not quite as attractive. But again, she's sounder than the female that comes around next. The white soft rib female she's one that's just off in her and we want to realign her structure off of both ends she's up in her spine and that's caused because she's a bit straighter and pigeon toed up front and just not a comfortable back behind she's shallow heeled so while she's soft and big bodied we just want to realign the structure of that female for her to just have more longevity and have some longevity concerns, young man's female as well. She's one that uh, is flat and maternal in terms of her neck design, has some extension to her. She's pretty rigid off of both ends. You watch her go. She just struggles a bit out of her front. Want to give that young man's female a bit more flank as well. Well, congratulations in the junior shorthorn ring. Results of class 22, first place, and congratulations. Would go Stanton Hooper of Temple, Oklahoma, with FFF Vivian 1109 ET. Second place, and congratulations, goes to Addison Dick of Nuana, Oklahoma. Third place, and congratulations. We'll go to Kaylee Jungle of Mead Meadford, Oklahoma. And fourth place, and congratulations, we'll go to Barrett Griffin. We're now going to bring in class 23 over here in your junior short run ring. Play an exceptional lineup here again. There's three bulls in here. You could have gone 10 deep and they could still be in the top three holes. Uh, the bull that wins the class, I think he's the most athletic. I think he's the most correct in his shoulder. Tremendous amount of length of stride in this bull's front end when he goes. And I think you guys need to watch that because, you know, I don't think we have an issue there, but it's something we dang sure don't want to get into. I love the slope to his shoulder. He's exceptionally long-bodied. Is he as heavy-muscled as the bull in second? No, but he's more correct, and he's better-footed. I love the length of stride and just the overall completeness of our class winner. Power bull right here. Tons of shape, big hip, uh, big forearm. A little bit straighter fronted, like to make him a little correct, more correct in his foot feet. Um, but I like a lot of things about this. That type of bull throws a lot of meat and a lot, a lot of red meat and shape. Uh, the bull here in third, just more timid in the stride. I don't think he's as good footed as our class winner. Um, he's, uh, when you bring him in, he, he was loosening up when you lead him back that way and he thinks he's going back out. He'll get to go in a little bit more, but it's still not enough to get over those two bulls ahead of him. A uh, really good type of a bull. Like to pull him apart in his fore rib. Love the cosmetics of these bulls. He's a big square testicled bull that's got a lot of good in him. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring. Results of class 27. Horn Junior yearling bulls. Congratulations, your first place. Exhibiting it by uh, Bowling Herefords, Collier Herefords, and Bill King with C8086 Sancho 1084ET. Second place in congratulations. Go to Stevens Hereford Farms, Corey Stump, and Sump Landing Cattle with SLC Bar S Mr. 49C Dynamic 113ET. And third place in congratulations. We'll go to Collier Herefords. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in, and our judge will select his champion reserve here in your horned yearling bull division.
just very simply, this red heifer that wins this class is better footed and better at the ground. She's pretty basic in terms of her design, in terms of being bold in her rib and open through her midsection. She looks like a cow, looks like one, uh, she's a show heifer that can go out and be a cow. And I think that's what we're trying to emulate and teach these young people about. And, and her advantage, Joe, is just in her foot shape and design. And that contributes to her skeletal longevity for me. Young man's white female is impeccable in terms of her presentation and it makes you want to gravitate towards that female. She's long and flat in her neck and straight in her lines but when you really get to evaluating that female at the ground you want to redesign her foot shape. You want to take that female and just flatten her in terms of how she comes to the ground so she'll square up as she travels away from you. Have a bit more base as well. Young ladies, female that stands in third is kind of a logical fit. There's not as much of that female relative to pounds and performance but when you read her in terms of quality I think and she's the next most right female checks the most boxes she's attractive from the side she's level hip she's open through her midsection yes we do want to make her just a notch bigger give her a bit more performance young man's female here is beautiful in terms of attractiveness through her front one third really really kind of a neat neck female it's when we get to her hip that you want to redesign that female she drops her pins and comes in at her hawk want to realign that female I'll give her a touch more foot and bone as well. She has some breeding pieces, though, that you can do a lot of things with her uh, because of that added attractiveness. Really a, a stout, big-bodied female here, maybe a bit clubbier in terms of her build. You like the power that she has. She's extra wide from pin to pin. She's wide at the base, a little lower-fronted. Her neck comes out of her shoulder a bit lower. want to change her and see her a bit more maternal in her build. And this one we conclude with does have just a touch more maternal look to her. We want to redesign her tail head give her a touch different design to her hawk she's a bit pointed in her hawk but still practical rib shape for that young man she'll do a nice job for him as a cow really an exceptional division of bulls here several different options of breeding pieces you know growing up and and uh, even through college and things like that you heard every herford joke there was about how inferior we were on muscle and things like that sometimes i took it Sometimes I fought back, but in the back of my mind, I always thought, we'll show them. We're going to put something to them. The bull with the most red meat that suits me the best, no question, is right here. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring, your division champion coming out of class 25. Congratulations to Chad Breeding with B&C L Sensation 1207J. It gets a little bit closer for reserve because I really love the quality in some of these bulls, but I think the bull with the most useful tools is this bull out of the last class back here, this yellow bull. He'll be your reserve division champion. Two exceptionally good individuals, give and take in them, use them how you want, but I don't think you can go wrong either way. I just prefer the forearm and the power and the red meat and the bull that wins. Our fall calf division, pretty easy choices here for me. Young ladies, female that wins the first class. She's exceptional in terms of her structural integrity, combines it with quite a bit of rib and still fresh. Young lady, you're going to win the division. Congratulations to her. Well, congratulations, your senior heifer calf champion coming out of class 21. Congratulations to Sailor Norvell of Tuttle, Oklahoma with CLF Proud Starlet 2111. Bit more give and take as we evaluate the female that comes in second and other class winners. Uh, I just the basic fundamentals for me uh, stick with the female that wins the last class. She's going to be our reserve. Congratulations to that young man. And congratulations, your reserve champion over here in the Shorthorn Ring. Reserve champion, senior heifer calf, exhibited by Riley McQuay of Ufala, Oklahoma, with Mav Emily, 192 JET.
Back over in the Hereford ring, the reserve champion in your horned yearling division. Congratulations went to Bowling Herefords, Collier Herefords, and Bill King with C8086, Sancho 1084ET. Well, currently over here in ring two, class 28 is a scratch. Currently in the ring is class 29, pulled two year, pulled two year old bulls, born February 20th of 2020. What an impressive individual we have here. I love how this bull carries himself, how he's made up through that neck. He's got a herd bull head, but he's still ultra attractive up through his front third. The thing I like the most about this bull is when you put him in motion, how correct he carries his spine because he's exceptionally long. He's exceptionally long back through his hip and in that turn too. Just a very, very good bull with so many options and, and just so much quality to use. Uh, the bull's got some shape to him. He's a raw design bull. Really appreciate it in terms of his confirmation day as well. Nice herd bull. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring, your pulled senior bull champion. Coming out of class 29, congratulations to Jib and Bold Herefords of Fort Worth, Texas and Stone Creek Cattle Company with STNY leader 024. We'll now look to see your final class here in our Hereford Bulls show. This will be class 30 Horn two-year-old bulls.
A lot of variability in this trio of shorthorn females, young ladies, female. I read her just to have more mass and dimension, a bit softer made female. And yes, she's carrying a bit more condition. But when you read her in terms of pin width, in terms of chest floor width, and just bone and mass, there's just more to that female. Real attractive female stands here in second. Obviously got bred early and has a beautiful udder started. She reads to me just to be a little harder designed. And you read her in terms of her rib, tighter in her forerib and just you read her in terms of her spine that one's going to have some doability issues maybe and just the calf developing in a young female like that's going to pull on her super sound really attractive well presented female the young jo young man does an excellent job young ladies female is attractive and fresh we want to body that female down relative to just what we see because she's wide pinned and square made want to give her a bit more rib and just mass and performance relative to those other two summer have first Well, congratulations over here in your junior shorthorn ring. First place in class 26. And congratulations. we we'll go to Addison Dick of Nottawa, Oklahoma with J.J. River RD. Second place in that class. And congratulations to Lane Blankenship of Orlando, Oklahoma. In third place, exhibited by Emily Crum. We're now going to bring in class 27 late spring yearling females over here in your junior shorthorn ring.
good set of bulls. I wouldn't say there's necessarily a runaway relative to the class, but just so much use in these rascals. Bull that wins the class, you get him off paper. He has the most to offer, a lot of uh, the breed's faults, if you will, and I, I don't think we got major glaring holes, but I think he shares the most to improve. With that, he's the high-performing bull. He's got a lot of breed character up through that head and neck. He's got a little bit more condition than I'd like, and I think the bull in second's better footed. I really like this bull, that correctness and them big old round feet underneath of him. He's a very practical bull. I like him in terms of his depth of body. He cuts up a little bit more in his flank, just not enough bull to get over our class winner. Bull here in third's a big high performing bull, as big a frame to bull as we got in the class, and I admire him for that because with that he carries that much depth of body to him. <clears throat> the problem with this bull is I'd like to put a better foot underneath of him. He gets extremely soft pastured when you get him on the move, and he doesn't have the shape of the two bulls ahead of him. Bull concludes the class, more moderate frame bull, a little bit lower fronted, just not as attractive as the bulls ahead of him, but relative to his frame size, I think he's exceptionally long. This is a really good bull. I like him. I'd like to pull him apart in his fore rib, give him a little bit more lower quarter, but a really, really neat class of bulls. Well, congratulations over here in the Hereford ring. Results of that last class and division here in your Horton Show. Your champion senior bull out of the Horn Show. Congratulations exhibited by Aiden Barber, Drew Perez, Ryan Cox, and Edwards Ranch with BRER -E Big Country 007 ET. Second place in reserve in that division. Congratulations to Sarah McCann Harfs of Jacksonville, Oregon with SLC 55C Ramblin' Man 7H. Third place in congratulations goes to Kirby Day Sims of Waxahachie, Texas. In fourth place, we'll go to Ladone Hereford Farm and David Donnelly. This is one of those female classes. I think you could take them all home and, and, and put them out in a pasture and come back and, and after you've calved them out and do a better job of telling you uh, which one's the best female out of the four because there's some positives uh, of each of the females. The thing I think you have to do, though, is use the white roan female to win the class uh, in, in terms of soundness, in, in terms of com combining that with stoutness of feature. She does so to the highest degree relative to or comparative to the female that stands right behind her. She's a stouter bone, stouter featured female, really wide through the midsection of her body and still shows me some true shape. Uh, I don't think that that's a female that's extra fat. And I think there's some muscle there, some rib, certainly the soundest female in the class. One that stands in second. You could pick her neck up out of her shoulder just a tad. You can lean her up on her chest floor just a tad. But I think she's the next most sound female. Even with this said, she sits pretty far back on her heel for me. But I think when you look at her in terms of reach out of a structure, she's the one that's the most logical here. Good middle of the road, big belly, stout, good doing kind of a female. I like this female that stands in third really well. She's leaner in her composition. However, she's just on her hind leg. I can't describe it other than that she's just a little awkward. Doesn't set her hind leg down, just really soft and easy. She almost acts like she's just a, a, a bit owie. I love the, the hip into that female. I love the freshness of this female. She's just not moving quite as good as I'd like to see her. She is one that stands a little higher and deeper in her heel relative to the one in front of her. Young lady does an awesome job showing that female. Really big, open, middled female concludes the class. You appreciate just the capacity that you see. She gets out and goes, and she wants to come up in her spine ever so slightly. She's not as comfortable as the others. She reads to me to be just a bit coarser about her head and neck, not quite as attractive as that one right in front of her. Really, four females that I think would go out and make nice cows uh, top to bottom for those individuals. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here in the Jim Norick Arena at this time, we're bringing in all of your division champion and reserves over here in our polled Herford Bull Show. We'll go ahead and introduce you to all of those division champion and reserves coming out of your first division in the polled show. Congratulations, division champion bred known by Curry Herfords of McAllister, Oklahoma, with CH Premier 233 ET. Reserve champion in that division, and congratulations, bred known by Connor Rhodes of Paris, Illinois, LF 8121, home record 2150. 
Coming in out of your next division here in our Bold Herford show, your champion was exhibited by Moore Cattle Company of Medill, Oklahoma with BKCMCC Cool Profit K001ET. Reserve champion in that division and a big congratulations. Bred and owned by Grimmel Shockey Cattle Company of Manhattan, Kansas with GSCC Magnitude K02ET. Coming in out of your next pulled division, congratulations, champion bred known by Buck Cattle Company of Medill, Oklahoma, with BK Jet Smooth J18ET, and reserve champion that division, exhibited by Todd Kim and Casey Herman, BJ Herman and Sons, and Stumpland and Cattle of Columbia, Illinois, with SSF KKH15U Standard 132ET. Coming in out of your next division in our pulled division, Congratulations went to Hallie Littow of Balco, Oklahoma with LPH 785F, Javelin 229G, 445J. Reserve champion that division and congratulations bred known by Joseph Hale of Sepalpa, Oklahoma with JDH the Gambler 145J. Coming in out of your next pulled division, Champion was exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, Pell City, Alabama, Walker Pulled Hereford Farm, Langdron Ranch, Dirt Road Farms with Land Slinger 2296 1046. Reserve in that division and congratulations went to GKB Cattle and Dylan Wayne Gottkamp with EKS DWK B26 Final Chapter J10. Sure. Short horn uh, division here. We'll keep it real simple. I think there's a pair of females that are really sound, even though they vary just a little bit in terms of dimension. Two females from the last class are going to win your division here. Young lady with the white female, GB champion. Heifer that was second in class to her will be reserved. Congratulations to them. And last but certainly not least, over here in the Hereford ring, your champion pulled to your old bull. Congratulations to Jib and Pulled Herefords and Stone Creek Cattle Company with STNY Leader 024. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for all of our pulled Hereford bull exhibitors here at the Cattlemen's Congress. Back over on the shorthorn ring, we do have the results from that last division, your intermediate champion female. Congratulations. Going to Addison Dick with JJ River RD and reserve champion in that division. Congratulations. Goes to Kinley Bolin of Walnut Grove, Missouri. Now in the shorthorn ring, we'll bring in class 30. These will be early spring yearling females. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, while we have the house filled here in the Jim Norick Arena, let's put our hands together and thank our judge today over in the Hereford Ring, Mr. Jason Hoffman. What an exceptional bull show we've had over here on the Hereford side. Just tickles me. I'm proud that our breed's known for that. You know, uh, 
for a lot of us, this heifer calf deal has been so good for so many years that it really helped pay a lot of bills and knock the edge off things while we kept a bull market going or while we grew a bull market for a lot of us as well. And to me, the breed starts and ends with a herd bull. And I think that's something we're known for, and there's hundreds of thousands of black cows ahead of these Hereford bulls that they need. And I think it's so flattering as a breeder to be able to have the balance in this breed that we do and you can have these really nice heifers that can go out and compete and their bull mates in a flush serve a purpose. There's no byproduct to that breed. We need to keep balance and we need to focus on the numbers but our guys really select phenotype first and when you can tie all the things together I think that's what's putting us in such a leading position very tickled and I'm very flattered to be out here and this lineup of bulls is impressive suits me quite well how it's going to end up too. Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Pold Hereford Bull, here at the Cattlemen's Congress. Congratulations, Dry Creek Farm, Walker, Pold Hereford Farm, Landron Ranch, and Dirt Road Farms with Landslinger 2296-1046. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion, Pulled Hereford Bull. Congratulations, Moore Cattle Company of Medill, Oklahoma, with BKCMCC Cool Profit K001ET. Again, congratulations to all of our Pulled Hereford Bull exhibitors. We're going to get the ring cleared, and we'll get started with your Horned Hereford Bull drive. really my kind of female to win this class in terms of just a cow prospect and, and she's very fresh um, I love the rib shape love the foot on this female just gets out and travels and still the amount of mass that she has she's maintained some freshness shows us that she's got a calf in her lots of good there if you want to get ultra ultra critical of that female she's not just super square at her hawk but I mean that's getting really really critical because there's lots of good lots of soundness of that female next one comes behind her a lot like her in terms of just practical good kind of a cow similar in terms of soundness not as shapely when you look at her through a lower stifle just kind of logical second there big bodied massive good structured female comes here in third you read that female and that she's a bit harder in her fore rib you can see there's more scapula movement on her big belly long necked just one that I think as she gets out and matures into, into a cow is going to be a little harder made but appreciate the pieces and parts I swapped a pair here at the end and I you could swap it back and forth uh, I opted to use this white female I read her to just have more midsection to her a bit more attractiveness you know I'd like to change this female in terms of how she sets her foot lean her up freshen her up some uh, I think then she becomes more appealing red female is more attractive in terms of just a bit more extension she doesn't balance so she's weaker at her loin up at her flank I want to change that female from a balance perspective well, congratulations over in the Shorthorn Ring. First place in Class 30, exhibited by James Kendall Clear of Madisonville, Texas. Second place in that class, exhibited by Brooklyn Frazier. Third place went to Kaya Hendrickson. Fourth place in congratulations to Abilene Sullivan. And fifth place in that class, exhibited by Anna Reddy. That will also be your division over here in our Shorthorn Ring. We're now going to bring in Class 33, Junior Yearling Females. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to introduce to you all of our division champion reserves in your Horned Hereford Bull Show. 
Coming out of your first division, a big congratulations, GKB Cattle with GKB 86-88-6011 Bel Air K102ET. Reserve champion in that division, and congratulations, Purple Rain Cattle Company of Toulon, Illinois, with Purple Santana 101KET. Coming in out of your next division, your champion was exhibited by Cummins Landing Cattle of Hollis, Oklahoma, with EXR Bankroll 2008. And reserve champion in that division, and congratulations went to Hudson Carter of Stratford, Oklahoma, with GHC BKMT Kickin' Bird 51 KET. Coming in out of the next division here in your horn show, congratulations, champion exhibited by Riley Barber, Channing, Texas, with BRE 133, Bel Aero 1314. Reserve in that division, and congratulations went to Austin Lane Breeding of Miami, Texas, with B and C Rush 1306J. Coming in out of your next horn division, congratulations champion was exhibited by Austin Breeding with B and C Mighty Option 1217J. Reserve in that division, and congratulations went to Addison Coons of Thomas, Oklahoma, with SG Sensations Edition J111ET. Coming in out of the next horn division, congratulations, champion was bred known by Chad Breeding of Miami, Texas, with B&C L Sensation 1207J. Reserving congratulations in that division was exhibited by Bowling Herefords, Collier Herefords, and Bill King with C8086 Sancho 1084ET. And coming out of your final division and a big congratulations, your champion senior bowl was exhibited by Aiden Barber, Drew Perez, Ryan Cox, and Edwards Ranch with BRER Big Country 007 ET. Reserve champion in that division and congratulations to Sarah McCann Farst of Jacksonville, Oregon with SLC 55C Ramblin' Man 7H. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for all of our Horned Hereford exhibitors here at the Cattlemen's Congress. And ladies and gentlemen, if we could put our hands together one more time for a judge today over here in ring two, Mr. Jason Hoffman, Thedford, Nebraska.
I think this is the class that I anticipated and thought about uh, as it, 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 thinking about this show. Do you think about a shorthorn female and the cows that they can make? And, and this is what I envisioned. And top to bottom, I think you guys, uh, this group deserves a round of applause. Let's put our hands together. You know, and I had a friend ask me recently, he said, if you had any advice, to, if, um, if I'm judging a show here this week, he said, what would be your advice? Uh, it's my first national show, he said, to get to judge. And he said, what would be your advice? And I said, sort them like you'd buy them. So that's what I've done is I sorted them like I'd buy them. And that's just a, in this kind of class, I think that's the best thing you can do when you have this kind of quality. The two females up here at the top, I think, are, are just phenomenal in terms of their soundness. You read the inflection and the give and, and, and to their knee and to their how they get out and just go. Um, and, and that's really, really neat to see two big bred females at, at that um, just be able to do that. Our class winner is a, a notch longer necked, and I think that's the advantage that she has is length of neck, length of hip perhaps, uh, than the female that stands in second to both of those females. I think they're tanky, they're big bodied, they're sound, they're my kind, and let's go on and take them out. After that, you can kind of begin to pick the females apart, and I think you can jingle these next four a lot of different ways. I don't read these next two to have as much true muscle read behind their shoulder over the top part of their hip compared to the two in front of them. They're both really nice in terms you let them out and you get them out and go. The slopes and angles read right. This red and white spotted one is flat-necked and attractive and feminine and angular. She's going to make a nice cow. I just don't read quite as much true muscle shape right behind her shoulder over the top part of her hip. Similar with the dark red female going next. She's a bit more concave in her forerib, but still attractive and long body. Really stout, featured female comes here next. She struggles sometimes as you watch her in the ring. She just doesn't lay, she labors out of her front end, doesn't get out and reach. But she's big bone, wide pin, big bellied, nice made. And we conclude with a female that gives up some in terms of balance, but still big middled, can get out and be a forage efficient kind of a female. Congratulations, that was a fun class to evaluate. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Ring results from class 33. First place and congratulations went to Kennedy Arthur of Stillwater, Oklahoma with S with ZSF Grand Rosemary's Belladonna. Second place and congratulations in that class exhibited by McEnley Evans. Third place, Keegan McCrew. Fourth place, Miller Smith. Fifth place and congratulations to Skylar Ward. In sixth place was exhibited by Lane Blankenship. We'll now bring in class 34 over here in our shorthorn ring. I'm sorry for the delay over here, folks. Um, there's a lot of give and take here, but yet it's amazing how good this lineup of bulls lined itself up. Um, usually I don't take this long at all, but it's not just that easy. And when the gates are closed tonight, I'm going to know that I picked them exactly how I wanted, not second guess anything. I'm going to talk these. Usually I don't. Usually it's a little bit more cut and dry. As this lineup of bulls gets out here, the one thing I noticed throughout the day in this horn drive, maybe I would have wanted them a little bit sappier throughout here and there. But when you stop and analyze the structural correctness and bulls that lay some muscle down over their top and back through the hip, it starts right up here with this freckle face calf. Tremendous quality. It's hard to design one any better through his neck, how that ties into his shoulder. And if you look at him over his top, he carries that expression. He's got big old jump muscles. When you get behind him, he's just as impressive. But the base width and the foot quality, look how he stands. To me, that's big time. That's number one. The body and all that and the guts, they can come. That's the foundation. We get in this second calf here, same thing. Look at the base width in this calf. Look how he's out on the corners. And that carries up. Look how square pinned he is. My question with this calf, I love him. He's a contender. Does he have too much shoulder? He's pushing it. Does it restrict him in the way he gets around? Not so much. 
this calf's awesome. And I love the fact that he's got that kind of depth in him too to be that pretty. He is deep and he is correct and he is thick. Can you live with the shoulder? He's not a problem. He's got some extra shoulder. This calf out of the third division, at first you almost want to label him as he's a little more shallow. He can't make one any longer that holds himself together better than this calf. Look at his base width. Look where his front feet place. Look at this bull when you get behind him. He's phenomenal. Look at that shape to the quarter. Stifle. Just the density of his tail even. This is a herd bull, folks. You get him on paper, he will lift up almost everything except birth weight. He's pretty close to breed average, and you can't have all that and expect a negative birth weight. Fill him in where you want. That's a phenomenal bull. Another definite contender. This bull in his division, said, wish he would have been a little sappier. What gets him there is the structural base width, the placement of his feet, the correctness, true muscle shape. It's got something to him. You know, at one point we all wanted to make these cattle soggier and deeper. Well, we took it too far, and we lost our upper shape, and we lost our base width. And then we thought we wanted to make them sounder, so we've put too much set to their hind leg and heel. This bull's ideal structurally. Very impressive. Carries right in to this dark red bull here. Love the structure of this bull. Got a forearm in him. Got a herd bull ahead. Got the character. Places him square as can be on his feet and legs. He is excellent footed. But I'll tell you one thing. Shocks me every time when I get behind this bull. That is muscle. That right there is impressive. We get into this bull out of the last division. He's a pounds heavy, high performing, rugged, cow making machine. Does he have the advantage of foot quality, base width, and shape of the bulls ahead of him? He does not. He's got a lot of good to him. He's awesome on paper. I'd like to tone him down in terms of his composition and lean him up like some of these other bulls. I like to see the raw design and the ruggedness these bulls possess. So it gets pretty challenging for me, and usually, at least I convince myself that it's easy. This should all be easy. This is a phenomenal lineup of bulls. <clears throat> Give these breeders a hand. And congratulations, your grand champion, Horn Bull, here at the Cattlemen's Congress. Congratulations, Riley Barber, Channing, Texas, with BRE 133 Bel Air 1314. Over on the shorthorn side, uh, two females. We have a December and a September. I, I think the, the red female's advantage is, is 
overall design and build, you read that female in terms of balance, you read that female in terms of just chest floor back into her flank and foot design and structural integrity length is her advantage as well. Yes, I would have liked to have seen her with a calf at side already, but she's far enough and uh, I think there's just enough advantages there. Taking nothing away, the little player that stands here in second, she's got a really level udder, like the design there. She's a bit shorter coupled female, carries a bit more chest floor that throws her balance off, doing a nice job. Young lady, that female is going to do a nice job for you down the road. Congratulations, that's a lot of work to bring a pair to this level of show. Well, and congratulations back over here in the Hereford ring. Your reserve grand champion, Horned Hereford Bull, goes to Chad Breeding, Miami, Texas, with BNC L Sensation 1207J. Again, congratulations to all of our horned and pulled Hereford Bull exhibitors. We are going to get started at noon over here in ring two with our main show. Last division in the shorthorn side. I think we have two females in that first class that were exceptional. I talked about their athleticism and just how they could get out and go. We're going to use the young lady's female up here on my right to win. We're going to follow up with the heifer that was reserved to her in division or second to her in class to be reserved division. Congratulations to those two young ladies. Well, congratulations over here in the junior shorthorn ring, your senior champion female coming out of class 33. Congratulations, Kennedy Arthur, Stillwater, Oklahoma, with ZSF Grand Rosemary's Belladonna and reserve champion in that division. And congratulations to Ross Turner, Ulaga, Oklahoma, with CCF Frosted Star C65H. We're now going to bring in your final class here in our shorthorn ring. This will be class 37, two-year-old cow-calf pairs. My apologies that we had one more division here in our short horn female show and hard working pair that you really like in terms of structural integrity. The cow gets out and sets her track right, slopes and angles are right, and you read the udder design on that female. Really neat teat design and placement, very square and level in her udder. Female that uh, I think she's doing a nice job with the young lady. Calf at side has some shape, some to just read the top to that calf, hip to that calf. So congratulations to her. That's a nice pair. Well, congratulations over here in the short horn ring. Results of class 37. This will also be your champion cow-calf pair. Congratulations to Jessica Hoba of Blackwell, Oklahoma, with PEMB Pinky 24 ET. We also have a correction on that last division over here in the Shorthorn Ring. The reserve champion was your second place out of Class 33. Congratulations to McInley Evans of Lorenzo, Texas, with SS Chasin Dreams Drama 121 ET.
Well, we are about ready to get started over here in your Junior Shorthorn Show with our grand drive for our female show. At this time, we're going to bring in those division champion and reserves. Coming in out of your first division, your champion was exhibited by Caitlin Berg of Osage, Iowa with Berg's Miley Myrtle Bow. Congratulations to the reserve champion in that division. Reserve in that division was exhibited by Morgan Brooks of Venus, Texas with SFF, CPRU, Roses are Red, RK, 247ET. Coming in out of your next division, congratulations, champion that division was exhibited by Mark Inskeep of Lafayette, Indiana with CF Crystal Lady, 290URX. In reserve in that division, and congratulations, went to Braylon Schaefer of Hagerstown, Indiana, with Pioneer 261ET. Coming in out of your next division, congratulations, champion exhibited by Paige Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana, with CF Crystal Lucy 230RKXET. Reserve in that division, and congratulations to Jacqueline Thomas of Pikeville, Tennessee, with CSF Margie 2210FB. Congratulations in the next division here in your Junior Shorthorn Show. Your champion exhibited by Miss Sailor Norvell, Tuttle, Oklahoma, with CLF Proud Starlet 2111. Reserve in Sailor's division was exhibited by Ryland McQuay of Eufaula, Oklahoma, with Mav Emily 192JET. And congratulations coming in the next division. Your champion was exhibited by Addison Dick of Nottawa, Oklahoma with JJ River Red. Reserve in that division, congratulations, went to Kinley Bolin of Walnut Grove, Missouri with CG Diana's final reward, 122 JET. Coming in out of your next division, your champion and congratulations goes to James Kendall, clear of Madisonville, Texas with RHS Red Robin Queen ET. Reserve in that division and congratulations goes to Brooklyn Fraser of Meeker, Oklahoma with KSS Maxim Revival 2110 ET. Coming in out of that next division, a big congratulations. Your champion coming out of class 33 exhibited by Kennedy Arthur Stillwater, Oklahoma with ZSF Grand Rosemary's Belladonna. Reserve in that division coming out of the same class. Congratulations goes to McInley Evans of Lorenzo, Texas with SNS Chasing Dreams Drama 121 ET. Bringing in that last division, your champion Cal Calf. Congratulations went to Jessica Hobaugh, Blackwell, Oklahoma with PEMB Pinky 24 ET. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, let's put our hands together for our judge today, Ms. Shermie Viator.
Let's put our hands together one time and just show our appreciation for our lineup here. You know, the commonality uh, you can talk about in the cattle, and I would say it's that they're all correct in terms of soundness and stand square at the ground, et cetera, et cetera, and they're going to make cows. And that's, if anybody knows me, um, you know that when you come to show to me, they better be a cow, and, and that's going to be most important to me um, no matter what when it comes to sorting that. But one last thing before I, I pick your champion in reserve, um, just a reminder to you young folks and folks ringside, um, you have an opportunity as you go forward to be ambassadors and folks that talk about the beef industry. Um, that's something that's really near and dear to my heart, and I hope that you all will take the opportunity uh, to talk about that we are stewards of the land and conservationists. Uh, you young people have, you know, your peers at school and your peers at athletic events, etc., are our consumers tomorrow. And if you want to be able to show cattle uh, in years to come, uh, I think you're going to have to recognize that you have to become a, a voice for us in agriculture. And if uh, uh, you don't understand that and want to have a, a conversation, come visit with me. I'd be sure glad to visit with you. But I need you guys to understand you're the future of agriculture. And, and folks ringside, we have to understand that uh, we need to take the time to, and, and visit with consumers and, and talk to them about what we do in the beef industry and the positives of agriculture. So with that said, I always use that uh, as a closing speech here for any show that I judge because it is, I think, very, very important as we go forward. So be a voice for agriculture. Carry that opportunity for the next generation. Congratulations. I'll go out and get you two champions. And congratulations, your grand champion, Shorthorn Female, in our junior show at the Cattlemen's Congress. Congratulations to Sailor Norvell Tuttle, Oklahoma, with CLF Proud Starlet 2111. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion, Shorthorn Female. A big congratulations to James Kendall Clear of Madisonville, Texas, with RHS Red Robin, Queen E.T. Again, congratulations to all those exhibitors. I do believe in the Shorthorn Ring. We're going to take a brief backdrop break before we get started with your junior Shorthorn Plus show.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, here in the Jim Norick Arena, we are about ready to get started back up in both rings. We are going to get started in ring two. We're going to get started with your junior main Angus female show. We're excited to welcome your judge today, Mr. Scott Meyer of Ringo, Wisconsin. Mr. Meyer is the owner of TC Reds in County Lane, Country Lane Farms. He lives there in Ringo with his wife, Mia, kids, Ty, Callie, and Tucker Byer. Mr. Byer would also like to recognize his son-in-law, Kale Spangler, and granddaughter, Paisley. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome our judge today, Mr. Scott Byer, Ringo, Wisconsin. Well, good afternoon, and again, uh, it's a pleasure and an honor uh, to sort through your main Angus here today in the next couple days. Uh, but again, what an outstanding trio of females here to start off this show. Three real high-quality type of females, all different in their own right and kind. The female that I start off with, again, I love her balance, her design. She's soft in her middle. She's flexible off of both ends. I love the added bone, the depth of heel that this female possesses, and yet still goes out and travels and tracks with the amount of power and width and dimension that she has. Just an excellent place to start in this class. 
I like the female in second here as well. She's really long spined. She's long hip, square at the ground. She gets out and travels quite well as well as our class winner. Maybe not quite as soft through that center portion of that body. I think there's plenty of shape there. I'm not calling her shallow, but I, she just doesn't have that added pop and dimension through that center portion of her body compared to our class winner. This one, too, maybe gives up a little bit of heel and a little bit of flexibility in that pasture and just a touch. But again, I think a real high quality one there as well. I love the elegance and the shape to the neck of this female that rounds off the class. You know, she's long spined and square, gives you a killer look from the side. Again, a female that handles herself very well. Again, she just gets a little bit harder through that center portion of her body compared to the two ahead of her, but I think a female that's got a lot of future down the road. But again, an excellent trio of females, superb female on top. Well, congratulations in our first class over here in your main Angus ring. Congratulations, first place to go to BK Knapsack 233K, exhibited by Devin Morton of Stratford, Oklahoma. Second place in congratulations goes to Jordan Peterson of Stanwood, Iowa. And third place will go to Cooper Burling of Egerton, Kansas. We'll now look to see class two. These will be Maine Angus Spring Heifer Calves, born April of 2022.
Again, uh, excellent set of females here all the way down through this class. You know, a really uh, high quality trio of females on the top end here. And again, it gets down to some give and take. And, you know, as a cowman and looking and, and describing cattle and projecting future, uh, I, I think this female strikes me the best as far as her flexibility and her youthful appearance. Um, she's fresh and green and still has those added looks and values from the side. She's really extended up through that front end. She's really long and soft down that spine. I like the softness through the center portion of her body and the depth from her spine down to her floor. Maybe she's not, she is not the heaviest boned, heaviest built from the ground up, but I think a female that looks like a female and everything balances up and she's so complete and balanced, uh, that's what gets her to the top end of this class. This second place heifer here too, just a striking look from the side. This one does have the added foot size, added bone underneath her. A female again that's got power and mass up high, still has a nice shape to that rib cage. A female to me that maybe gets a little bit short coupled when you get ever so slightly when she gets on the move and I'd like to change that about her just a touch. But again, that's a really well packaged type of female there in second as well. Here's the powerhouse female in the class the young man brings here in third. And if you want one with added power, added dimension, added shape up top, down low, uh, this is the female for you. For me, I just like to tone her down just a touch. To me, she has that tendency to be a little straighter in that shoulder as she gets out and rolls off that front foot. I'd like to change that just ever so slightly on that one and make her glide just a little bit easier. I love the added uh, length of body that the young man brings the next heifer. Again, long spine, feminine, maybe has a little bit of latch underneath that jawline. But again, I think a female that's very functional. She kind of gives up a little bit of the structure and flexibility off of both ends of some of the heifers ahead of her. But again, I think a female that's really fresh in her appearance, has added length of body, length of spine. I love the length from hooks to pins in this one as well. Really striking female the young lady brings here next too. She just gets into a really tough class. I think the females ahead of her are just maybe a little bit further along in their overall appearance here today. Uh, but again, I think a female that's got those added features just doesn't quite balance up compared to the other ones. I love the freshness and the greenness in this heifer that comes and that rounds off the class. Very feminine in her skull shape, very feminine in her neck shape. Again, a female that gives up some of the bells and whistles compared to the heifers placed ahead of them. But a nice trio of heifers on the top end. Well, over here in the Shorthorn Ring, we're going to get started with your junior Shorthorn Plus show. First class in the ring is class one, late spring heifer calves. Back over in our junior main Angus ring, congratulations in class two. First place was exhibited by JFW Lucy KADET, exhibited by Hannah French of Wakeman, Ohio. Second place in congratulations went to MINN Kimmy 244 KET, exhibited by Jacob Bresner of Graymont, Illinois. Third place in congratulations went to Raymond Benneker of Hamilton, Ohio. Fourth place in congratulations, Parker Buck of Delaware, Oklahoma. Fifth place exhibited by J.C. Wolfinger. And sixth place in congratulations, we'll go to Raylan Schurhouse. Now in ring two, we have class three, Maine Angus Spring Heifer Cavs, born March of 2022. Nice heifer to start off uh, our Shardhorn Plus class here. And this female, I like the juvenile fresh look that we have. And you combine that with just how her neck, shoulder combines. Really elegant female. Nice in terms of the design to her, her hawk and hip there. Good female to lead off with. Heifer that comes in second, perhaps a bit more rib shape in terms of both depth of rib and boldness of rib. You watch that female go away from you. She's not as true and square as she moves away from you. But real cowy, nice prospect. Pushes just a touch of shoulder as well. Uh, not quite as blended in as her class winner. This one here that comes around, she's one of the higher performing females. I'd like to change her in terms of how she handles her hawk. She tends to rotate her hawk some and just doesn't set and plant her hind leg as confidently as we would like. But again, love the rib shape. She's square. She's wide pinned. Uh, not as neat and attractive maybe than those two right in front of her, but she's sure good enough for me. Quicker pattern, earlier maturing female stands here. The young man with the gray hat. 
really bold bodied and big ribbed but I think she's just going to be one that's shorter coupled we're going to have to manage her to keep her where she can go on and grow some more uh, but still big bodied soft nice at the ground want to extend her upward and outward at extension advantage goes to the next female she's one as you watch her go away from you she just closes up and gets pretty narrow and flat but I think it, part of that is she's just green at this time that one as she matures she has the right pieces and parts for the young man she'll body down for him uh, be a nice female congratulations to him Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn ring. We have the results from your first class here in our Shorthorn Plus show. First place, and congratulations. Go to Carly Goats of Oak Harbor, Ohio, with Sol Primo's Lady 25KET. Second place in that class, exhibited by Peyton Lynn of Red Rock, Oklahoma. Third place, exhibited by Sheridan Souls. Fourth place, and congratulations. Go to Rylan McQuay. And fifth place, exhibited by Drake Penrod. Now over here in your Shorthorn ring, we are going to split class four. We had a move from class one. So the class in the ring now will be 4A.
really high quality pair of cattle up here at the top. It's structural design and just a futuristic approach allows this heifer to win. I think when you look at her and you look at just where she is from a maturity curve and maturity pattern standpoint, I really like what I see on that female. As she gets out and goes, she's looser in her spine. She just is truer in how she handles her hawk and her hind leg. Uh, I think there's just more authentic width to that female or, or excuse me, authentic soundness in that female. Now, with that said, the panda colored kind of painted up female, when she stopped, you have to recognize that she's bold ribbed and wide pinned and all those things you like about her, but her neck comes out of her, the center of her shoulder. She's a little lower fronted and deeper from the top of her neck to the base of her chest. Uh, I'd like to just raise her neck up a little bit. When she gets out and goes on her hind legs, she, I can't really peg it. She, she hits her track really well. Um, but she's just a hair tight in her spine. I just want to loosen her up in her spine some. Um, but appreciate the base width, appreciate the barrel and the rib of that female. Red and white female, you like her when she stopped in terms of squareness of lines, level hipped, flat shouldered. She gets fairly rigid when she gets on the move. Just want to give that female more flex off of both ends, set her knee further back. She'll move with more authority off of her front end. Same with this black, uh, blue, or rather blue roan kind of a female. One of the longer spine square top females in this class. She's extra big footed and stout featured. She's just a little plainer in the curvature to her hawk and how she handles her hind legs. She'll stay sound. We just want to square her up. And then one here that's really big bodied and soft made. You like that about this female. Again, she, and, and she's long neck but she's short cannon and appears to me that she's a little shorter hipped and going to be a quicker pattern one. Love the robust and big and rib shape and open pins. Just want to fur her up, ease her, up, ease her in her movement, give her a bit more grow. Another nice class of March females here on this side. And again, the Tapir heifers on the top end here, again, are very different in their overall type and kind. And so there's some give and take. And I thought through my head, you know, which which best suits me and the, the type and kind that I want and what, I, what I'm looking for today and what we strive for back home. And I, I fall on this young lady's heifer here to win this class. Uh, you know, she's probably not the most exquisite in any type or any kind, but just everything balances so well from front to rear and top to bottom. She's very flexible at the ground. I love the added length of body that she has and the length from hooks to pins in this female, really square and true at the ground, really square and true up high down her spine. That's the advantage that she has is she probably is the most flexible in this class and you can project her down the road just being more and more and getting to be a big bread and you can see that center portion of her body filling out and just everything still just balancing up and tying together the angle to her shoulder, just everything really complete, just a really nice place to start. Now the second place heifer, I love the added power and mass that this female possesses. I mean you get up on top of this one, tremendous amount of shape up over her top, tremendous amount of shape behind. I guess with that added power, it's just maybe a little much for me and my kind, but I love the added bone and the foot structure. I'd like to lengthen her out just a touch, but I do like to swoop to that lower portion of her rib cage. I like the shape to her barrel when you get behind her. Maybe one that when you get her on the move, just need to flex just a little bit easier on that hock, and she might just be fighting the halter here today as well. But again, I think two real high quality females just in two really different type of packages. Young ladies heifer that comes third, again, I think is probably the compromise heifer in the class. Again, this female balances up. She doesn't wow you in one aspect. She's very functional at the ground, very flexible. I love the foot shape and the heel underneath this one. I love the added length of body that this female possesses. You know, when you compare it to those other two, maybe it doesn't tie in quite as good from right behind that shoulder into that fore rib and through that center portion of her body compared to the two ahead of her. But again, I think a real high quality one here as well. Maybe just leading a little bit more time. You know, at times maybe that skull shape might be reads a little quicker maturing for me here as well, but I think a really good female there in third. Here's another powerhouse female the young man brings us here. I love the added dimension and width and mass and muscle that this heifer possesses. To me, she just needs to get out and go and flex off that rear end just a little bit better through that hock and that pastern just to move her up a little bit higher and give those other ones a little bit more rivalry. The young ladies heifer that rounds off the class. I love the femininity. I love the freshness in this female, the shape through the center portion of her body. The one that just gets overpowered in this class here today as far as balance and mass and overall uh, maturity level here today. But again, I think a real high quality female to round off this class as well. 
Well, congratulations. Back over in the Shorthorn Ring, we have the results from that last class for a first place, and congratulations. Went to HHCC Sweet Dreams Reward, 210K exhibited by Kaya Hendrickson. Second place and congratulations went to Jace Taylor of Blue Earth, Minnesota. Third place exhibited by Lane Blankenship. Fourth place in that class exhibited by Emily Crum. And fifth place, Helen Spears. Now in ring one, we have class 4B. Back over the main Angus ring results of class three, first place and congratulations. We'll go to KMEM -E Stylish Rosemary 61 KET exhibited by Julia Harris, Stillwater, Oklahoma. Second place was exhibited by Ryder Hogan of Lenox, Iowa. Third place and congratulations to Bryn Nickel of Clearfield, Iowa. Fourth place in that class was exhibited by Champ Davis of Wheeler, Texas. And fifth place and congratulations goes to Cheyenne Chuliwa of Merrimack, Oklahoma. Now in the ring is class four. This will be the final class in this division. This class splits into the two pair, both on paper and in phenotype as you evaluate the cattle. And I think about this top pair as big breads, and I, I see more flex out of the hawk of the female that wins the class. I, I think she's just more elegant up front. Uh, I really like the design of her rib. I think that just as she goes and, and matures as a bread, she's going to be a really fun one. I like the cushion that we see to her hind leg, her pastern, her hawk. I see more longevity there. A stouter bone, bigger footed female perhaps stands here in second and I wouldn't argue that very hard. As you watch this female, she drives her hawk to the ground pretty hard and I sure wouldn't want her any straighter there. Um, you can pick her pin set up ever so slightly but again that's a close pair. I like both of those females. Higher growth, higher performance type cattle. And the next two females, uh, this one's similar in terms of, of build and, and body to the one right in front of her, but she doesn't balance up as well. Touch more throat, touch more lower chest. She's a little rounder out of her hip and consequently in her hind leg as well. But you have to appreciate the openness to her skeleton, the power that she does have. Just doesn't quite balance as well. Again, a really round rib, good doing kind of a female concludes the class. She's one that just rounds at her hip. She's lower in her pit. Pin set. I want to stretch this female out from front to rear. Well, congratulations. Back over here in the Junior Shorthorn Plus show. First place and congratulations in Class 4B. We'll go to Emma McLaughlin of Woodsfield, Ohio with Miss Silky Bow 0422. Second place and congratulations went to Ryan Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana with CFCSF Mona Lisa 282 Primo XET. Third place exhibited by Kristen Jensen of Hampton, Nebraska. And fourth place was exhibited by Harley Holman. We'll now bring in over here in class in ring one will be class five early spring heifer calves.
young man's little Cal prospect is where we land to win this class. And you set her in motion. Uh, I think the angles and the slopes, her shoulder, the re just the reach that she has, combine that with rib and the freshness that we have. She's the logical place for second for me, or, or to win the class. Second place female, you know, I think she just kind of ends up here by default. And strength at top, the extension, she's better footed than the female that stands second or third behind her. Still has some extension. This female, somebody got pretty adventuresome on the fin that they made there on her rib. And I think, honestly, if it, that wasn't there, she'd be even more attractive because it's, it takes away just a little bit. But I think she just kind of is logical because she's leaner than this next female. She's better footed. You know, at, at first, I thought this one was going to kind of gravitate towards the top of the class because she is the big bodied, really soft made one. But you get to really study it on her feet. And some of this is man designed. And she's heavy conditioned in the more mature female out here so for me there's just too many things that don't check boxes and I sure would like to change her foot design just let her feet go on and grow out and, and uh, see what happens there she gets a little narrower relative to her upper hip width as well feet, then we have two females that are a bit later maturing they don't show us as much rib depth relative to the frame that we see this female drops her pins as she goes a little shallower healed but I think as she matures there's a nice pattern to her there she's actually wider from from stifle to stifle has a bit more base width than the black and white female. This black and white female, I think as she matures, is going to turn into a really attractive big bred female for the young lady. She's one that just needs time and feed because she's long and flat necked. She, she's just very well balanced from her chest floor back into her flank. Young lady, that's a good female. She needs time. She's very sound. Not as big featured in terms of bone and foot as the one that stood right in front of her. And then we conclude with a really the one that's big barreled and soft and easy fleshing in her look. Gets quite a bit plainer up through her head, neck, and shoulder. Want to just make that female a little more attractive up front. We have January, February females uh, in this class. And again, uh, the classes so far are really, really a lot of quality all the way down through. And there's five really good, high quality females. And again, just another one that rounds off the class that's just a lot of good things about her as well. But these two kind of sort to the top. They kind of hit me when they came into the ring. They kind of pair up and match up and they're same body type and kind. The, female, the young lady, the female has that wins the class. She's just got the added more length of spine down her top. She's a little bit softer from that loin junction into her hip. Again, a female that has plenty of rib shape, plenty of bone. She's got the advantage, uh, added advantage as far as bone and structure underneath with that added length of body. I love the way the neck comes out of the top side of her shoulder. I love the slope and angle of that shoulder as well. You know, when you get behind this one, does she give up some of that center portion width compared to our second place one? Absolutely, but I think she's very adequate as far as muscle shape and dimension that she has. Female and second here, again, uh, well designed, well put together from the ground up. Both these females are very functional at the ground, good structure, good flexibility in that hock and that pasture when they get out on the go. Again, like I said, the class winner, they're at an advantage. She's just a touch longer bodied. Same body shape and kind, but again, I think two real high quality females there in this class. It gets a little give and take in the next three for me, and I guess this young lady's heifer, when you get this one on a stand, boy, she gives you a striking look. She's very feminine, very angular up through that first one third. Female, again, when you get set her in motion, she gets a little bit shorter bodied, tends to be a little bit tighter in that top. I'd like to relax that spine, but boy, there's a lot of good in that one there as well. Young man's heifer that comes next here as well powerhouse type of female. I love the internal dimension that this female possesses from the side, the depth from her spine down to the floor, the shape to her rib cage when you get behind her as well. When we set this one in motion, I'd like to change that neck. I'd like to stretch her out. She gets a little bit jammed up. I'd like to change that angle of that shoulder just a touch as well. On the stand, she looks great. When we set her in motion, you can see those structure issues on that shoulder that we'd like to change just a bunch. But again, that one is really good as far as a maternal look and overall power and mass. Very intriguing heifer here that rounds comes next young lady has and there's a lot of good parts and breeding pieces to this one. She's got the added foot size, added bone, she's very flexible, long spined. She just gives up some of that shape and maturity compared to the heifers ahead of her. I'd like to see her a little softer through that center portion of her body, but I think a very unique individual the way she's designed and her overall makeup and shape. 
young man's heifer that rounds off the class. This is just a good practical type of female. Just nothing, no bells and whistles, and then maybe she gives that up, and that's why she rounds off the class. But there's a lot of good in this one. I like the length of spine. I love the levelness from hooks to pins. Still has that rib shape through the center portion of the body. She gets a little frailer made from the ground up compared to the heifers and the rest of the class. But again, high quality set of females on the top end. Nice class all the way through. Well, congratulations. Back over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring, results of Class 5. First placed in congratulations go to Eli Matthews of Muldrow, Oklahoma, with EMS Montana Primo X2 2501. Second placed in congratulations went to Kelby Lynn of Red Rock, Oklahoma, with Kane Lady Diamond CW700K. Third place in that class, and congratulations, Ella James. Fourth place was exhibited by Abigail Green. Fifth place, Campbell Thomas. And sixth place, Isabella Delgado. Now over in ring one, we'll look to get started with class six. This will be your final class in this division. Back over in the main Angus ring, we have the results from class four, your final class before our division. Congratulations, first place went to Katie's Baby E.T. exhibited by Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Second place in congratulations was exhibited by Camden Weatherly of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Third place went to J.C. Perrier of Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Fourth place in congratulations exhibited by Carter Preston. Fifth place went to Hannah Durler. And sixth place in that class in congratulations to Breck Contolino. We're now going to bring in those first and seconds and our judge will select his champion reserve, Junior Heifer Calf, here in your main Angus show.
Well, we get to our first division here on the main Angus side. And if you would, by ringside, let's give these exhibitors a nice round of applause. Excellent set of females. You know, all these classes, I mean, there was a good quality all the way down through. And, and again, these uh, eight individuals sorted themselves the top for me and my kind and what I'm looking for. But again, I, I think there's a couple out here that really suit me very well. Uh, again, not to take anything away from the other ones, but again, I think there's a lot of good breeding pieces in this standing in this ring right now that these young exhibitors can go on and make a breeding program, and they're starting out at the, at the ground and, and with a really good female that they're going to be able to grow and produce and, and breed up on and, and, and make them better. And, uh, but again, it's a nice set of females. I'll just talk them just a little bit. You know, our class winner of uh, uh, the first class, this is a May female. And again, this one hit me pretty hard when she came in. I, I, I love her overall design. I love the softness. She still has that overall maternal look, and the cow man in me likes that overall maternal look and softness the way her skeletal design is made. This one is so impeccable on the move. I, I just love the size of hoot. I love the flexibility off of both ends. She just handles herself, and everything balances up. You know, is she super exquisite through that first one-third and through that neck? Probably not, but she is very feminine made. I love the skull shape in this female. I love the length of the, of the neck and how it comes out of the top side of that shoulder. Just a real high quality one. The second class, again, this female is probably a little bit different than the ones that are out here. She gives up some of that power and mass. But again, I love the overall femininity, the overall length of body, the length of her skull, the length of her neck. Everything balances up and designs really well. You know, compared to the heifers on either side of her, she probably gives up some of that foot size and that bone compared to the ones that are out here. But I think it's very adequate. And as far as the maternal look, I project this one with a lot of future in her as well, just in her overall condition. The heifer out of that third class, again, like the one ahead of her, extremely long spine, level top. At times when she gets on the move, maybe it gets a little bit tighter in that spine. I like to relax her just a touch right behind that shoulder blade and into that loin junction just a touch. But again, I think a really high quality one there as well. And the one out of the last class, again, just a powerhouse type of female. Flexible off of both ends, long-bodied, long-spined, big-middled, depth of body from that spine down to that floor. I love the shape and turn to her rib cage as well. You know, she's a little bit more chiseled maybe in that neck shape down into that chest floor. Uh, but again, I think a real high-quality female. I like a lot of things about them. Like I said, there's two out here that suit me pretty well. I'll go get those two. If you would, let's give these exhibitors another round of applause. Well, congratulations, your champion in that division coming out of class one. First place in congratulations, Devin Morton of Stratford, Oklahoma, with BK Knapsack 233K. And congratulations, reserve champion over here in your main Angus ring. Congratulations goes to Katie's baby ET, exhibited by Sarah Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Well, now let's get started with your next class and division here in our Maine Angus show. This will be class five Maine Angus fall heifer calves, born September to October of 2021.
We've got a single entry uh, fall born October female here and she'll also be our division champion and again I think a high quality female to win that division. She's well designed, very feminine overall makeup, transitions from that shoulder into that fore rib through that rib cage really well, has that nice maternal look. You know is she the most boldest from the ground up? Probably not but again I think she balances up, is just a really complete female. Let's go ahead and give this young man a nice round of applause for this division champion here today. And congratulations, your champion fall heifer calf exhibited by Evan Roden of Coleman, Alabama with Min Jalen 190J. We're going to bring in your next class over here in ring two. This will be class six. Main Angus summer yearling heifers born May to June of 2021. Back over in the Shorthorn Plus ring, we currently have class six, your final class here in this division. Anybody else want to come place this class?
And here we get into our intermediate division on the main, angus, main angus side. And again, I'm going to leave these females the way they come in. I took a little more time looking at them, make sure that's what I wanted to do. And again, I think a real high quality one that comes into this class and wins it for me. A female that's really feminine and exquisite through that first one third. I love the length of her skull, and I think that's the advantage she has over our heifer in second. She is a little bit more feminine, longer skull than our heifer in second. I love the way she ties into that jawline, into that neck, down to that throat latch, into her chest just a little bit better as well. The other advantage that this female has, she is extremely long spined. I love the added length of body that she has. Adds a little bit more rib shape to her through that center portion of her body. You know, is she as massive down low as our heifer in second? No, but she is more flexible when we get her out on the move. She covers her track and stays with inside of her skeletal means when she gets around and travels, and I think that's the biggest advantage. This heifer in second on the stand, boy, she gives you a striking look. You'll love the added power and mass that this female possesses up high and down low. Big footed, big boned. Female that's got enough turn and shape to that rib cage. And like I said, I'd like to change her skull shape just a little bit. She gets a little bit shorter through that uh, muzzle area. I'd like to change that, make her a little bit more feminine in that aspect. But again, when we set this one in motion, she gets outside of herself just to touch off that rear too. Uh, I'd like to change that about her, but I love the mass and power in this one as well. The powerhouse female is the heifer that rounds off the class, and you certainly have to admire the amount of dimension that this one possesses up high, down low, and the shape that she has. This one too, when we set her off, I'd like to change the angle of that shoulder. I'd like to extend that neck out just out of the top side of that blade just a little bit better. But again, I think three real high quality females there in that division. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Well, congratulations over here in the main Angus ring. Results of that division, that'll be your summer yearling division. Congratulations, champion will go to JRDA Lady Gamer 991J, exhibited by Turner Longacre. Second place in reserve in that division, congratulations, goes to Jacob Bressinger. And third place in that class, and congratulations, will go to Jenna Young. Over here in the main Angus ring, we'll now bring in class seven. These will be main Angus late spring yearling heifers, born March to April of 2021. So this is an incredible class of female bovines from top to bottom, and I'll be honest with you, probably as hard a class as I've started in a long time, uh, just from the decisions that you have to make relative to this high quality of female. So that says a lot uh, for you guys out here in terms of running the cattle out here. The two females at the top are as different as you can make two cattle in, in terms of where they are in terms of maturity and extension. And that's what separates them. The, the female that wins the class, I read her to be longer bodied, later maturing, leaner, a touch fresher up front. And, and I think she's just going to be a notch bigger frame female. And I don't, I'm not saying that that's a, a, an advantage. I'm just describing it. Um, but today, she's a little leaner. Her neck comes out of her shoulder just a touch higher. I think she's a little fresher. I love the boldness and stoutness of the female in second. And that's why I want to gravitate to her so much. She's so wide pinned and wide structured. That's her advantage over the female that wins a class. But she's made a bit like me. She's round and sound and low the ground and probably super easy fleshing. She's, she's a hair heavier than her condition. I think that combined with her being shorter cannon, she's a little throatier just ever so slightly as you read that. All of those things combined tell me that she's just a little quicker pattern female. But I love those two females. I'd love to own both of them. Really big, stout, featured female stands here in third. Her neck comes out higher out of her shoulder than the female right in front of her. I love the levelness to her hip. When you back away from her, her balance is off just a little bit. And that they have her made so she's so deep-centered and she cuts up in her heart. She's just a hair tighter in her forerib. And it's almost accentuated the way she's presented. But she's super sound. She's fresher fronted than the female that stands right there in front of her in class. Bigger scaled, later maturing individual here, a bit more upright in her shoulder and her knee. You want to tuck her knee back, give her just a, maybe a notch more rib shape relative to the length of cannon, the maturity that we see in this female. And then we have one that I love when she's stopped, but when she gets out and goes, you can see she just short strides because she's just a hair straighter hocked, doesn't quite have the flex and give off her either end. 
but that's being super critical on a female that is really good pattern, high quality in terms of head, neck, shoulder, juncture, good rib. She just ran into a couple of buzz saw. This is one heck of a class. Congratulations to all the exhibitors. Well, congratulations in class six. This will be your final class in this division. First place and congratulations went to Mark Inskeep of Lafayette, Indiana with CF Mona Lisa 255 OPXCT. Second place and congratulations, Brett known by Sarah Rose Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Third place in that class and congratulations went to Madeline Berg. Fourth place, Tyler DeGroot. And fifth place, congratulations to Campbell Thomas. We're now going to bring in those first and seconds, and our judge will select her champion reserve here in your early spring heifer calf division. Really impressive here in our Shardhorn Plus uh, first division here as you study the individuals. I don't think you can deny the quality of those top two females in that last class. We're going to keep them together as champion and reserve. Young man right here in front of me be champion. Young lady will be reserve. That's one heck of a pair of females. Congratulations to all the exhibitors. Well, congratulations in our first division over here in your junior Shorthorn Plus show. Congratulations, champion goes to Mark Inskeep, Lafayette, Indiana, with CF Mona Lisa 255 OPXET. And reserve champion goes to Saul RGLC, Miss Dreamy 216 KET, bred known by Sarah Rose Sullivan, Dunlap, Iowa. Well, now look to see your next class in your next division here in the junior Shorthorn Plus ring. This will be class nine, junior heifer calves.
Well, what a tremendous class here on the main Angus side. And again, these two females uh, sort themselves at the top. And again, I think they're the two high quality females in this class, but yet very different in their type and their kind. I think they both have great attributes as far as a breeding program, as far as a show ring presence as well, but yet still going on and making some cows and putting things together for these young exhibitors down the road. Young man's heifer that comes in. Again, I just love the overall balance and design. Everything ties in so nice and neat. A female, again, that's tremendously deep from that side. You look from the internal dimension aspect as far as a maternal cow look. She gives you all that power through that center portion of her body, but then you get up on top of her, and she's got tremendous shape up over her top, down through that hip. Her biggest advantage is this one just gets out in motors, guys. She can get out and travel, cover that track, big bone, flexible off of both ends, nice foot on this one as well. Just a really nice place to start. I love the added length of body in this heifer that comes next. She gives you a really striking look from the side. I love the shape to her skull, the femininity to that neck, and the shape as it goes into that shoulder. Uh, a female with that added length, she just doesn't quite handle it quite as well. She gets a little bit tighter right in her spine, right behind that blade, gets a little bit weaker in that loin when we set her out in motion. But again, I think a lot of good high quality parts to this one as well. She has plenty of added dimension there as well when you get behind her and up on top. I struggle with this heifer in third, and I guess I like her as far as her overall femininity and her freshness, and I appreciate that about her. Those are the type of cattle that, you know, are just good doing type of cattle, and, I, and she's very feminine in her overall design, very maternal looking in her overall design. Uh, she's flexible and can get out on the go. She probably doesn't track quite as well as maybe the two ahead of her, but I love the added length of body and length of spine that she has, the hooks to pins, tremendously long hip there. She's wider in her set of pins, and that's the advantage over the heifer behind her. I guess when you analyze her compared to those two, she just gives up too much down low mass as far as foot size and bone structure compared to our first and seconds, but I really do appreciate and I like the overall maternal look and freshness in that one in third. I like this heifer too, you know, when she came in the ring, she kind of struck you kind of hard. She's really, that neck comes out of the top side of that shoulder. She's really bold through the center portion of her body. She's got plenty of flexibility and plenty of power. When you set her in motion and you get behind her, she gets a little bit tighter in that pin set. I like to spread her out and blow her apart there just a touch, and she gets a little choppy when she gets off those rear two for me. The two heifers that round off the class, again, added power and dimension than these. These got the muscle and the shape and the volume, and you like that and appreciate that about them. For this heifer here, I just like to see her motor out just a little bit freer and easier off of both ends, but I love the added values as far as the mass and bone. Big powerhouse female that rounds off the class. Long body, long spine, tremendous amount of length out that hip. You know, one, when you analyze her through that first one-third, she gets a little bit plainer in that jawline and down into that chest floor. I'd just like to make her a little bit more feminine here to compete with those other heifers in the class. Again, high-quality set of females all the way through in this class. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Well, congratulations. Back over here in the main Angus ring, results of class seven. First place and congratulations goes to NIKL, Rihanna's Ruby 130 JET, exhibited by Wyatt Lang of Clifton, Kansas. Second place in that class and congratulations, exhibited by Carly Seabrandt of Orange City, Iowa. Third place and congratulations will go to Clara Bollinger of Moravia, Iowa. Fourth place, exhibited by Rebecca Langford of Okmulgee, Oklahoma. Fifth place in that class, and congratulations went to Riley Short. Sixth place, exhibited by Madison Griffin. We're now bringing in Class 8. These are Main Angus Junior Yearling Heifers, born January to February of 2021. Fairly challenging class to evaluate and to sort through, but I think a logical class winner, the one that's the most fault-free, surfaces to the top. Very maternal in her rib and build and how she gets out and goes flatten her shoulder and then you just one that I think is fairly complete would be the best description uh, that I can give you that heifer she doesn't travel as wide or move away from you with the width and pin set that the female stands in second and the female in second is one that's just really nice in terms of how bold and stout she is but with that added stoutness there's just a touch of shoulder um, but I appreciate the futuristic of the look of that female I think she's going to go on and be fairly just competitive in terms of because of her power uh, just for me I think she's just a notch bigger shouldered not quite as nice and tucked in at the top of her scapula as that one that wins the class red female gets a little steeper shouldered as you watch her and the next couple of females get steeper
deeper shouldered. She's also shorter sighted when you compare her, and I want to lengthen her up in her hip. That next pair of females, when you watch these cattle, or excuse me, young ladies female comes next. One that's long and fresh and green. I think as she goes, she's just going to get better with time. Today, she didn't have the mass and power of some of the other cattle out here in front of her. But from a soundness standpoint, she has more reach out of her knee comparative than the next two. Um, just more juvenile, I guess, would be a correct description for her. Young man's female here is a bit piecier. She doesn't assemble all the pieces and parts correctly. She's straighter in her knee, wants to wing out in her front but still bold bodied really stout from behind just a little rounder and then we conclude with a female again one that's more rigid up through her knee and front end want to lay that shoulder back appreciate the balance when she stopped again a single entry here at january born female the young man brings us here today and again he tells me she's going to be born on uh, she's going to calve on uh, Valentine's Day and I told him well if it's a heifer calf you got to name her sweetheart because that would just be perfect right if you plan that all out uh, but again I think a really high quality individual here that certainly could stand some competition very feminine or overall design I love the length of body that she has she's very true and level up top and out through that hip very true at the ground she gets out and travels really nice and easy very flexible off of both ends a really nice maternal look and I appreciate the turn and shape and internal dimension that this female has and yet still very fresh in her overall presence here today I think young man did a really nice job we'll see her back out here in division congratulations to you let's give him a nice round of applause Well, congratulations over here in the main Angus ring. First place in that class exhibited by Cattlecraft with Min Katie 133 JET. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in, and our judge will select his champion reserve junior yearling heifer. Back over in the Shorthorn ring, results from class nine. First place and congratulations went to Houston Faree of Sullivan, Indiana with CF KLS Dream On 221 and LXET. Second place in that class was exhibited by Stetson Reedy of Bethany, Illinois. Third place went to J Jace Folks of Stratford, Oklahoma. Fourth place and congratulations went to Josie Heater of Raymond, Kansas. Fifth place exhibited by Tyler Dossie of Thurman, Ohio. And sixth place and congratulations went to Cooper Hetrick. Now in the ring is Class 10 here in your Junior Shorthorn Plus show.
Young man's female has a weight base width advantage as you study her coming and going. There's just more mass to her skeletal design. And still with that added mass, she tucks the top of her shoulder in more appropriately than the female that stands here in second. Really complete, good kind of a female. Female in second is similar in terms of from a side profile. You read her though, over the top of her scapula. She opens up just a touch more, maybe not as much expanse in her forerib, and she just ever so slightly lets her chest floor down. Pound for pound, there's probably as much muscle in this female as any out here. And I love the freshness that you see. She's just leaner in her composition. Very attractive and flat-necked and still wide pin. She surprises you when you get behind her. Without the added condition, she gives up some rib shape. But still, I like this female quite well. I, I think for that one as a big bread could be kind of fun because she's still real fresh at this point. Her advantage is a skeletal design compared to this next saw made one. This heifer, as she gets out and goes, her knee is fairly forward and you, she, you read it from the top of her shoulder and just all the way down her knee is just too straight. We need more angle there but still soft and easy doing. The tan colored female, you like the roundness of her rib but when you back away from her, she triangulates downward where her chest floor is lower than her flank. Want to drop her flank down some. Young man's done a nice job with that female. We get out here in division on the main Angus side, and again, I think three really high quality females out here. We have our two class winners and the one second, and again, I think there's a lot of good in all three of these heifers. For me, if there's two that just put more things together in a more balanced package, uh, more of a maternal look, I'm a structure guy, I want cattle to move, they got to be flexible, they got to be able to stay in that herd for a long time that you can uh, make a lot of good cattle out of these and, and have a long future with these females. And so that's important to me. And I th so it, with that aspect, it comes down to these two class winners for me because I think structure on these has the advantage over our second place out of that very first class. But again, a lot of nice qualities on that one out of that second, uh, second place female there that I truly admire and I like. Uh, again, I think both these females uh, put a lot of good things together. I'm not going to describe them again. We just talked about them. But again, uh, I think an excellent set and a very nice division here. I'll go get you a champion in reserve. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Well, congratulations over here in the main Angus ring, your junior yearling champion coming out of class seven. Congratulations to Wyatt Lang of Clifton, Kansas. And reserve champion's gonna come out of class eight to big congratulations to Cattlecraft with Min Katie 133 J E T. Some give and take in this division champion, and I think the competitive pair is out here in our class winners. One of young man's female that went to the first class has a fresh freshness advantage. I think that female talking about her going into junior nationals and into the it's summer she's at a position for me where I'd like her and just love the blend of femininity and balance and soundness that you see. We give up just a touch of power relative to the female that wins that second class because she's a bit stouter in the lower part of her body, not quite as fresh and chiseled as that one's in the first class. I'm going to use our first class winner to win a division and follow up with the young man with the second class winner as reserve. Really, really good pair of cattle. Congratulations. Well, congratulations over here in your Shorthorn Plus ring. Results of your junior heifer calf division. Congratulations, your champion. We'll go to Houston Furry of Sullivan, Indiana with CFKLS Dream On 221 NLXTET. And reserve champion, and congratulations, goes to Grady McGrew of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania with CFNB Demi 21 Primo XET. We'll now look to see your next class here in the Shorthorn Plus ring. This will be class 13. Winter heifer calves. Over here in our junior main Angus ring, we are currently bringing in all of your division champion and reserves. And our judge, Mr. Scott Beyer, will be selecting his grand and reserve grand champion here in your junior main Angus show.
Young lady, solid black female, wins a class because of her soundness advantage. She gets out and goes, and just how she reaches is most appropriate of any of the cattle in the class. They all have enough body and dimension to them, so that soundness advantage is really what allows her to win. The red female, you like from an attractiveness standpoint, I want to change her in terms of reach, and, and she's just a bit tighter made, uh, doesn't reach out of her front end, doesn't re hit her track on her hind leg. When she gets stopped here you like the look she gives you just want to change her in terms of that just overall skeletal reach the yellow heifer has maybe just a bit more reach out of her front end and then a bit more flex to her knee she gets a bit bulky and coarser her head neck and shoulder not quite as feminine or attractive so there's some give and take in that pair between second and third I just opt to use a more attractive red female Well, congratulations. Back in the Shorthorn Plus ring, results of Class 13. Winner half for Cavs, first place, and congratulations. We'll go to Lindsay Jester of Moreland, Indiana, with CF Mona Lisa, 1131 OPXCT. Second place, and congratulations to Caitlin Berg of Osage, Iowa. In third place, exhibited by Addison Dick of Nuwata, Oklahoma. We'll now bring in Class 14, Senior Heifer Cavs. Well, if you would, on the main Angus side, let's put our hands together for these exhibitors out here in our champion drive. Excellent set of females. You know, some of the classes after we got through the calves, you know, probably weren't quite as many, but again, I think the quality out here is uh, represented very well. And, and, you know, when you judge a show, you hope to see uh, and make the job easier for you to find good cattle and sort through them and, and find ones that you like and appreciate. and. Understand the, understanding the breeding values on these cattle. Uh, they're not just going to be out here and be show cattle. They're going to go out and uh, probably be donors someday and improve this breed and this program. And so that's all important. And, and for me, uh, like I said earlier, I'm a structure guy. I like cattle that can move. they got to be built from the ground up. But we still, I'm one of those suckers too. I like a good fronted one. I like one that's unique and, and different and can be a breed changer. And, and that's what we're all striving for as breeders and raising cattle and making them better and making them more unique and, and putting all those parts and pieces together. To me, there's three of them out here that, you know, put those things together and, and are in uh, contention for me. Uh, again, I'm a guy, I raise cattle, we show cattle. You know, I, I give a lot of credit to the big bred cattle. I know how hard it is to get these cattle looking the way they do this time of the year. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work at home, keeping them fresh, keeping them right, being, still being able for them to get out and move and handle that show season. And so I, I put a lot of emphasis on, on those older cattle. Again, with that being said, I really like this calf on that at first division. I mean, I think this one is just crazy unique, uh, so well balanced and so good structured. You know, you, you can just project the future in this one, boy, and it looks really bright. Um, but with that being said, I've got two in mind that I'm going to go with, and I'm probably going to go against the grain of what I usually do or what I think. Uh, but again, I'm just going to go out and pick the two that I think are the best quality, put the both things together, things that we'd want to be at home and want to raise and, and take out and show ourselves. So if you would, I'm not going to talk them again. Excellent set. It was a great set of juniors out here. Let's give them all another nice round of applause. I'll get you a champion in reserve. Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Junior Main Angus Heifer, here at the Cattlemen's Congress. Congratulations goes to Wyatt Lang of Clifton, Kansas, with NIKL Rihanna's Ruby 130 JET.
And congratulations, your reserve grand champion, Manning, is female here in our junior show. Congratulations. We'll go to Devin Morton of Stratford, Oklahoma, with BK Knapsack 233K. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and thank our judge today, Mr. Scott Beyer of Ringo, Wisconsin. The power advantage goes to the heifer that wins the class, and you study her and her chest floor all the way back, and as she goes away from you, I think there's more true muscle expression and more true skeletal width in that female, and that's why she wins the class. Beautiful design, really sound. The soundness advantage also is with this spotted female, but when she goes away from you, even with the beautiful presentation, I can read through and see she's a bit just shallower gauged as she goes away from you she tapers from the upper part of her body and flattens but really really attractive and a breeding piece for that young man you get some more shape bred into her and I think there's lots that you can do with her um, just because of that advantage of softness and, and skeletal design from a look standpoint this one you probably like as good as any when she stops she's big topped and square hipped gets a little plainer at her knee we want to give her a bit more set but I think she's practical and functional in terms of her rib and hip and that's her advantage here is just scale and performance over the roan female the roan female just doesn't reach out of her stride as we'd like off either end she just wanted to give her a bit more flex out of her pastern give her more length as she goes away in terms of just body length one that comes next is big bodied and soft you like the depth of rib that you see in that female she's a bit coarser about the top of her neck and you get shorter strided around her hip appreciate that she's really heavy muscled as is the next female one that we want to just loosen her spine she's just too rigid off of both ends but still you appreciate she's soft and has some deflection ability for the young man well congratulations over here in the shorthorn plus ring first place in class 14 will go to back number 60259 Adeline Grace Blankenship of West Berlin, New York, with NL5177, Frosty147. Second place in that class, and congratulations, will go to Stanton Hooper of Temple, Oklahoma. Third place, and congratulations, will go to Kylie Dameron. Fourth place, exhibited by Abby Endress. Fifth place in that class, and congratulations, goes to Isabella Delgado. And sixth place, goes back to number 60226. We're now going to bring in those first and seconds, and our judge will select her champion reserve, senior heifer calves. Well, congratulations over here in the Junior Shorthorn Plus Ring. Your senior heifer calf champion coming out of Class 13. Congratulations. We'll go to Lindsay Jester of Moreland, Indiana with CF Mona Lisa, 1131 OPX ET. And congratulations, your reserve champion coming out of Class 14, Adeline Grace Blankenship, West Berlin, New York with NL5177 Frosty 147. We'll now look to see Class 17 over here in your Junior Shorthorn Plus ring. Back over in the main ring, we're about ready to get started with your open Main Angus show.
some are yearling female that can just flat out get and get out and move and you really like that about this female couple that with the freshness that you see through her front end just a well-balanced sound good made female that's going to be very competitive congratulations for the young lady well, congratulations in Class 17 over here in your junior short horn plus ring. Congratulations. Go to Brooklyn Fraser of Meeker, Oklahoma with FFF Perfect Chip 1063. We're now going to bring in Class 18. This will be late spring yearling females. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I think we're going to get started over here with your open main Angus show. We're excited to welcome your judge today, Mr. Garrett Lampy of Petersburg, Illinois. Garrett lives with his wife, Gretchen, and three children, Weston, Grayson, and Braylon. Garrett attended Butler Community College and Kansas State University. He is a show feed specialist at Early Bird Nutrition and currently raises trade or trades and sells about 30 to 50 show heifers annually in multiple breeds. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome our judge over here in ring two, Mr. Garrett Lampy. Well, uh, good afternoon. It's certainly a pleasure to, to be in Oklahoma City at the Cattlemen's Congress and evaluate your uh, main and main influence cattle uh, the next couple days. And uh, I think we've got a really good one to start here. And I think phenotypically, uh, that one just dominates this class in terms of her mass and her power, her dimension. Very loose and, sh and good as, as we ask that one to travel about the ring. I think she's still very attractive in the way that she's built for one that's got a shot more power and shape in her. I'm not a numbers guy, but I, I do point out on this one, you know, maybe her, her uh, CED is a bit concerning for me, but when they're that good, they still need to go ahead and win this particular class. I think the two heifers that round out the class are, are pretty particularly close to me. I think there's just a shot more uh, to the heifer that stands directly in front of me, and that's why she's going to be second. She's a bit more opened up there in her fore rib, gives you a shot more curvature there to her lower rib. Uh, I think both these heifers are good in terms of their structure and their reach off of both ends of their skeleton. I just see a shot more uh, cow in that one that's going to go in second. Young man, it's going to round out the class. Good heifer in terms of look and balance and eye appeal. And, and I do. I think this one can catch up and make this class a shot more competitive uh, here in another 60 to 90 days because she is. She's attractive. She's flat shouldered. She's good there in her angles on both ends of her skeleton. Uh, just a really nice trio of heifers here uh, in your first class of Maine Angus. 
competitive pair at the top end here, uh, two highly presented females, and the one that wins the class I think is just more genuine in her skeleton and her presentation in terms of muscle. You read her as you watch her go away from you, watch her in terms of how she sets her foot to the ground, she's square and she's more correct from her loin to her hooks to her pins to her hip, how she handles all of that configuration. She just gets out and moves more appropriately there. Uh, and just holds herself together better. Uh, this big female that stands here in second, she's big middle, she's sappy and soft made, but I think some of that is just some extra flesh down lower and in condition. But the thing that concerns me is when she gets out and goes from just upper part of her hip all the way down to her hock and, and there's too much movement and rotation there, but gonna make a nice cow that's a competitive pair. Red and white female is one that you like from a leanness standpoint She's not as heavy conditioned through the lower portion of her body. She actually tracks wider than the black female that stands immediately preceding her. And that gives up some of the center and midsection, so there's give and take there. Young man's black female, again, one that's stout from a muscularity standpoint. She gives up too much in terms of skeletal angulation to move further in the class. Want to give her more slope to her shoulder, give her just more correctness in terms of how her chest floor sits into her front end. Well, congratulations over here in your open main Angus ring results on a class one. First place and congratulations will go to Devin Morton with BK Knapsack, 233K. Second place exhibited by Jordan Peterson. And third place will go to Cooper Burling. Now in the ring, this is actually class 10 main Angus spring heifer calves born April of 2022. Back over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring. We have the results from class 18. First place and congratulations will go to Carter Cornegy of Tulsa, Oklahoma with Salt Fancy Cherry 1221 JET. Second place and congratulations went to Vivian Lou Thomas of Troy, Alabama. Third place exhibited by Peyton Lynn of Red Rock, Oklahoma. And fourth place in that class went to Logan Diffie of Little Elm, Texas. Now in the ring, our judge will select your champion reserve here in your intermediate female division. Young ladies heifer that won the first class has an advantage in terms of leanness and freshness. I like that presentation of that female. It allows her to be a bit tidier necked and tidier in her chest floor. She's going to win her division today. She's a single entry. Young lady that stands second will be reserved. Uh, congratulations to her. Well, con well, congratulations over here in the junior Shorthorn Plus ring. Congratulations, your champion coming out of class 17. Congratulations to Brooklyn Frazier of Meeker, Oklahoma with FFF Perfect Chip 1063. And reserve champion will go to Carter Cornegy of Tulsa, Oklahoma with Salt Fancy Cherry 1221 JET. We'll now look to see your next class here in our Short Horn Plus show. This will be class 21, early spring yearling females.
Well, over here on the main Angus side, a really, really good class with some quality and depth all the way through. And, and I'm, the heifer that's going to win this class probably isn't, doesn't blow the class away in terms of any certain area, uh, but I think she does put the most good together. I, I'm certainly happy with that one where, is, where she is from a structure standpoint. I think that one's got enough mass and true dimension and upper rib cage uh, you know, to go out and make a really good female, make a tremendous bread for this young man. She's not uh, just the wildest looking or the most eccentric and, and that we'll see, uh, but I do. I think that one's functionally very, very good. I, I like her extra mass and substance and bone that she sets on. It's a good heifer and a logical place for me to start. I do. The, the heifer that comes in second fits me very well from a design standpoint for the way that you talk about cattle being put together. Sure, she's not just rocket right there at her chin and, and, and the base of her neck, uh, but fundamentally that one is built so good. Her angles are good, and when we put that one in motion, she probably does have a shot more reach and, and flow uh, than the heifer that, that precedes her. I just wish that there was just a shot more to that one, uh, especially when we study the cattle up high. Uh, but that one's awfully nice and, and a good place to go second. Young man that's going to come in third, uh, if you want them big, stout, heavy featured, this is probably the one that you go to. For me, I just need to change the angle of that shoulder, maybe even just woe her up in terms of performance and, and where she's at at weight per day of age at this stage of the game, uh, but one that is definitely stout, got some features, some foot size, and some bone. Uh, the next heifer that comes, probably a little leaner in her composition, and I certainly like that. I just need to change this one on both sides of her skeleton when we ask her to go a bit too rigid there in her hock and her pastern off of her hind two, uh, but one that certainly gives you a quality look. I'll come in the young lady here that's going to round out the class. Uh, this one's certainly green and youthful in her appearance, and, and, and I don't think uh, necessarily that she's small. She runs into some that are just probably a little further along in terms of weight and condition and maturity, uh, and I'll compliment this young lady. This heifer's tremendous in her figures. Uh, when you study that one on paper, I just simply, if we could just widen that one up, give her a shot more gauge all the way through, I think she makes this class a little more competitive. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Well, congratulations in our second class here in your open main Angus show. First place and congratulations will go to M-I-N-N -N Kimmy 244-K-E-T exhibited by Jacob Bresner of Greymont, Illinois. Second place in that class exhibited by Hannah French of Wakeman, Ohio. Third place and congratulations goes to Raymond Benneker of Hamilton, Ohio. Fourth place exhibited by J.C. Wolfinger. And fifth place and congratulations will go to Raylan Shiroz. Now in the ring, we'll bring in your final class here in our Junior Heifer Calf Division. This will be Class 11, Main Angus Spring Heifer Calves, born March of 2022. In this particular class, I'll say probably the first thing is, is uh, 
and I use this comparison a lot of times, just making fun, but there's a couple of these heifers that are like me. They need to push away from the dinner table. Um, they're a little, a little pudgy, and, uh, for you know, it's hard to keep these junior yearlings lean, but I think sometimes we do, we do uh, just go too far, and this class is probably an example of we need to just recognize that the, it's more important to get them bred and have them lean um, and have them fresh. And I think the freshness advantage is shown right here in this class winter. Um, she's bred. She has a nice udder started. She's sound. She gets out and goes really well. Young man does a great job getting her stuck. Congratulations to him. She tucks her shoulder into the top or just a bit better than the female in sends in second. She gives up some upper hip width to that second place female, gives up just a touch of bone, but I love the overall completeness, the soundness, the freshness that we see in that black and white female. The red female, you know, if you want to say, well, she's longer hipped and longer fronted and she gives you this killer look out here, I don't disagree with you, but I think when you lean that female up, there's not as much true width there as you might think. She's bigger footed, stouter featured than the one that wins the class, but both of those are really sound, high quality, good kind of cattle that I like really, really well well. Same goes for this female that comes next. She's the athlete of the trio. If you watch her get out and go, the slope and angle and the just design of her skeleton is awesome. Unfortunately, she's a little higher in her tail head and just a little bulkier up front. I want to tuck her chest in and lean her up some, but she's sound and going to make a heck of a cow for that young man. Black female comes around here. Chest is protruding out some because we have a bit of added condition there. Not as much calf showing in terms of udder, but still parallel in her lines from her mid-rib back, level-hipped, and gets out and moves adequately. Then we get into four females that aren't as attractive in terms of femininity, aren't as sound in terms of their front ends. Just want to lean them up, redesign them, and realign them in terms of structural integrity on these last four females. Another good class as we get into these March uh, Maine Angus females, and and quite honestly, the heifer that wins this class does so quite handily, uh, is never in question once she hit the ring. Now, I don't think this one's perfect. I mean, there's some things I want to change about that one, uh, like the way that she comes out of her front end, particularly uh, there on her offside front foot. She wants to roll that one in pretty good when she comes at you. She's not perfect in her hip design, but still, in this class, she has to win. She's just overwhelming in terms of her body mass, her center rib dimension, her look, her presence. Uh, I think that that one's nice uh, and, and just an overwhelming winner in this particular class. Young man here that's going to come in second. Uh, I think there's some, some neat pieces in this cattle. When you talk about one that's just very genuine in her shape, uh, she's bold right behind her shoulder and has some, some width and dimension uh, from a muscle and an upper rib cage standpoint. And, and that's her decisive advantage in the, in the heifer that's going to stand right below her. Uh, I think that one's just a shot more genuine. I think there's a bit more uh, true cow power in this particular female. Ideally, I'd like to change her in just a little bit in the way that she travels. Uh, but I still, I think when you give and take, I'll take just a shot more power and shape uh, in that particular female. Good sound structured, soft made one uh, that's going to come in third. But like I said, if we could just widen that one up from a gauge standpoint, from a total body dimension standpoint, I think that she, may, she makes that pair a little bit closer. Nice female. There you go. Go third. Young lady that's going to round out the class, one that just certainly just gives up a bit in terms of performance and weight per day of age, but a quality female that's built good. Uh, looks like she's going to make a tremendous cow. Congratulations to those exhibitors. Well, congratulations here in your final class in our Junior Heifer Calf Division in your main Angus show. First place and congratulations. We've got SIL Hattie 229 KET, exhibited by Ryder Hogan of Lenox, Iowa. Second place in that class, exhibited by Champ Davis of Wheeler, Texas. Third place, exhibited by Britton Nickel of Clearfield, Iowa. And fourth place in that class, exhibited by Cheyenne Chaliwa of Merrimack, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in your first and seconds, and our judge will select his champion reserve here in Division One. Back over in the Shorthorn Plus ring, we do have the results from your junior female division. Champion and congratulations goes to Tyler DeGroot of Egerton, Minnesota with DeGroot Cherry Primo 122 and reserve champion in that division. 
exhibited by Tyler Dotsey of Thurman, Ohio, with SFF Augusta Pride, 127F. Now in the ring is Class 24, junior yearling females. I guess while I'm on my soapbox about leaning them up, I just soon go ahead and continue or finish it up. But uh, these two that are going to lead the class, you know, they're two-year-olds basically uh, here pretty soon. And I sure wish we had just a touch more utter showing on these cattle. And, and folks, uh, you know, I'm a cow person at heart. And I think that we have to realize and remember this is about teaching young people. And at some point, we've got to keep that in focus of getting those cattle bred and, and, and realizing that these cattle have to go back and make money for these young people at some point in time. So it's just a soapbox of mine. I just wish they were a little further bred. Love this female in terms of balance and eye appeal. Um, she's super neat in terms of squareness of hip and levelness of hip and, and love how she gets out and goes. She's the freshest female out here in terms of just look and balance. I sure wish there was a bit more udder in the, underneath that female. Next female is one that you like through her midsection. She shows us maybe a, just a touch more there through her midsection. Um, she's one that is not quite as chiseled up front as that female that wins the, first, wins the class. But I love the squareness. I love the balance, the big foot on this female as well. Not quite as wide to the lower part of her chest floor relative to the one that wins the class relative to their frame size. Big scaled female here that is showing us some other de development here. I like that about her. She disappoints you when you get behind her and watch how she handles her hawk. She's super wide structured and wide based and you like that. Appreciate the power of that female. Um, she's one though that just doesn't go quite as well as we want her to. You can see she's a bit straighter at her knee as well. We conclude with a female that's a bit staler up front. She's round and open through her midsection in terms of rib shape, a bit more masculine and terminal from end to end. Well, over here on the main Angus side, we get ready to pick our calf champion in our first division of the day. And, and, and I'm really happy with this uh, this six heifers that are out here, I think that we had some depth and some quality in a few of those classes. And, and there's a nice group of seconds that are standing over there on the further away from me. Uh, but, but obviously it does come down to your three class winners out here that are in contention to win this particular division. And, and for me, there's one that does it pretty logically. Just to talk about them, uh, just real quickly. Uh, the, the heifer that wins that first class, um, I think that one's so good and, and, and so unique in, in the way that she does a few things. I think uh, very smooth in all of her transitions when you study her from her shoulder to her forerib, absolutely gorgeous in her hip and her hind leg design. That one travels really, really well. You know, I don't know that that one's just rocket necked, but they don't always have to be for me. When, they, when they're that good, they're that smooth. I said that this division was easy. Young man, you're going to win champion in this particular division. I think that the challenge in the sort comes between the two cattle uh, that were their first in the next two classes. Uh, I, I think the heifer that comes out of the second class is just very genuine, uh, similar to our division winner in the way that she's smooth. Uh, she's opened up there in her four ribs. She's got plenty of body. She's big footed, big bone, love the foot shape and quality in that particular female. No, she doesn't just come out here and overwhelm you in terms of the extras and the look and the big sweeping belly that the heifer does uh, that comes out of that last class because that one, boy, she can paint a picture at times. But as we said in class, there's some things I want to tweak on that one just a little bit. I think this particular decision for reserve in this division is close. Young man out of the second class is going to be reserve. Single entry is a two-year-old female, and you like the fact that she's in April, that calved in April, and does a nice job with the heifer calf. And when you have a cow that you see a, a progeny at side, you say, wow, she may have outdone herself. Uh, that's a... a, a 
just an accolade for the cow. Congratulations for the young folks for managing that cow. I like the utter design of that cow. I like the combination of silentness in that pair. Congratulations. Nice job with that pair. Well, congratulations back over in the main Angus Ring. Results on your first division. Congratulations. Your champion will go to Devin Morton of Stratford, Oklahoma, with BK Knapsack 233K. And reserve champion that division coming out of class two. Congratulations went to Jacob Bresner of Graymont, Illinois. We'll now bring in your next class in division. This will be class 12, Maine Angus Spring Heifer Calves, born January to February of 2022. Back over under Shorthorn Plus Ring. The results from the last two classes. Class 24, first place, and congratulations went to Samantha Van Voris of Bowling Green, Ohio. Second place, and congratulations went to Kai Hendrickson of Charlotte, Montana. Third place, exhibited by Case Glacier. And fourth place in that class, exhibited by Hayden Deeds. And congratulations in our final division, your champion Cal Cap Fair, coming out of Class 28, Kaya Hendrickson of Charlotte, Montana. Well, ladies and gentlemen, over here in ring one, we are about ready to get started with your Shorthorn Plus Junior Show Drive. We're going to bring in those division champion and reserves. Well, entering the ring now, we're bringing in all those division champions coming out of your late spring heifer calf division. Congratulations. Went to Carly Goats of Oak Harbor, Ohio with Sol Primo's Lady, 25K ET. Coming in out of your early spring heifer calf division. Champion and congratulations was exhibited by Mark Ginskeep of Lafayette, Indiana with CF Mona Lisa, 255 OPX ET. Champion in that following division, congratulations to Houston Furry of Sullivan, Indiana with CFKLS Dream On 221 NLXET. In your senior half or calf division, congratulations going to your champion, Lindsay Jester of Moreland, Indiana with CF Mona Lisa 1131 OPXET. Coming in out of that next division, congratulations went to Brooklyn Frazier of Meeker, Oklahoma with FFF Perfect Chip 1063. Coming in out of your junior division, your champion junior female, exhibited by Tyler DeGroote of Egerton, Minnesota with DeGroote Cherry Primo 122. Coming in out of your senior yearling division, Congratulations, champion exhibited by Samantha Van Voris, Bowling Green, Ohio, with CF Mona Lisa 136 OPX ET. And last but certainly not least in your cat calf division, congratulations. Your champion wins Akaya Hendrickson of Charlotte, Montana. Ladies and gentlemen, here in the Jim Norick Arena, let's put our hands together for all of our junior exhibitors here in our Shorthorn Plus show.
Before she gets on the microphone, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and thank our judge today, Jeremy Viator. Really an outstanding uh, class over here, uh, January, February, Maine Angus, born females, and, and good cattle all the way through, and there's some depth and some quality, and uh, you know, probably not the biggest show that, that we're going to have, but I tell you what, this class is awfully good, and I think there's some give and take, but for me, the heifer that wins this class, she does so quite handily. She's the combination of the two heifers that's going to stand behind her, just in the way that that one's angular there, when you study her about her head and neck, I think that one looks looks like a female, and I do. I think that this one probably does things that when they started to come up with this Maine Angus breed that, that we probably started to envision because she's got that ladylike feature and femininity that an Angus does, but with a shot more power and substance and dimension. Uh, good fit, good bone underneath that one. Uh, that's a good one for me to go ahead and win this particular class. Young man, it's going to go second. I like this heifer a good bit. And, and ideally, in a perfect world, uh, for a heifer calf, I'd probably lean this one up just a shot uh, because I think that one, too, is very attractive about her head and her neck. She's pushing just a shot of shoulder there. Uh, but that one is so opened up down low, and, and that's her big advantage in the heifer that's going to stand directly behind her. When you study that one through her undercarriage and where she hooks in there uh, behind her shoulder on the underside of her forerib, I think that that one's very, very good in that regard. Good enough in her structure, you know, maybe not just the stoutest from a muscle standpoint, uh, but good cattle there. Uh, the heifer that's going to come third, attractive, lean, uh, probably a little bit more my speed in terms of the condition that she's in. I just wish that we could gauge that one up just a shot, just stouten her up, give her a shot more power, uh, but an awfully, awfully nice trio of heifers there. The young lady that's going to come next, uh, probably the more moderate heifer of the remaining trio in this class, and I think that that works to her advantage. I think that one's extremely easy fleshing. She looks like a good high quality uh, female that's going to go out and into production and do some good things because she's got plenty of reach. She's got plenty of mass. Just if we could just tone that one up just a shot in terms of frame, I think she makes that top end even more competitive. A bigger heifer is the one that comes next, and, and it probably works to her disadvantage just a little bit. She's just too harsh and dry there in her, in her rib shape, uh, but nonetheless, a long-bodied, neat, attractive heifer. Young lady that's going to round out the class, I wish that we could just put a shot more power, dimension, weight per day of age on this heifer, because she is. She's good structured. She gets out and goes and has some reach. Uh, just too opened up there, like in her shoulder, and just need to give her more, more shape and growth. Good class of females. So just a little bit of history here. Lampy, I'm going to do it. So Lampy's grandfather is the person who started me showing cattle. And for two kids that come from, and I guess her moms are probably watching, and, our grand, and Lampy's grandmother are watching. And for two kids who grew up showing cattle to come from where we came from, to get to be in the arena together at Cattlemen's Congress. You know, it says a lasting legacy. That's pretty darn cool. Um, I grew up in South Louisiana. Lampy grew up in western Kansas. And uh, his grandfather, Paul St. Blanc, was one hell of a cowman. And uh, if you watch us sort, and we don't pick similarly, or we don't pick them to look like cows, I'll be disappointed. Because I guarantee you that young man over there will pick them to look like cows. And I know I will too. So thanks for having me, Lampy. I'm always proud of you, buddy. Thank you. Last thing, and I say it today. I said it earlier. Just remember, folks, uh, you young people that are out here, folks that are ringside, we have an obligation to the beef industry. We have an obligation to agriculture. 
uh, to be somebody that uh, goes out and talks about what we do in the beef industry and uh, the importance uh, of the beef industry for agriculture. I think it's really, really important that we go out and uh, we make a point to tell our story because if we don't, there's another side that's going to tell a version of the story that uh, we may not like their side of the story. So please be somebody that uh, is proud to be involved in agriculture. If you show cattle, you're part of the beef industry, and I think that's really important that you tell that story. With that said, young man, congratulations. You're going to have champion female. Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Shorthorn Plus female here in our junior show at the Cattlemen's Congress. Congratulations, Houston Freeze, Sullivan, Indiana, with CF KLS Dream On 221 LNXET. And you can't say what I just said a while ago about getting cattle bred and being two years old and uh, getting a job done and not use this one for reserve. So congratulations to this young lady. Well, thank you, Jeremy, those uh, kind words. And I, I can't do stuff like that because I, I do. I get too emotional and too choked up. And But I, I do know that... Uh, my grandfather is, uh, I, I hope he's proud. We, we haven't had him for quite a while, but I hope he is. Now, I think this is a good pair of females, and I mean, they're about as opposite as you can get, and, and I think there's some trade-off in the two, and, and she just made the comment about using cows. I don't know which one's going to be the best cow phenotypically down the road, but I do. I think there's a shot more generating power in the heifer that I'm going to lead off with. I mean, this one's plenty big in terms of frame size and growth for me, um, but, but I like this one. I, she's got some true shape, big feet, big bones, uh, really a big foot advantage in this particular class. You go on paper, this one's absolutely phenomenal, and, and I certainly think that that helps her in this particular class. I think that's just a good way to start a uh, good female there to win this particular class. Young man, it's going to be second. Uh, don't be ashamed, because I, I think this one's very good in terms of just the basics. I think she's moderate. I think she's easy fleshing. She's got plenty enough reach and structural integrity when we ask her to go. She just doesn't have that overwhelming amount a shot of power and bone and foot that that class winner does, but two really nice heifers to win this particular class and be champion in reserve in this division. Well, congratulations back over here in the main Angus ring and a good way to continue on with our show in your fall heifer calf division. Congratulations, champion goes to Justin and Rachel Clopton of Covington, Texas. With JRCS, Sarah's prima donna, 712J. And second place in reserve champion that division, going to Evan Roden of Coleman, Alabama. Now look to see your next class in division. This will be class 14, main Angus summer yearling heifers, born May to June of 2021.
Another automatic division out here, and, and three heifers that I certainly are good in terms of quality. And, and quite honestly, the heifer that wins this class, if you know me and the way that I like big cattle presented, this one very much fits me, just in terms of her leanness, her freshness, uh, still looks like a lady. And yeah, okay, compared to maybe the two heifers that stand directly behind her, you're going to question, well, I know you like power and mass. But you can't tell me that that one doesn't have enough, and especially in the rig and the condition that she comes to as today, I think that that one's logical in terms, for me, the way that I like them. She's so neat and so fresh there when we study her about the front one-third of her body. She gets out and moves plenty good. Uh, just a really nice place for me to start. I like this heifer that comes in second, and, and, and quite honestly, if, if we put these two heifers in the same rig, in the same condition, I think that it gets awfully close because this one is big footed, big bone, gets out, travels the ring. It's just right there. When I study her there at the front side of her shoulder, the base of her neck, she's good there in her chest floor. She just gets a little bit plainer, wants to run downhill ever so slightly, but really a powerful brood cow prospect there uh, to come out in second. You want them really stout and big-legged and, and all the muscle and tune and shape in the world, you probably come to this one. Uh, for me, she just needs freed up on both sides of her skeleton, needs leaned up compositionally, but a very good, highly presented female to round out this class. Well, congratulations over here in the main Angus ring. Results class 14 in your summer yearling division. Congratulations. Your champion goes to JRDA. Lady Gamer 991J exhibited by Turner Longacre of Kellyville, Oklahoma. Second place in reserve champion will go to Jacob Bresner of Graymont, Illinois. And third place in that class. And congratulations goes to Jenna Young of KDiz, Ohio. We'll now bring in Class 15. These will be Maine Angus late spring yearling heifers born March, April of 2021. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here in Jim Norick Arena, we are going to get started in ring one in just about 10 minutes with your open Shorthorn Plus female show.
I mean, this uh, what a tremendous class of five here. Uh, we got uh, April and March born uh, Maine Angus females, and there's there's good ones all the way throughout. Uh, like the heifer that's going to end up rounding out this class. I mean, that one's attractive. She's nice. She's well presented. She's good in terms of her structure. Just simply, just not quite enough of that one to to run with these heifers uh, on the top end of this class. Because I I do I think this top trio of heifers is really good, and I think that the top two in this class are really close. The heifer that wins, there's just a shot more length than that one. When you study her from the top of her shoulder out of her tail head, she's the longer bodied heifer. She's definitely, without a doubt, longer and smoother there in her hip, a little maybe even just smoother in her muscle pattern. And, and I think the advantage for me is, is her effort when she goes, when we ask that one to travel, it's just very smooth and it works together. The heifer that's going to come second. I'm not saying that this one gets outside of herself when she tracks, but she does. She's got just a shot of waddle on either end of her skeleton, so it doesn't look as smooth and, and flawless when we ask that one to go. But you talk about one that's opened up in terms of rib shape and dimension and got true muscle and shape and power. I think that one's very good in that regard. Good uh, pair of heifers on the top end of this pair. This uh, heifer that, went, that comes third, I mean, that, that one is attractive and probably the most ladylike in her feature of the, uh, the initial trio of heifers. She's like my class winner in terms of length and got that extra length of body, that extra length of hip. She's very attractive in that hip and her hind leg set. When we compare her to the two heifers that are directly in front of her, I just wish that there was a shot more of this one down low. I wish she was a shot more opened up in her rib cage from a three dimension standpoint, but a good female nonetheless. A really easy fleshing heifer that's going to come next. I think that these two heifers on the bottom of this, I think there was a little bit of a decision to be made here. Uh, I chose to go with one that I think that there's just a shot more true dimension and natural cow ability in this one. Young lady, like I said, that's going to round out this class. High quality female, presented very well. Just wish that there was a shot more to her. Give those um, young people a round of applause. Very nice, effort, nice class of Maine Angus heifers. Well, congratulations over here in the main Angus ring. Results from class 15. First place and congratulations goes to Wyatt Lang of Clifton, Kansas with N-I-K-L, Rihanna's Ruby, 130-J-E-T. Second place in that class and congratulations will go to Rebecca Lankford of Okmulgee, Oklahoma. Third place was exhibited by Carly Seabrandt of Orange City, Iowa. Fourth place and congratulations will go to Riley Short in fifth place in that class, exhibited by Clara Bollinger. Now in the rings, your final class of Maine Angus females. This will be class 16, Maine Angus junior yearling heifers, born January to February of 2021. Really good single entry here and uh, one that fits that basic mold that I've talked about, you know, cattle that have true dimension and shape. They're opened up in terms of their body cavity. I think this one's smooth in her transitions. I think she's attractive in the angles uh, as we ask that one to go. She's maybe a shot planer there about her head and neck, but a high quality single entry heifer. We look forward to seeing her out here in this division. Well, congratulations. First place in class 16 will go to M-I-N-N-K-D-133-J-E-T, exhibited by Cattlecraft. We're now going to bring in those first and seconds, and our judge will select his champion reserve junior yearling heifers.
Well, if you would, uh, put your hands together ringside and congratulate these exhibitors. Really, what an outstanding division. Uh, you know, obviously we're getting towards the end of this show and, and haven't had just the most main Angus cattle out here. Uh, but this division was really good. And, and, and the couple classes that we had, there, you know, this one particular class that, that these two came out of, there was depth and quality all the way throughout. And, and I think that you guys as breeders and the people selling these cattle need to be commended on that. Because in, in reality, this is a relatively new breed. And to get them this good, this quick, uh, I think is uh, really my hats are off to, to the cattle, the people that are making these cattle. Because I think all three of these particular heifers that stand out here are really nice. I, I thought that that class was really good. Uh, I think that those heifers are a shot different. Uh, and I'm okay. I'm a guy that's, I can take different and, and types and kinds, but then I, I, I just step back and I got to go, I got to find the best two. The two that came out of that first class are going to be champion and reserve in this division. Well, congratulations, your champion junior yearling heifer coming out of class 15. Congratulations. We'll go to NIKL Rihanna's Ruby 130 JET. Congratulations to Wyatt Lang and Reserve Champion. Also coming out of the same class, congratulations to TLAC Miss Darla's Gold 417J, exhibited by Rebecca Langford of Okamulgee, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in our division champion and reserves, and our judge, Mr. Garrett Lampy, will be selecting his grand and reserve grand champion, Open Main Angus Heifers. Well, once again, if you would, ringside, put your hands together and congratulate these Maine Angus exhibitors. I tell you, uh, this has been an incredible show all the way from the very beginning, and then we, we end up with a very good, deep, stout division uh, of big bred heifers uh, to round out this show. Uh, guys, it's, it's been really good. Uh, just 
that's about what I can say about it. And I, I've been pretty excited to stand out here and evaluate these cattle because honestly, this is this is a breed that uh, I particularly have a lot of interest in. Um, we've got that good base of Angus cows, and we've started to cross them up a little bit, and we'll have some of our first maiden Angus uh, born, uh, I guess, here just in a couple months. So I, I really have, uh, I got a great respect for what the breed is doing and and allowing these these composite cattle, if you will, uh, because they're good. They're taking the best of, of two different breeds and, and making them high quality cattle that are not only uh, show heifers, you know, obviously all these have a look and, and a neatness and attractiveness to them, but at the end of the day, I think that they're really good cattle. I think these two heifer calves that win division one and two, they're, they're awfully special, and, and I'm not a guy that absolutely just use, loves to use a heifer calf, but I can tell you, these two are certainly in contention for me because I do. I think these cattle are built right. I think that they've got the right pieces and the structure's good, that they do. They can. They can look like that big heifer, uh, you know, a year from now uh, because those, those cattle are awfully good. The heifer that comes out of that fall division, uh, a little bigger in terms of frame. Uh, she wins that division from a structure standpoint. Uh, having a shot more mass and bone and foot size and a high quality one uh, to boot. The big heifer, uh, the, the summer born, uh, we talked about, we just like how lean and fresh and her overall presentation, I think that that one's awfully good in that regard. She's maybe not as opened up and as dense and as mass and as big featured as some of the other cattle out here, uh, but one, I think that from a flexibility standpoint, from a attractiveness and neatness, I think that that one's a very good breeding piece. Big bred heifer that wins that last division, I think is just really impressive uh, in terms of just how smooth she is. I love the extra length of body, the attractiveness and hip and hind leg in that particular female. I think that this is awfully good. I'm gonna take one look at them, but congratulations to the winners. Excellent Maine Angus show. And congratulations, your grand champion, Maine Angus Female, here in our open show at the Cattlemen's Congress. Congratulations. Coming out of that last division, exhibited by Wyatt Lang of Clifton, Kansas, is NIKL Rihanna's Ruby, 130 JET. And congratulations, your reserve champion man Angus female coming out of Division One. Congratulations goes to Devin Morton of Stratford, Oklahoma, with BK Knapsack 233K. Thank you to our judge, Mr. Garrett Lampy. We are going to get started over here in Ring Two with your junior maintainer show. Over in the Shorthorn Ring, we are getting started with your open Shorthorn Plus female show. We're excited to welcome you our judge this afternoon, Mr. Jeff Gooden of Kingsville, Missouri. Jeff is the general manager of Valley Oak Sangus Farm in Missouri. He's married to Amy, and they have two grown children, Madison and Reed, who are both very active in the Angus and Hereford associations. Jeff has judged numerous national junior shows of several different breeds. He is also judged at many shows, such as Louisville, Denver, and Kansas City. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome our Shorthorn Plus judge, Mr. Jeff Gooden.
Well, first of all, uh, let me say it's certainly a pleasure to be here to judge your uh, Shorthorn Plus show at the uh, Cattlemen's Congress, and uh, what a nice way to start. I think we got a heifer that uh, starts to the top of this class. You just love her up through her front end. Uh, you like that extra extension she has. She's got a good hip in her. Maybe if we change her, when she gets out on the move, she wants to get up on her top, just maybe a, a tick. But uh, again, that's a pretty nice heifer here. And, and when you look down at the paper, she just really excels as far as her numbers, as far as her yearling growth. And uh, you really appreciate that about this heifer. Uh, the young man's heifer that's going to come out here in second. One, I really like her up through her front end. She's extremely sound when we get her out here on the move. Maybe just a little plainer right there in that hip compared to the heifer that we're starting the class with. But again, a nice female here in second. The red heifer is one that uh, is really attractive up through her front end. She too maybe gets up in that top on the move just a little. Maybe doesn't hold them front feet under quite as well as the two heifers right in front of her when we get her on the move. Not maybe quite as soft in her middle. The white heifer coming next is one that I think is going to make a tremendous cow. Uh, she's one that maybe just gets a little higher in that tail set. I'd like to put that down inside of her a little bit if I could. But she's another one that I think is going to make a nice cow. The heifer turning the corner here is one that just gets a little wastier right there in her navel when you get to looking at her. Maybe just carrying a little more shoulder than I'd like to see uh, to get her up any higher today. But another nice female. The heifer rinding out the class. She just gives up some performance uh, today to the heifers in front. I think that just sets her a little bit behind. She looks a little quicker in her maturity pattern to me compared to some of the rest of them in front of her. Nice set of heifers. Nice way to start our show. Well, congratulations over here in ring one. We have gotten started with your open shorthorn plus female show. Congratulations. First place in that first class. We'll go to Carly Goats of Oak Harbor, Ohio with Sol Primo's Lady 25KET. Second place in that class. And congratulations. We'll go to Drake Penrod of Jonesboro, Illinois. Third place was exhibited by Talia Ferguson Sanders of Chickasha, Oklahoma. Fourth place exhibited by L.H. Show Cattle. Fifth place and congratulations in that class will go to Sheridan Souls of Sperry, Oklahoma. And sixth place was exhibited by Wesley Stone. That also is your first division. We're now going to go into class four over here in your Shorthorn Plus ring. Over in the maintainer ring, we have gotten started with class 17. This will be your first class here in our junior maintainer show. We'd like to welcome back to the ring our judge, Mr. Scott Beyer of Ringo, Wisconsin.
Well, another nice class of uh, shorthorn plus heifers here, and we got some differences in type and kind, and uh, I'll be the first to admit, these first two, uh, I got some differences between the two, but for me, I'm going to go with the heifer that I think is the freshest up to her front end. She's the cleanest down to her chest floor. She's really sound when we get her out of here on the move. She's probably the greenest in her condition. I don't have no problem with that, uh, but just looking at the scale, she's just giving up a little bit of uh, performance uh, today, but uh, we'll go with that to keep them that green and that fresh look. And uh, the heifer's going to come out second here is one that is a high performing heifer as far as her weight. You love her hip structure, you like the foot and legs she sets down. She's getting a little wastier right there in that chest floor for a young heifer. Maybe not quite as feminine, a little coarser right there at the top of her shoulder, uh, but that's just going to make a nice cow right there from that shoulder back. That's a nice female. Then this heifer coming out here in third is definitely one that catches your eye as far as I appeal, highly fitted, highly presented. This young man does a nice job showing this heifer. My problem with her is when I get her out here on the move and I get right behind her, she wants to roll over on them hind feet uh, when I get right behind her and watch her walk. I just need to make her a little sounder, give her just a little more extension up to her front end. The next heifer coming out here, the blue roan, is one that extremely long bodied, big hip, She's just not quite as soft in her middle for me today compared to the heifers that's right in front of her. Heifer rounding out the class is one that uh, I think is just a little quicker maturing. I just worry about how big she's going to end up being. She gets a little coarser right there in the lower part of her shoulder. I just like to extend her out all over a little bit for me today. Well, congratulations over here in the Short Horn Plus ring. We have the results from Class 4. First place in congratulations will go to Kaya Hendrickson of Charlotte, Montana with HHCC Sweet Dreams reward to 10 k Second place in that class and congratulations goes to Lane Blankenship. Third place exhibited by Jace Taylor. Fourth place went to Emily Crum and fifth place to Helen Spears. We'll now bring in Class 5. These will be early spring heifer calves. Really nice class of uh, May females here to start off our maintainer show. And uh, again, the quality through this class all the way down through is very impressive. A lot of differences, but a lot of good in all these cattle that certainly as a breeding program you can utilize and use and breed upon and change and make improvements in, in your herd. Uh, this heifer just sorts itself to the top for me very easily. She kind of hits you when she comes in the ring. Just so well balanced the way that neck is designed out of that shoulder. Blends in so well behind that blade carries that length down her spine, out her hip. She's good at the ground. I like the sweep uh, through the center portion of her body. Again, just balances up, ties together top to bottom, front to rear. Gives you a really nice look, super sound on the go. The heifer at second, you know, there's some give and take in these next three heifers. And, you know, and I analyze them and you break cattle down, you know, she, she's plenty, plenty uh, out there for me as far as look. You, you love the added extension and the cool look that she has from the side. I think she has enough rib shape there to get, still have a maternal look as she gets older and matures. The added advantage that she has and gets her in the, third, in the second spot is that she is sounder at the ground. She can get out and move and travel. I like the foot shape and size of this one as well. Again, just really well designed. You know, maybe a little more refined than I would like up front, and I do like good fronted ones, but I think we just need to match up just a little bit better uh, compared to our class winner here. The young lady struggling with this one here. She doesn't want to be a show heifer here today, but again, this one too when she came in, she's the youngest one in the class. This is the June baby, and I think she looks like a June calf. She's fresh and long, puts together, put together very well. You know, at times it's hard to read her because she's fighting so much on the halter on how she handles herself down low. You know, she might give up some of that foot size and bone structure compared to the two ahead of her, uh, but as far as balance and put together and structure, I think she fits into that third spot for me. I love this heifer on the stand that comes next. A big power top, big hip, wide base type of female. And you get really start breaking this one down and analyzing. I guess the biggest thing, I like to change her hoof shape. You know, it gets a little bit flatter and a little more peak it out through that toe. Get up on top behind that blade on that blade. She opens up, up high. I'd like to narrow that up, have her blend a little bit better from that shoulder into her forerib. But again, I think a real high quality one there as well. This uh, white snipped uh, 
nose tougher that comes next. Again, on the stand, this is another one that really you gravitate towards just because of the way she's designed and puts together from front to rear and ties into that fore rib. We set this one in motion. She's a little stiffer. We've got to change that angle of the shoulder off that front end. I like to loosen her up in that hock when she goes. The white sock tougher that comes next, again, a lot of power, a lot of mass. You love the extra muscle and added dimension that this one has up high, carries it down low, big feet underneath her. When we set this one, too, in motion, she doesn't tie together quite as well, doesn't balance up and hold herself in her skeletal design quite as well as some of the other heifers. But again, I think a really nice female there, again. Young man's heifer that comes next, like I said, long-spined female in this class, tremendous amount of length of hip when you analyze her from hooks to pins. Again, a female that when you analyze her, she doesn't balance up. I like to free her up off of both ends. I like to see a little bit more shape. She gets a little bit flatter through that center portion of her body. I like to see more swoop through that rib cage here, square up just to touch off the hip. Young ladies have her next here. Well, again, like I said, muscle, mass, volume, she has that. But again, you've got to change the angle of her shoulder. You've got to change the angle of the hock. Gets a little bit coarser and plainer through that first one-third for me. But again, I think there's a lot of good qualities there as well. Young ladies heifer that rounds off the class. Nice made type of female. You love the added length that she has from her shoulders back out over her spine. You love the foot that she has underneath her. I just like to change the angle of her shoulder. She gets a little bit jammed up through that first one-third. I like to see that neck stretch out and come out of the top side of that blade just a little bit better. But again, a really nice class to start off your maintainer show. Well, congratulations over here in the maintainer ring. Out of your first class, congratulations. First place was exhibited by Paisley Van Horn of Morgantown, Indiana. Second place in that class, and congratulations, will go to Justin Calhoun of, Calhoun of Farmington, Arkansas. Third place was exhibited by Raylan Shiros of Lakeland, Florida. Fourth place, and congratulations, exhibited by Kinley Smith of Bonham, Texas. Fifth place was exhibited by Emma Yoakum of Hillsboro, Ohio. Sixth place in that class, and congratulations, goes to Lily Williams. Seventh place was exhibited by Kit Pettigrew. And eighth place, and congratulations, is going to go to Eden Christian. We'll now bring in class 18. These will be maintainer spring heifer calves, born April of 2022. Well, extremely nice pair of heifers here in this class uh, to start off. And uh, that you could switch them, and I couldn't argue with you a whole lot. But for me today, I think it's, uh, this one excels as far as soundness when we get her out here on the move. She's just a little freer and easier on both ends, just has a little bigger foot, sets down a little nicer on that foot and leg, uh, probably a little longer sighted. I appreciate that about her. Just a heifer that's really complete. And uh, for me today, uh, I think she wins it just on the sound. So you get to looking at the paper, you don't really see a number that separates the two of them that much, but uh, a nice heifer. Uh, not taking anything away from this heifer that's coming out here in second. She's maybe just a little shorter sighted. Granted, she's maybe a little deeper. She's got a lot of hairs on her, on her belly that makes her look like she's got a lot of swoop to her belly. But uh, again, she's maybe just a little shorter sighted. Maybe just a little stiffer right there when we get her on the move as far as in her hawk and her structure. Toes out ever so slightly right there off that front end. The next heifer is one that I think she's got a lot of future to her. She's obviously given up some uh, weight per day of age. A little greener right there in her center rib. We just need to deepen her down, give her a little more cow look compared with the two heifers that's right in front of her. The next heifer does have that center section. She just gets a little plainer up there in her throat latch. Got a little more extra skin there that I'd like to see. Really good hip. Uh, 
just like to stretch her out, give her a little more of a maternal look up to her front end compared to, you know, she got a little terminal look there right there at the top of her crest. Half around that the class is one that sure catches your eye with her color. She just gives up some performance, foot size, bone size compared to the half person in front of her today. Well, congratulations over here in ring one. Results of class five, early spring heifer calves. First place in congratulations, bred known by Emma, Emma McLaughlin of Woodsfield, Ohio. Miss Silky Bow, 0422. Second place in congratulations went to Ryan Wickard of Wilkinson, Indiana. Third place was exhibited by Dason Cash of Fay, Oklahoma. Fourth place went to Harley Holman of Garber, Oklahoma. And fifth place in congratulations goes to TSW Cattle of Marlowe, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in Class 6 over here in your Shorthorn Plus show. This will be early spring heifer calves.
Well, I apologize for taking a little bit more time here, but again, the <clears throat> top end here is really good. Uh, these cattle are they're different in their own right, but qualities that I appreciate about both of them. And, it, and I had to go back and forth in my mind which way I wanted to go. And there's, I, I wouldn't say there's a perfect one in here as far as structure. Um, so you kind of got to give some give and take on what you're going to accept and what you're not going to accept and how, how you want to play that out. But uh, these two females are really, really good. I, I, I like both of them. Uh, the female that I started off with, I, I guess the biggest thing that she has, I guess I like the way the neck comes out of the top side of her shoulder just a smidge better. It's a little bit higher neck set, slope to that shoulder. She does have more power and mass as you analyze her. Now with that being said, with the mass and dimension that she possesses, you know, she might be just a smidge shorter spine as well, but I think she balances up nice for her, her length of body, her depth of body, the amount of bone that she has, her footwork underneath her, and the shape to that lower portion of her rib cage. I think everything balances up real nice. The young man's heifer here, you know, the cow man in me likes the added length of dimension in this female. I, I love her overall design, her makeup. You know, she's not quite as soft-centered as maybe the heifer that's ahead of her, but she's also longer-bodied. So you gotta, gotta take that in effect on how much internal dimension you want and what shape you want that in. But she also balances up very well. At times when we set this one in motion, like I said, I'd like to take her net set a little bit higher out of her shoulder blade. And when you set her in motion every now and then, she gets a little bit tighter in that spine just behind that blade, just a smidge. But again, she might be just fighting the halter here a little bit here today. But again, I think two high-quality females on the top end. You know, when this calves came in this class, this is the one that just strikes you and grabs you. I mean, she has such a show ring presence to her, her overall femininity and design. I love the length and extension she has through that front end. Everything ties together and balances up. On the stand, this one is impeccable. She gives you an overall super great look. When we set this one in motion, that's where I get disappointed. She gets a little bit on the outside of her hoof. Uh, when she travels away from you, I'd like to see her widen out at the base when she gets out and goes, but that one on the stand is awfully, awfully good. Again, the cow man in me loves the overall maternal dimension in this female. Big rib, big middle type of female, long spine, nice square level hip. This one, when we set her in motion, we need to change the angle to her shoulders a smidge. We need to flex her off her hock just a bit more as well when she goes, but again, I think a really good individual. Kind of an intriguing one here the young man brings us. Really neat design, very exquisite in its overall makeup and the way she's made. Big top, big quarter type of female. To me, she gets a little bit too tight in that flank. I'd like to see a little bit more maternal dimension to the lower portion of that rib cage as well. Young man's heifer comes next. Again, I like this one as well. She's for overall length of body and what she possesses out that hip. Uh, when you set this one in motion, it gets a little bit shorter off her front end. It gets a little bit shorter coupled off the rear. The red heifer that rounds off the class, I, again, I think there's a lot of good qualities, a lot of maternal look here as well. She just gets into a class that just gets overpowered out here today. But again, I think a little bit more time on this one. She has all the right pieces and parts uh, going to develop into a nice female. Nice pair of heifers on the top end. Over here on your Shorthorn Plus side, uh, I took a little extra time on these two. I think they're extremely close. Uh, I'll be the first to admit I'm giving up maybe just a little bit of foot size and bone uh, with the heifer that I'm starting the class with uh, compared to the one in second. But uh, I think she's just a little cleaner in her overall makeup. I worry about this heifer in second as she gets a little older. She's carrying uh, way too much condition for me for a heifer this age. I'd like to green her up just a little bit. I think it's going to start restricting her movement. She gets maybe just a touch straight up there on that front end. Uh, the heifer that we're starting the class with, uh, when you look at the paper, she excels over this one in second as far as her uh, growth numbers and yearling numbers, and uh, you really appreciate that about her. Uh, but again, I think I just I think it's just uh, the freshness of them, uh, and maybe just this heifer in second just gets a little straighter. I just like to clean her up just a little bit. She just maybe gets a little restricted in that movement from being a little carrying a little more condition than I'd like to see. Uh, the heifer that's coming out here in third, uh, she's one that has a big square hip. She just doesn't quite have the soft middle in her that the two right in front. Uh, you get to looking at the paper, she's definitely uh, one that's going to work as far as your cavities numbers and one that you like as far as uh, uh, that part about her. But uh, she does give up a little bit of growth numbers when you get to, get to looking at her. Uh, another one uh, coming out here next, just gets a little straighter off that hind leg. 
Really like the way she ties in together up through that front end. She too just does not quite have the soft middle in her as compared to the ones in the front end, but she's one that you know, like that extra extension she has up through that front end. You, you really appreciate that about her. Then we get into a heifer that really catches your eye. You like her middle section. Uh, you like her color pattern. She's one that just is too frail from the ground up. I need to give her just a little bigger foot a little more bone when I get to looking at her, soften her up in her middle for me, maybe just gets a little sloped right there from hooks to pins. The next heifer is one that they're probably going to have a tough time keeping her chest floor in her. She's already a little wastier in that chest floor. That front end gets a little coarser for me today, but again, from there back, that's a really nice heifer. I'd like to see her stride out just a little better off those hind legs. And the heifer that we're rounding out the class with, she's one that's just a little longer in her toe structure for me, one that I just need to deepen up as far as her flank get her to tie together a little better right there in her heart. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Plus Ring. Results out of class six. First place and congratulations go to Eli Matthews of Muldrow, Oklahoma with EMS Montana Primo X 2501. Second place and congratulations goes to Ella James. Third place exhibited by Hearts and Diamonds Cattle Co. of Warden, Montana. Fourth place in that class, and congratulations will go to L.H. Show Cattle. Fifth place exhibited by Campbell Thomas. Sixth place in that class, and congratulations to Isabella Delgado. And seventh place exhibited by Abigail Green. We're now going to bring in class seven over here in ring one. These will be early spring heifer calves. This will be your final class before division.
again, we get another class of April females here, and certainly the quality here on the top end is, is really good, just like the last class. And again, there's differences here all the way down through the line, and I just sort through through my mind what I, I think best balances up, which one puts things together a little bit better in a more complete package, and I guess the young lady's heifer for me kind of fits that bill. I, I love the added length, I love the added extension, I love the way the neck comes out of the top side of her shoulder, she transitions from that fore rib into that center cavity there and carries that all the way out through that flank. Just does an excellent job of design and put to, putting together. You know, at times this one, when you set her in motion, maybe just slightly struggles just a little bit and gets a little bit tighter right behind that blade. But again, I think the amount of mass and power that she handles, she covers her track. I think she's uh, well put together and deserves to win this class. You know, that one too, she's plenty of push in the envelope for me for size, and then we come into one that's probably pushing an envelope as far as moderation, but I think both of them are really good quality type of females, and I'm not here to decide what size cattle you should be breeding or what you should be raising. I just think both of these cattle are really good. They're just different in their overall makeup. I love the stoutness and the added dimension that this one has through the center portion of her body. She's not quite as sleek fronted as a class winner. She's not quite as long bodied as a class winner. But you love the foot and bone structure underneath her, the added dimension that she has. She's really powerful from the ground up, carries that power all the way up. She also blends front to rear, balances up from that fore rib into that center portion of her body. Just not quite as long and as extended as a class winner, but I like that one a great deal. Young man's heifer here, again, this guy's done a good job. I, I really like this heifer. She's just a little bit greener in her overall package. She has so many good things. And you, you get up on top of them and you actually analyze her and you get, up, get behind her. This thing is really stacked full of red meat. She's powerful and massive, but yet still has a maternal and feminine look to her as well. She gives up some of that body dimension. What gets her into third holes, I think she travels around the ring and handles herself structurally on the go better than our heifer that comes in fourth. But nice job, young man, there with your third place heifer. I like this heifer on the stand. She gives you a really nice maternal look. The cow man in me likes to turn and shape to that inner portion, center portion of her rib cage. I love the swoop to the bottom portion of her rib cage. We set this one in motion, though. She gives you an attractive look. Set her in motion, she gets a little bit stiffer, a little bit coarser on the go. I like to flex her hock just a touch better when she gets out and travels. The blue roan heifer coming next. Massive, big bodied, big body cavity on this one. You like that about her. With all that mass and body, she gets a little bit plainer through that first one third. Gets a little bit roller, rolls out her hip just a touch. I like to level her spine down, bring those pin bones up just a touch more. Black and white heifer here too. This one's got a lot of muscle up over her top, down through her quarter really bulbous when you get behind her uh, but again with that she gets coarser on the move we need to change the angle to her shoulder just a smidge as well that for that rounds off the class again a little bit more modern in her overall package long body long spine big hip uh, but again we just need to have a little bit more maternal look I'd like to see more shape through that center portion of her body I'd like to see more swoop to the lower portion of her rib cage but again a nice pair of heifers on the top end Well, what a really nice uh, class of March heifers here, and uh, these top two are fairly close for me. I'm going to start with the heifer to me that I think is just a little stouter from her hooks to pins, maybe just a little longer sided. I think the heifer in second maybe uh, uh, droops just a little bit when you get right behind her, not quite as good in her pin set as the one we're starting the class with. From the shoulder back, this is a pretty powerful female here, and she really is sound. When she gets out and moves, she sets down on a really good foot and leg. If I change her, maybe right there in her chest floor a little bit, uh, she's maybe carrying a little more there than I'd like to see, but uh, boy, from that shoulder back, that's a pretty powerful heifer to win this class. Uh, the heifer that's coming out here in second, you like that extension up through her front end, and as we talked, she may be just a, just a little shorter-sided, not quite as stout right there in that pen set compared to the that we're starting the class with. Then the young man's heifer that's going to come out here in third. One that's really attractive from a profile standpoint. When you get right behind her, she's probably just not quite as uh, muscular as the two right in front. She gets just a little shallower right there when you get down in her twist and uh, down in her uh, stifle. Just not as soft right there in her flank area compared to the two heifers right in front of her. Uh, the heifer that's coming out here next, another one. Love her front end. You like the way that uh, neck comes out of that shoulder. She too just gives up some softness in that center. Maybe not as stout right behind, 
not as soft in her middle section, but that's one I think her better days are still ahead of her. She gives up just a little bit of foot size compared to the ones right in front also. Then the heifer that's coming out here next, maybe just a little plainer right there in her head uh, when you get to looking at her, not quite as good right there from her hooks to pens, a little narrower tracking, not quite as big a foot and leg as, again, as the heifer's front. Heifer riding an outfit class is one that's just a little greener in her overall makeup, just not as stout, doesn't move off her hind legs quite as attractive as the heifer's in front. Well, congratulations back over here in the maintainer ring. Results out of class 19, first place, and congratulations on Tim Addison Griffin of Kiwana, Oklahoma. Second place, and congratulations, we'll go to Samantha Van Voris of Bowling Green, Ohio. Third place, exhibited by Tucker Roberts of Roth, Oklahoma. Fourth place in that class, exhibited by Ellie Hurt of Liberty Hill, Texas. Fifth place was exhibited by Kristen Jensen of Hampton, Nebraska. Sixth place and congratulations goes to Sean Hurtline and seventh place congratulations to Kate Sherrill. Now over here in ring two we have class 20 maintainer spring heifer calves born in March of 2022. Back over in the Shorthorn Plus ring congratulations in class seven. First place was exhibited by Sarah Rose Sullivan of Dunlap, Iowa with Saul RG LC. Miss Dreamy to 16 KET. Second place in that class exhibited by Madeline Berg of Osage, Iowa. Third place went to Mark Inskeep of Lafayette, Indiana. Fourth place and congratulations will go to Campbell Thomas of State Center, Iowa. Fifth place exhibited by Tyler DeGroote of Egerton, Minnesota. And sixth place exhibited by Crow Creek Farms of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in and over here in ring one. We'll be selecting your champion reserve early spring ever calves. Well, if you would, let's put our hands together for these uh, females in this first division. This is a really good set of heifers here. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about them, but uh, I feel like they uh, deserve a little bit of attention. Uh, the young lady that won this first class, she's one that I think her best days are still ahead of her. She's really green in her overall makeup. You like her up through that front end. You'd maybe stouten her up right there from her hooks to pen. The next young lady's heifer is one that I just love, her hip structure. I like her the way she sets down on her foot and leg. Absolutely really like the way she uh, comes out of that front end and that shoulder, clean down to her chest floor. Uh, one that I think is going to be a tremendous cow and one that's really sound when we get him out here on the move. Uh, the next heifer was in a class that was uh, pretty tough. This was one that uh, I liked an awful lot. She's maybe just a little plainer right there in her neck area, but she too was uh, really athletic out here on the move. One that's really deep bodied, make a tremendous cow. The heifer that won the last class, boy, from her shoulder back, you, there's not a lot of holes in this one. Uh, she sets on her. Really good foot and leg. Uh, really appreciate that about her. Big footed. Maybe change her right there in her chest floor. Make her a little more extended up through that front end. Give her just a little bit of femininity. Uh, again, this has been a great uh, uh, division to start off with. And with that being said, I'll go out here and I'll select your champions. Well, congratulations over here in your Shorthorn Plus ring. Your champion in that division coming out of Class 5. Congratulations to Emma McLaughlin with 
of Woodsfield, Ohio, with Miss Silky Bows, 0422. And your reserve team in that division coming out of Class 7. Congratulations to Sarah Rose Sullivan. Again, a nice, <clears throat> excuse me, another nice class of females. Young lady, let's go ahead and turn that one right around. Uh, again, we find out how struggles are in the cattle business when we're not cooperating out here today. But uh, again, I think a nice place to start here in this class. When she comes in, you just gravitate towards her. I mean, she is so well designed. And from the ground up, she's so flexible off of both ends, covers that track. You know, is she the boldest and biggest bodied one out here? No, but everything matches up. She's got plenty of capacity. She's got plenty of internal dimension, plenty of shape, <clears throat> and yet still has that exquisite look, very feminine. I love the way the neck comes out of the top side of that blade. A female just balances up so nice, gives you a really nice look from the side, real easy place for me to start. We're going to next heifer here, and maybe not quite as long-necked as our class winner, but again, a female from the shoulders back. Boy, this one's made good. She's got good shape, good depth to her body. I love the lower portion and softness to the center portion of her body. You know, when we set her in motion, she's not quite as flexible as our class winner. Maybe gets a little bit shorter hip from hooks to pins as you analyze her. But again, I think a real high-quality one there in second as well. I like this greener heifer coming third. I think as far as putting the most fault-free things together, she best fits into this scenario. Uh, she's good structured from the ground up, she's made nice, she's level made up over her top, out through that hip, but one that just gives up some of that extra shape and extra pizzazz compared to the two heifers ahead of her. Young man's heifer that comes next, uh, we can lead that one out, buddy. Come on out. That's, this is a nice, another nice big rib cage, maternal looking type of female. 
you know, she gets plainer about her head and plainer about her neck. Her neck set is a little bit lower compared to some of the heifers that are out here. But from the shoulders back, you have to appreciate the overall maternal look that she has. I'd like to take that tail head down into those pins just a touch, square her out through that hip just a bit more. But again, I think a really good functional type of female. It's kind of a hard read on this young man's heifer that comes next. I like the overall dimension that this one has, the length of body that she possesses. You know, she handles herself fairly well on the move as you analyze her from the ground up. She gets a little bit tighter up top, doesn't quite blend from front to rear and tie into that fore rib, into that center portion of her body. I'd like to soften her up through that center portion and lower portion of her rib cage as well. But again, I think a lot of good in this female as far as foot and bone work and structure down low. Young lady heifer that comes next, again, one that just gets a little bit harder middled for me. It's hard to see this as a maternal look. I'd like to soften her up uh, through that middle and give her a little bit more of a cow type of look out here. Gets a little bit hard, but again, she's got packed full of a muscle and she's stout made the way she is. We just need to soften that one up just a touch. This mouse colored heifer coming next, again, really long sided, very feminine. I like the shape to her skull. You just when she transitions into that fore rib like the heifer ahead of her, not quite enough shape to that lower portion of her rib cage, doesn't have that overall internal capacity that I'd like to see. Young man's black heifer that rounds off the class. Again, a heavy muscle type of female when you get up on top of her. To me, again, she gets harder through that center, gets really tight through that flank. I need to soften her up, give her a little bit more of a maternal look from the side. But again, a really nice female on the top end of that class. Well, congratulations over here in the maintainer ring. Results of class 20. First place in congratulations will go to Ella Weldon of Piedmont, Oklahoma. Second place in that class exhibited by Nicole Bartholomew of Chattanooga, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Grace Freeman of Upland, Nebraska. Fourth place went to Kylie Ward of Pawnee, Oklahoma. Fifth place in congratulations will go to J J Gage Pickens of Medill, Oklahoma. Sixth place in that class, and congratulations, Benjamin Burling. Seventh place was exhibited by Jaylee Kelso. Eighth place will go to McKamey Jean, and ninth place to Lindley and Nichols. We'll now bring in your next class. This will be class 21, Maintainer Spring Heifer Calves, born February of 2022. Over here on the over here on the Shorthorn Plus side, another uh, really nice set of uh, heifers here. The heifer we're starting the class with, I think, comes to the top relatively easy for me. This is one that ties together right really well up through her front end. I love the middle section in this one. This is the kind I'm looking for right here. How soft middle she is doesn't look uh, fake. I think that's pretty natural right there uh, when you get to looking at her. I guess if you want to get kind of picky and change her, she maybe gets just a little higher right there in her pen. But uh, again, that's taken away from a, a really good female here to start this class off with. It gets a little closer second through fourth. Uh, heifer I'm going to start with, I think I, I like her middle section off a lot. She's big square hips. She sets down on a nice foot and leg. She maybe just gets a little plainer right there in her front end. But uh, that's a nice female here that's uh, going to come out second.
The heifer is going to come out here in third. Another one I think matches our first two. If I changed her when we get her out here on the move, she maybe wants to paddle out off those rear legs, get side of her skeleton, maybe just a little bit for me today. Uh, maybe not quite as attractive as the heifer that we're starting the class with up through that front end, but I think another one that has a good middle in her and I think going to make a tremendous cow. This uh, red heifer was the problem for me. This is one I like an awful lot on the standstill. Sets down on a nice foot and leg. She's maybe just a little shorter bodied compared to the ones right in front of her. And with that being said, you can see that as far as the weight of this heifer, she's given up uh, 150 pounds or so to some of these heifers right in front of her. But again, I love the condition she's in and I think that's one that's gonna probably go on and be a pretty good one as she gets a little farther in life. The upper that's coming out here next is one that just doesn't have the middle to her, real attractive up through her front end, not as stout from her hooks and pins as the heifers that we're starting the class with. And the heifer that comes out next is one that gets really up there in her tail set, uh, up in her pins. Again, one that's just not uh, quite as attractive down through her middle section. We get her out here on the move. She wants to crank them front feet out. I'd like to get them back under her a little better for me today, make her just a little sounder off both ends. And the heifer that we're rounding the class off with, I think, is one that's really nice. She doesn't tie in quite as good right there at the top of her shoulder into that neck. Just not as stout as the ones that we're starting the class with. But a good set of heifers here in this class. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring. First place in that class will go to Houston Free, Sullivan, Indiana, with CFKLS Dream On. 221 and LXET. Second place in congratulations will go to Stetson Radio Bethany, Illinois. Third place exhibited by Tyler Dotsey of Thurman, Ohio. Fourth place in congratulations goes to Jace Folks of Stratford, Oklahoma. Fifth place was exhibited by Josie Heater and sixth place Cooper Hetrick. We're now going to bring in class 11. These will be junior heifer calves. Again, a nice class here to get into these calves, and uh, this one just hit me right away when she came in. Uh, this this female is just so well designed, and I love her overall makeup and softness in her structure and flexibility. Uh, she's good looking from the side, very feminine. I like the sh the skull shape on this female through that eye socket down through that muzzle, and when you analyze her, she's good to that shoulder gets into that fore rib and then just explodes back. Tremendous amount of internal dimension and overall maternal look, but yet still has that extra pizzazz and power. And again, when you set this one in motion, I think she really handles herself very easily. A little bit lower set to this calf that comes second. I think this is the best next eye appealing type of calf in the class. Again, big structured, big footed down low, maybe not quite as extended. I'd like to take that neck out of the top side of that shoulder. You can see it's a little bit lower set when she comes at you. But again, I think tremendous amount of shape in this one, tremendous amount of look and quality as well. I like the heifer in third, and at times you, you, you got to really analyze her and try and read her. She's almost too loose structured. She just doesn't tie into her spine good into that hip. She gets a little bit looser and wastier when she gets out on the move. But again, the the bone and the volume and the dimension that this one has, I just wish she would tie into better and relax better down that spine when she gets out and travels. Really feminine maid heifer coming here next. A female that's maybe a little bit greener, a little bit fresher in her appearance here today. But with that added freshness, she gives up some of that mass and power down low. She needs to free up in that hock and a little bit tighter in that pasture as well. I'd like to change the foot structure on that one just a bit too. Heifer that rounds off the class, added length, added volume. Female that's a little tighter in her top, kind of rolls out through that hip. I'd like to see her flex and move when she gets out and goes. Use that hind leg and utilize it just a little bit better when she goes on the side uh, profile. But again, a nice class, real nice heifer on the top end. Well, congratulations over here in the maintainer ring. First place in congratulations in class 21. We'll go to Emma McLaughlin of Woodsfield, Ohio. Second place in congratulations goes to Hunter Perrier of Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Gentry Close of Crove, Oklahoma. Fourth place in congratulations will go to Brooklyn Matlock of Indarco, Oklahoma. And fifth place was exhibited by Samantha Graves of Ramona, Oklahoma. 
Now in the ring, we'll bring in Class 22. This will be your final class in this division. Maintainer of Spring Heifer Cavs, born January of 2022. On this class here, I got uh, one that came to the top relatively easy for me. This is one that, uh, she's by far the soundest one out here in this class, and that's what I really appreciate that about her. Does she give up maybe just a little muscle? Uh, maybe so, but I think that's uh, what keeps her so sound. This is one that I like an awful lot, she, and especially when she gets out here on the move. I think that's the biggest advantage she has, sets down on a really good foot and leg. Uh, the heifer that's going to come out here in second, when he gets her parked, she's a pretty nice heifer. I just like to clean her up right there in her sheath area. She gets a little bolder in that shoulder. Uh, you get to looking at analyzing her numbers, man. You're really impressed with her uh, carcass numbers and a couple of her dollar uh, uh, values when you get to looking at her. I, I like the marbling and the carcass weight that she's going to add onto her product. I just need to make her a little better in her shoulder, clean her up in her sheath. Uh, the heifer that's coming next is one of those that we talked about in the last class. Fan is still in park, this one I like an awful lot. But when she gets out here on the move, she wants to get outside of her skeleton. I'd like to see her just move a little freer off those hind two legs for me today. And she just gets a little off there from her hooks to pins. Uh, the heifer that's going to round out the class is one that I, I like an awful lot. She just uh, got in with some pretty good heifers. She's just a little narrow in her pin set, just not quite as soft right there in her middle down through her flank, uh, but a nice heifer uh, uh, to round out this class. In the class of January is over here, and again, uh, there's not one here that just blows you away that says, hey, I'm the one and I got to do it. Uh, one that well, maybe doesn't really impress you at all right off the bat. But again, when you analyze and you break these cattle down, you read them from as far as structure from the ground up, the young man's heifer, I think, is the most fault-free female in the class. She handles herself and stays with, in the, with inside of her skeletal means better than any of the other three heifers in the class, and yet still gives you a nice look. Certainly, we'd like to make her softer, a little bit deeper through that flank. But again, you get her parked and you get her moved. She holds her spine together good gives you a nice look, just balances up nice for a pl nice place to start in this class. We go to a little bit more moderate type of female, and I guess when we get her into second, the advantage she has over the third place heifer, she just handles that hind leg just a little bit better. You know, she gets a little bit plainer through that front end, but again, I think she's bold enough and still has enough maternal look. Takes care of her spine when she gets out on the move, stays with inside of her skeletal means just a little bit better than her third place heifer. You love the overall size and added length of body to this one that comes next. 
one that again when you analyze her through the center portion of her body just gives up that shape that lower rib cage that we need she needs to handle her hock just a little bit better again tends to roll out that hip when she gets on the move heifer that rounds off the class of really big powerful muscle, uh, female as you analyze her as far as muscle up over her top and down through her quarter to me she just gets a little bit more terminal looking not enough maternal look for me in this class here today Well, as we come back out here for this uh, second division championship, uh, uh, four really good heifers here. We're not going to describe them all uh, again, but I think we got uh, two heifers that come to the top relatively easy in this division for me. Uh, that being said, let's give the exhibitors a round of applause in this division. I'll go out here and I'll select your champions. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring. Your champion in this division comes out of Class 10. Congratulations to Houston Free of Sullivan, Indiana. And reserve champion will come out of Class 11. Congratulations to Braley Kreisinger of Hogoten, Kansas. We'll now look to start your next division over here in a Shorthorn Plus ring. This will be Class 14 Winter Heifer Calves. Well, over in ring two, we're going to bring in all those firsts and seconds, and our judge is going to select his champion reserve, Junior Heifer Calf, here in our open, our junior maintainer show.
Well, in this class here on the Shorthorn Plus side, uh, I got one that comes to the top relatively easy for me in this class. I think she's the soundest, uh, she's the best bodied, she's the thickest when you get right behind her. I'd maybe change her right there in that front end. She can maybe get a tendency to be a little straight, maybe not quite as maternal up through that front end, but again, that's taken away from a pretty nice heifer here to win this class. It gets a little closer for second and third. I'm going to go with the heifer that's going to be in second here, just on soundness when I get him out here on the move. She's a little better up there in that shoulder area and that front end. I get a little disappointed when I get right behind her. She's maybe not as spread out as I'd like to see and doesn't have as much spring of rib when I get right behind her. Uh, maybe maybe a little larger on the larger uh, side by the time she gets through growing too, but uh, a nice heifer here to come out in second. The young lady's heifer that's going to come out here in third is one that I think is going to make a tremendous cow. She just gets real plain up through that front end. She needs to travel just a little better for me off these hind two legs. She gets just a little straighter uh, off those two legs uh, in the back there compared to the heifers that's right in front. But a nice set of heifers here in this class. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring. Results of class 14. First place exhibited by Caitlin Berg of Osage, Iowa. Second place went to Lindsay Jester of Moreland, Indiana. And third place in congratulations will go to Addison Dick of Nowata, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in class 15. These will be senior heifer calves. This will be your final class here in this division. Well, if you would, let's put our hands together here in the maintainer side in this first division. Excellent set of cattle out here. And again, I knew we'd see quality uh, like in the main Angus show uh, earlier. Uh, it certainly hasn't disappointed. They just keep coming and getting better and putting a lot of good things together. You know, when you analyze these cattle, and, and for me, you know, you, there's a lot of give and take as far as maybe what you want to do or what you put your priorities on. And... Uh, for me, like I said earlier, I'm a structured guy. I like cattle that are put together good from the ground up, functional, still going to go out and be cows, not just a show heifer, but they got to be able to produce. And I think all these cattle do that very well. Uh, they fit that mold for me. They fit that overall maternal look. Um, you know, so it just comes down to minute details. And I'm sure another guy out here would probably maybe pick things a little bit differently. And I guess I like cattle that are fresh and look like the part that they should be in their maturity pattern and where they're at right now. And you, again, you, you're analyzing these calves and we're going to project these down the road. You know, who's going to come back here as a big bred and
be able to handle themselves and their skeletal design and be able to move around the ring and still be functional, but yet still have that overall look and appearance and presence to them. Uh, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing that's going through our heads right now is which one are we going to put, put our money on that down the road is going to be the one that's going to hold together the best and put those things together in a more complete package. And, uh, and so those are the things that go through your mind when you're sorting through. And I think there's several out here that will certainly do that. And uh, I'm not going to go through and talk them all again. Uh, there's like three or four that really fit me quite well. And, and I think it's really close. Uh, I think uh, as far as who you're going to pick and who you're going to leave stand, it, it, it's really splitting hairs. So my hat's off to you as uh, the breeders and exhibitors and the people getting these cattle ready because you did an excellent job. And this is an excellent set of females all the way down through. If you would, let's give them a nice round of applause. I'm going to get you a champion in reserve. Congratulations to you all. Well, congratulations, your champion here in our first division, your maintainer show, coming out of class 18. Congratulations goes to Chloe Clark of Muldrow, Oklahoma. Well, I think in this class we had one that uh, came to the top relatively easy for me. Uh, I guess her name is Frosty, is what I was told. What a great job this young lady's doing. Let's give her a round of applause. That's pretty, pretty special. Uh, That's a nice effort. She came to the top of this class relatively easy for me. Uh, I think she's really uh, nice up through that front end. She maybe slopes just a little right there, hooks pins. There's a couple toes I'd maybe change on her, but uh, other than that, uh, what a great job this young lady's doing showing this heifer. She pulls her together really well when she gets her stops. She maybe had a little dismayed when we get to walking. She can't hold that head quite as high as other people, but that's a nice heifer to win this class. It gets a little closer from there on. Uh, the heifer I'm going to start with in second here, or come in second, is one that I'd maybe change her right there at the top of her tail head, uh, but she's extremely long-sided. I, I love that extra length of body that she has. She's one that's going to add pounds onto her progeny. Anybody that's uh, fed cattle out knows that extra length of body is going to add pounds onto their progeny, and I really appreciate that about this heifer. Then I switched these next two. This is one that I think is uh, a really attractive as far as her color pattern. I like that blue roan. She's gets maybe just a little plainer right there in her rear, but uh, one that uh, is extremely long bodied in her own right, and she's good, good and square hipped. Uh, one that I think is going to make a tremendous cow. The heifer that's coming out next, maybe just a little disappointing when I get right behind her. She gets to wanting to hawk in when she gets out here on the move for me today. I'd like to make her just a little move a little freer and easier off that rear leg. She gets just a little straighter in her makeup right there. And the heifer that we're rounding out the class, she gives me just a little too much terminal look from that shoulder forward. She gets a little crestier, a little plainer in her head. She gets a little shorter strider when we get her out here on the move. But uh, again, another heifer that if you want to add some muscle and pounds to your cattle, that's one that's really thick when you get right behind her. Well, congratulations back over here in the maintainer ring, the reserve champion in that first division, and congratulations to Denton Cook of Foss, Oklahoma. Back over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring, we have the results from Class 15. Congratulations, first place exhibited by Adeline Grace Blankenship of West Burlington, New York, with NL 5177, Frosty 
147. Second place in that class, and congratulations to Kylie Dameron. Third place, exhibited by Dason Cash. Fourth place in that class, exhibited by Abby Endress. And fifth place, we'll go to Isabella Delgado. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in. Our judge will select his champion reserve, senior heifer calves. Well, as we come back out here for this division champion, we didn't have uh, near the numbers in this division, but uh, we, we stayed pretty good uh, constant with quality. Uh, uh, the red heifer that won the first class is one I like an awful lot. Uh, she maybe has a tendency to get a little straight on that front end, but boy, she's got the nice body shape, big square hip in her. I uh, like her an awful lot as a cow. Uh, the young lady's heifer that just won this second class, uh, what a great job she does showing this heifer. Uh, she's really nice in her body. She's maybe not as deep right there in that flank. And there's a couple of toe structures, as we just talked about her. I'd maybe change just a little bit, but uh, that's a nice heifer, too. So we're going to use the red heifer to win, and uh, Frosty here is going to be your reserve in this division. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring, your senior heifer calf champion. Congratulations. We'll go to Caitlin Berg of Osage, Iowa with F. Rosemary 19001 and reserve champion in that division. Congratulations goes to Adeline Grace Blankenship of West Burlington, New York with NL 5177, Frosty 147. We'll now look to see Class 18, summer yearling females over here in a Shorthorn Plus ring. You know, a nice trio of uh, fall females here in a November-December division. And again, there's some give and take. And I I'm going to be honest, I maybe I really don't have one out here that I truly f completely love and fall in love with. But there's things I like about all of them, and I think there's good qualities in all of them. The young lady's heifer that sorts herself to the top, I think, is probably the most fault-free female. She probably designs and ties the better ties together better from front to rear into that fore rib uh, and right behind that elbow and then down into her flank uh, probably a little bit better than some of the other heifers I like her foot design that's her big added advantage is that she's got a bigger foot and bigger heel underneath her she gets out and travels very nicely the one thing I'd like to change is we set her in motion she does get a little tight in that spine I'd like to loosen her up right behind that shoulder blade just a touch but again a really long-sided very attractive female from the side the black and white heifer, I really appreciate the overall maternal look that this one has. And on the stand, boy, she gives you a nice power type of look. I like the depth from that spine down to her floor of her rib cage. Real maternal looking internal dimension in this female. You know, she's not quite as thick and as long spined as our heifer that wins the class. The biggest uh, thing that I'd like to change about this one, I'd like to change her heel and her foot shape. You know, she gets a little bit flatter on that heel. I think if she had more heel underneath it, she'd be able to flex out just a little bit easier. An effort that rounds off the class, again, added muscle, added dimension, long spine. With all that added muscle, she just is too hard through the center portion of her body for me. I'd like to soften her up and make her look a little bit more maternal looking here today. Well, just a single entry here on the Shorthorn Plus side, and uh, one that definitely could have withstood some competition. I like the way this front end all ties together in on her, uh, a heifer that uh, has an adequate amount of body. When you get to looking at her, sets down on a nice foot and leg. She's maybe just a little narrower pinned, but again, this is a nice heifer that uh, could have withstood a lot of competition. This will be a nice one to compare to the other ones when we get her back out here. 
Well, congratulations back over here in the maintainer ring. Results of class 23. First place and congratulations to Carly Clark of Muldrow, Oklahoma. Second place was exhibited by Emma McLean of Stillwater, Oklahoma. And third place exhibited by Charlie Smith. Now entering ring two is class 24, maintainer fall heifer calves born September to October of 2021. Back over in the Shorthorn Plus ring, we have the results from class 18. First place and congratulations to Brooklyn Frazier of Meeker, Oklahoma with FFF Perfect Chip 1063. Well, nice, uh, extremely nice pair of heifers here, uh, but boy, this one that's winning this class, that's a pretty good one there. Uh, I, I love her body shape. She sits down on a tremendous foot and leg. Is she the most feminine one we've seen today? Probably not, but, uh, you know, we'll, keep, uh, we'll, we'll give a little bit of that up to keep some depth and substance to them, and this one's certainly got it. That's just, uh, from shoulder back, that's a pretty nice one. I like her an awful lot to go out and make a cow. Uh, not taking anything away from this heifer that's going to come out here in second. She's another one of those that's extremely long body. Maybe carrying a little more condition. You can see that when I get her out here on the move. She wants to jiggle back there underneath. Maybe just a little more added chest for her than what she needs. But again, that's a nice heifer coming out in second. Well, congratulations in class 19 over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring. First place ex exhibited by Carter Carnegie of Tulsa, Oklahoma with Salt Fancy Cherry, 1221 JET. In second place in congratulations goes to Lorgan Diffie. We'll now bring in those first and seconds and our judge will select his champion reserve here in your intermediate division. Well, another uh, nice division of heifers here in the Shorthorn Plus. Uh, again, not a lot of numbers, but boy, uh, sure didn't like quality in the uh, three or four heifers that was in this division. Uh, 
Uh, for me, it's pretty easy. The young lady's heifer here is going to win your division. Uh, I guess uh, as we talk, she's so powerful and so much substance. I just maybe stretch her out in her front end just a little bit, but a real nice heifer here to win this division. Then we're going to use the young lady's heifer here that won the first class to be reserved. She is one that is maybe just a little longer extended up through that front end, but she just doesn't have quite the substance, quite the belly that the heifer that we're starting the class with. Nice set of heifers here uh, to win this division. Got a good one there, too, bud. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring. Results of that division, your intermediate champion female. Congratulations, Carter Corney of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And reserve champion will go to Brooklyn Fraser of Meeker, Oklahoma. We'll now look to see Class 22. These will be early spring yearling females. Well, again, a nice uh, trio of heifers here on the Shorthorn Plus side. I think we got one that comes to the top relatively easy for me. And uh, when we get her out here on the move, I think that's where she really excels. She hits her stride really well. That hind foot lands uh, right there where that front foot takes off. I think she's just a little better in her front end. 
uh, but I think uh, the movement is what wins this class for her. She's big, powerful, deep-bodied, uh, really got a lot of depth to rib to her, one I like an awful lot. The young lady, Heifer, that's going to come out here in second. She misses her stride just a little bit when we get her out here on the move. She gets a little shorter strided off that hind leg. Maybe just gets a little straighter in that front end at times uh, when she stops. She wants to get a little uh, spraddled out there. I'd like to get her back underneath of her just a little bit down through that chest floor. Uh, the young man's uh, heifer that's going to come out here in third. Uh, if you're paying any attention to the paperwork, this is one that's going to be an interesting breeding tool when you get to looking at all of her numbers, her carcass numbers and her growth numbers and, and that. That's a, a tremendous breeding piece right there. And not taking anything away from the heifer, that's a nice heifer. She's just a little plainer up through that front end today, maybe a little higher right there in that tail head for me, but a uh, nice heifer here that, again, if you're studying the numbers, that's one that's going to be a, a tremendous breeding piece. Well, congratulations in the Shorthorn Plus ring, first place in Class 22. We'll go to Tyler Dossi of Thurman, Ohio, with SFF, Augusta Pride, 127F. Second place in congratulations, we'll go to some Savannah Vogel of Hamill, South Dakota, and third place, congratulations to Jace Parker. We'll now bring in class 23, early spring yearling females. Again, uh, class falls here in the uh, maintainer uh, side of the ring, and again, there's a lot of differences through this class, and there's a lot of good all the way through there, but everything's a little different, and every, we got different sizes as far as maturity patterns and where they're at. Um, and again, that just depends on part of the country in and where they're going to be as far as how their growth pattern goes. But again, I think uh, two high quality heifers on the top end of this class. And there's some give and take between both of them. You know, the heifer I started off with, again, she's the longer sided, longer spine, longer hip female. She's a female that's got the mo more heel underneath her, a better foot size underneath her. She gets out and reaches and travels just a little bit better as well. Now, with all that being said, you know, she gives up some of that uh, neck and, and extra look maybe through that first one third but again everything matches nice she still looks feminine she's still got that feminine skull shape long muzzle long nose maybe just has a little bit underneath that jawline going into that chest floor but again I think a really nice female you know when you analyze her is she is quite as deep bodied as our second place heifer probably not but with that added length I think she's adequate enough as far as internal dimension and maternal look and maternal sweep to the lower portion of her rib cage. And I think the advantage she also has is that when she gets out and travels, she travels a little bit freer and easier. The second place heifer on the, on the side and on the stand, boy, that she gives you just a striking view. I love the way the neck comes out of the top side of that shoulder. She's true and level down her top, square through that pins from hooks to pins. A female, again, that when she gets out and moves, she covers her track. She just seems like she wants to quick bring that back leg down just ever so slightly, but a real nice maternal looking type of female there in second. Heifer coming third, this is, you know, we get some give and take, and I, I struggled back and forth a little bit in my mind where I wanted to go, you know, is this heifer too green, is she too small? You, you know, that's up to somebody else to decide, actually, as where they're going to be in their, in their program, but I think as far as the structure and balance and design and levelness and staying with inside of her skeletal design and still giving you a nice look and still having all the good, adequate parts that we need, I think she fits into that third hole. Just a really nice problem-free type of female just can't have a, doesn't have enough to compete with the other two ahead of her. Big power type of female coming here next. And I love the overall maternal look. And the cow man in me likes the cow power and the cow look and the cow design that this one has. With that, she gets a little bit tighter in that hock. I'd like to see her flex just a little bit easier. Not quite as exquisite up through that front end, but from the shoulders back, I like the design of that female there as well. I like this female coming next the young man has here as well. Big footed, big boned. She has a lot of good pieces and parts. And with those pieces and parts, she just doesn't tie together behind that shoulder blade into that loin, out through that hip. Gets a little bit pinched in that pin area, and she gets out and moves, gets a little stiffer off that rear end when she gets out and travels. Really long-sided, powerful type of female the young lady has here as well. Again, this one just too much, just, just too coarse for me in her overall makeup and design through that first one third and the center portion of her body, just a little bit too coarse. I'd like to freshen her up and smooth her up just a little bit more. Young ladies, heifer that rounds off the class, again, long spine, you love the overall added length, very feminine skull shape to that female, very feminine shape to that neck as well. She just gives up the overall dimension and design compared to the heifers in the class ahead of her, but again, a nice class of females. Well, congratulations over here in the maintainer ring, class 24. 
First place exhibited by Riley Short of Masonville, Iowa. Second place and congratulations will go to J.C. Perrier of Bartles Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Third place exhibited by Claire Norris of Eudora, Kansas. Fourth place and congratulations will go to Eden Christian of Purcell, Oklahoma. Fifth place was exhibited by Devin Morton of Stratford, Oklahoma. Sixth place went to Liberty Lester of Sentinel, Oklahoma. Seventh place and congratulations to Josie Heston. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in. Our judge will be selecting his champion reserve fall heifer calves. I think uh, we got a close pair of heifers here uh, in this class. Uh, you can switch them and I couldn't argue with you a whole lot. I think the heifer that I'm starting the class with does so when we get her out here on the move. Uh, granted, I'd like to give her just a little more bone uh, with both of these heifers, but I think she's got a little more bone than the heifer that's going to come out here in second. She's just a little better from those hooks to pins, carries it down through her stifle and down into her twist muscle shape a little more than the heifer that's going to come out here in second. I think a real nice complete heifer here to start off this class. The heifer's coming out in second. As I said, when you get right behind her, she just gets a little narrower base, a little narrower right there in her stifle, uh, but a heifer that you like her body shape, you like her up to her front end, I just like to change her right there in her rear. I like to make her just a little stouter from the ground up. The next heifer that's coming out here in third is one that just gets a little waist here in her chest for for me today. She one that sets down on a nice foot and leg. She's maybe just a little shorter body compared to the two heifers that we're starting the class with. And the blue roan heifer coming out here next is one that uh, does have a lot of muscle and shape to her. Really wide base when you get to looking at her, wide top. She's just not as soft in her middle. When you get right behind her, she doesn't have the spring or rib that uh, two heifers that we're starting the class with. Then we get a heifer that's uh, awful stout. She's big footed, big boned. That's going to be quite a breeding piece there to be able to use uh, some different things on her. She maybe just gets a little sloped right there in her front end, not quite as attractive, uh, or right there in her rear end, just not quite as attractive up to her front end. And the heifer that we're rounding out the class, she's one that's high eye appealing when you get to looking at her. I just need to make her a little better off that front end. I need to give her just a little more flank and belly. She gives maybe just a little more of a terminal look instead of a maternal look for me today. But uh, nice set of heifers in that class. Well, if we would, uh, wow, that's pretty loud. If we would, uh, let's put our hands together here for uh, this division and your main uh, maintainer side here. Nice set of heifers, and, and I hope I don't come off, I hope I don't come off wrong or don't misunderstand me, but 
it's a nice group of females and there's a lot of good quality out here. I, I just, there wasn't one that just really I fell in love with that I just said, man, I, I want to go with this one, you know. And, but that maybe is that there's that many nice things about all three of these heifers that are out here. Um, but again, uh, I think there's some give and take and there's some things that you might want to change a little bit about one another. But please don't take me wrong. I think there's really good females out here. Maybe just one that just didn't hit me as hard as maybe uh, earlier in the day or, or maybe later on. But again, I think really good females. To me, I think it comes down to our two class winners. And again, they're both very functional. They're both very... Uh, practical and maternal looking and still have some things you know the the one out of that second class you know for me yeah she's pushing a little bit for size uh, but again I think everything balances up and for her size she handles herself so well and stays with inside of her skeletal means uh, you know the one out of the uh, the first class boy she just gives you a really nice striking look when you analyze her puts a lot of nice things together to me she looks a little fresher she looks a little bit smoother blending from front to rear and top to bottom and that's the advantage that she has here in this division I'm gonna go with the young lady out of the first class and I'm gonna follow up the one out of the second class congratulations nice pair of females well, another nice division here on the Shorthorn Plus side. Uh, the two class winners, uh, I think, are really nice. Uh, they're a little different in types and kind. Uh, the heifer that won the first class is, sits down on a really big foot and leg, and uh, I really appreciate that about her. She's maybe got a little boldness to her shoulder, but, boy, she's got the kind of nice rib shape that I like. Uh, I like her squareness from her hooks to pins. Just, I think just a pre tremendous, powerful female there. Uh, the young lady's uh, heifer that won the second class, man, she ties together probably a little better up through that front end she gives up some substance and maybe gives up some mass to the heifer that uh, won that first class it's a close pair they're difference in type and kind uh, for me today I'm going to use the young man here with the red heifer to win the division and the young lady here that won the second class will be a reserve Well, congratulations over here in ring two. We have the results from your fall heifer calf division champion coming out of class 23. Congra congratulations to Carly Clark of Muldrow, Oklahoma. And reserve champion was exhibited by Riley Short of Masonville, Iowa. Now in the ring, we have class 25 maintainer summer yearling heifers born July to August of 2021. Back over in the Shorthorn Plus ring, results from your junior female division champion exhibited by... Tyler Dosti of Thurman, Ohio with SFF, Augusta Pride, 127F, and reserve champion. We'll go to Tyler DeGroote of Egerton, Minnesota with DeGroote Cherry Primo, 122. Now over in ring one, we're going to welcome in class 26. This will be junior yearling females. Just two entries here on our main, uh, main uh, tainer side. And again, I'm going to leave them as they came in the ring. I think the young lady's heifer here that wins the class just balances up so much nicer. She really transitions from front to rear uh, and from top to bottom. Uh, really good from the ground. She puts a lot of nice things together. She's got the added rib shape through that center portion of her body. She's also a nice feminine looking type of female that's really square and true in her lines. You analyze her down her spine and out her hip. Our second place heifer, the Brockle faced heifer the young man has, again, just a real powerhouse type of female. You know, with that added power and dimension that she has, you know, she gets a little bit plainer, a little coarser through that first one third. I like to freshen her up and make her a little bit more feminine as far as that aspect and get her to flex just a little bit easier off those rear two. But again, nice pair of females here in this class. 
Well, congratulations in Class 25. First place will go to Bailey Malone of Gentry, Arkansas. Second place and congratulations exhibited by Michael Pritchard of McLeod, Oklahoma. We'll now bring in Class 26. This will be your final class in this division. These are maintainers, summer yearling heifers, born May to June of 2021. Well, you get a class of uh, two, a May and a June, and get in this class, we're going to leave them as they came in. And, you know, this heifer that wins the class, again, instead of trying to describe all the things you like about her, you're better off trying to describe what you don't. And I, I really don't have anything I don't like about this female. I mean, she is really good made. She's awesome looking. She's cool necked. She's big bellied. She's good boned. I mean, she's just an awesome built type of female. Uh, just a really nice, easy place to start. Young lady uh, with the heifer in second here, and again, there's things I like about this one too. She's bold through that center portion of her body. She's stout made, square hip. You know, she's maybe not quite as flexible, but she just got into a class with just a super great one here on the, on the top end of this class. But two really nice females. Congratulations to you both. Really like the female on the top. Well, congratulations over here in the maintainer ring. First place in class 26 goes to Ivy Fawcett of Reheights, South Dakota with RKK Izzy 161J. In second place in that class, and congratulations, we'll go to Morgan Neal of Bellevue, Ohio. We're going to bring those first and seconds in. Our judge will select his champion reserve in our summer yearling division. Well, a really nice pair of Shorthorn Pluses here, and it gets... Uh, Pretty close on uh, the placing of these two. It separates themselves on soundness for me uh, just ever so slightly. I mean, there's, uh, there's, you just, I don't know, I guess when you see them coming at you out of the ring here, you look and see if you can see what I see in them. But uh, the heifer that wins the class, I love her body shape. She's not maybe as attractive up to her front end. Don't tie together like the, like the one coming out in second. But when we get them on the move, she hits her stride probably just a little better for me today. Uh, the heifer that's going to come out here in second when she's coming at you, 
ever so slightly, she gets just a little pigeon-toed, maybe just gets out of her skeleton off those hind legs. She maybe wants to twist them out just a little bit. But again, that's a really nice female here too. That's, uh, that's the differences I see in the two of them. But uh, again, uh, uh, you could justify maybe switching them around. But that's two, two nice females there. Uh, the young man's heifer that's going to come out here in third. Big hipped. I mean, just tremendous hip, tremendous shape. Sets down on a nice foot and leg. She gets just a little plainer up to her front end compared to the two we're starting with. Uh, maybe just a little longer there in her teats. Uh, that kind of concerns me a little bit as she goes out here. It uh, goes on to be a, be a cow. But uh, that's a nice female that has a tremendous hip structure in her. The heifer that's going to round out the class is one that's extremely long-sided. That's another one that's going to add a lot of pounds to its progeny. It just gets a little plainer up through that front end for me. I just need to give her just a little more maternal look for me today. Well, congratulations in the Shorthorn Plus ring. Results of that division. First place and your champion going to Samantha Van Voris of Bowling Green, Ohio with CF Mona Lisa, 136 OPXET. Reserve champion in that division. Congratulations. We'll go to Kaya Hendrickson of Charlotte, Montana. We'll now bring in your final class over here in our Shorthorn Plus show. This will be class 30, two-year-old cow calves. Well, again, if you would, put your hands together here for this division and the maintainers as well. Nice set of females out here. Again, it, it, to me, it comes real obvious. And again, if you're ringside, you certainly appreciate the one that's going to win in this division. And again, I think there's good qualities and other heifers behind her. Uh, but again, I think she wins it very easily for me as the young lady out of that last class. I'm going to go up and follow with the one out of that same class for reserve in that division. I think just best fouls her as far as balance and type. But again, congratulations. Nice set of females. I really like this female that wins. Congratulations. Congratulations over here in the maintainer ring. Your summer yearling heifer champion coming out of class 26. Congratulations, RKK Izzy 161J. Exhibited by Ivy Fawcett of Re Heights, South Dakota. Reserve champion coming out of that same class. Congratulations to Morgan Neal of Bellevue, Ohio. What a really nice cow calf pair here in your Shorthorn Plus. Uh, that's. Uh, that's to be commended. This young lady's done a tremendous job. Uh, I think she said the cow is in April and the calf is in April, so she calved right at two, two years old, and she's going to have another calf in March. So uh, to be able to do that, that's pretty impressive. It's pretty hard to keep these cow-calf pairs uh, together and going, but uh, she's to be really commended on that. Uh, this heifer calf on the side of that cow is nice. I know we've seen her earlier, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think I liked her pretty well then. Uh, not taking anything away from this cow, that cow is awful nice. Uh, beautiful udder, probably big enough. Some people she might not be big enough for, but she's 1,432 pounds. I don't know, you know, a commercial guy, that's probably plenty big enough for those and uh, maybe not uh, for some purebred people, but uh, I don't think I want my commercial cows any bigger than that one there. That's going to go out and have a long life and uh, raise, she raised calves like this, that's uh, probably going to be 50% of her body weight when she does wean that calf. That's pretty impressive. Uh, if you would, let's put our hands together for this pair because that's, that's pretty impressive right there. Congratulations. Well, congratulations in your cat calf division. Your champion will go to Sol S T C U L L Sweet Dreams 0510 G T. Congratulations to Kaya Hendrickson. Well, once we get our ring cleared over here in ring one, we're going to bring in all of those division champion reserves in our open Shorthorn Plus show. Our judge is going to select his champion reserve here at the Cattlemen's Congress. Well, at this time, all of our division champion reserves are going to enter the ring over here in ring one. Coming out of your first division, your champion late spring heifer calf. Congratulations went to Charlie, Carly Goats of Oak Harbor, Ohio with Sol's Prima Lady, 25KET. Coming in out of your next division, and congratulations. Going to Emma McLaughlin of Woodsfield, Ohio with Miss Silky Bow, 0422. 
your champion in that next division. Congratulations, Houston Faree Sullivan, Indiana, with CFKLS Dream On 221 NLXET. Coming in next, your champion, congratulations, exhibited by Caitlin Berg of Osage, Iowa, with F. Rosemary, 19001. Coming in out of the next division, champion exhibited by Carter Cornegy of Tulsa, Oklahoma, with Soul Fancy Cherry, 1221 JET. Your next champion in congratulations was exhibited by Tyler Dossey of Thurman, Ohio, with SFF Augusta Pride, 127F. Coming in out of that next division, champion, congratulations, exhibited by Samantha Van Voris, Bowling Green, Ohio, with CF Mona Lisa, 136 OPXET. And coming in out of your final division, your champion cow-calf pair, congratulations to Kai Hendrickson of Charlo, Montana. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not only put our hands together for our champion division winners, but also our reserves as they enter the ring. Well, also at this time, for those of you here in Jim Norick with us, let's put our hands together for our open shorthorn plus judge, Mr. Jeff Gooden, Kingsville, Missouri. Well, first of all, I want to say what a pleasure it's been to be able to judge your open uh, Shorthorn Plus show. Uh, I get to be able to judge the Shorthorn show on Sunday, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, uh, again, I want to thank the Shorthorn Association, the Cattlemen's Congress, for letting me uh, be here to do this. Uh, uh, I told the one young lady here that uh, the Redcoats, I'm very impressed with those kids. They, let's give them a big round of applause. There's not very many breeds where you see them standing right behind the cattle and get them moving. I, I love that. I think that is so cool. I wish uh, maybe some of the other breeds need to latch onto that and do that, but that is very impressive that you don't have to stand and wait for them to get to one to get it to move. And uh, again, that's there to be commended on that. Uh, uh, what a great set of cattle that we have out here. There's uh, three of them that I absolutely love. It's going to be a shame that one of them has to lose, but uh, I guess that's uh, the way it is. Uh, we're not going to talk about them all, but I think you can see the type and kind I like. I like soundness, and we definitely got some sound ones out here. Sometimes you worry about that in some of these breeds, uh, but we haven't had to worry about that today. I want to keep some cow look to them. We'll give up a little bit of femininity to keep some cow look to them, and uh, I think that's what we got to do. Again, it's been my pleasure. I'll go out here and I'll slap your champions. Again, let's give them a round of applause. And congratulations, your grand champion, Shorthorn Plus female here at the Cattlemen's Congress. Congratulations, Houston Faree Sullivan, Indiana, with CFKLS Dream On 221 NLXET. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion female, Soul Fancy Cherry 1221 JET exhibited by Carter Cornegy, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We're going to just take a brief break here in our Shorthorn Ring for pictures before we start back with our Shorthorn Plus Bull Show.
I'll tell you what, uh, this is a one powerful class all the way down through, and, and a, another guy certainly would certainly change things up and uh, move some cattle around, and that's, that's fine, because that's what makes the world go around. Uh, these are all good cattle. There's so many good things about uh, all the way down through this line of females here. You know, when it comes down to it, I'm not going to say that there's a perfect structured one in here, but they're awfully close, okay? Um, so with that being said, I think the heifer I start with is the, without a doubt, the most powerful, biggest base, biggest top female in the class. And with all that power and mass, from the side, she still has that maternal look. I like the sweep to the lower portion of her rib cage. She's stout featured from the ground up, nice foot size, nice heel underneath her, and she can get out and move with all that added power that she has, and yet still have a nice feminine type of skull, nice feminine type of shoulder and neck, you know, is she the most exquisite one that we've seen? No, but with the power and mass, everything balances and matches to that type of female. Nice female to start the class. I really like this female in second on the stand. I mean, she gives you the overall maternal look, the long neck, you know, the sweeping belly cage. When we set this one in motion, to me, she gets a little bit short. I wish she would just get out and grab that ground with that hind leg just a little bit more and cover that track and go. But boy, this is a really good one, and that's the only fault I could find with her, besides giving up some mass and power compared to our class winner, but this one's awfully, awfully good. I like her quite a bit. Third place after the young lady comes out here with, and again, she balances up, follows those two ahead of her, uh, but when you analyze her, when she gets out and travels, she gets a little bit weaker in that loin, gets a little bit choppier and outside of herself as she travels off that rear too. Uh, but again, I think a really good female here that has a lot of maternal look, gets a little bit tighter in her spine. The young lady slows her down. I wish she would just take her and let her go and let her walk because I think she'd relax that spine quite a bit more. Probably the freshest appearing, greenest appearing heifer is coming next. And I guess that's what I appreciate that about her is she is very fresh. And on the stand, she gives you a nice look. She balances up. She's feminine, puts a lot of nice things together. Black white socked heifer uh, coming next here, the young man has, again, <clears throat> tremendous amount of rib cage and power through the center portion of this one's body. And you get up on top where she's got a lot of width and dimension as well. You know, she handles herself fairly well. To me, I don't think she ties in quite as good right behind that shoulder into that fore rib and out into that flank and balances up quite as nicely as some of the heifers ahead of her. But again, I think there's a lot of good quality in that one. The next heifer as well, this female, she gets out and goes, gets outside of herself when she gets out and travels off those rear two, gets a little bit higher in that top, but again, a lot of good quality all the way through this class. Here's a larger framed heifer, and I moved her down a little bit. Maybe I was being a little too hard that she was maybe a little bit bigger, but she's a little different. You know, she's tall and long, long-spined, and you like that. She's just not as soft as those heifers that are placed ahead of her. I'd like to see a little bit more of a maternal look through the center portion of her body from that spine down to her floor. Next heifer that comes, again, a really feminine maid type of female, real cow-looking type of female, and very functional as you analyze here. You know, she just doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. She gets a little bit plainer in overall design and look. But again, you admire the length of body that she has, the length of spine that she possesses as well. I'd like to build her up from the ground up just a little bit more, compete with those ones ahead of her. Young man that rounds off the class again, a really powerful type female. To me, she gets plainer in that chest floor, plainer in that neck area. I'd like to freshen her up and clean her up there, make her a little bit more feminine here today. But again, a nice pair of females on the top end of that class. Good job, bud. We have the results from class 27. First place exhibited by Turner Longacre of Kellyville, Oklahoma. Second place was exhibited by Addison Baumert of Harper, Iowa. Third place in that class exhibited by Sarah Rimple of Athens, Texas. Fourth place exhibited by Braden Hansen of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Fifth place in that class went to Kyler Pettigrew of Yukon, Oklahoma. Sixth place exhibited by McCade Summers of Collinsville, Oklahoma. Seventh place went to Austin Hunker of Bellevue, Ohio. Eighth place exhibited by Ellie Hurt of Liberty Hill, Texas. And ninth place in that class exhibited by Tyler Welty of Leedy, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in class 28. This will be your final class here in our junior maintainer show. This will be class 28 maintainer junior yearling heifers born January to February of 2021.
Really nice trio of females here in this class. And again, the one wins the class does so very handily. Uh, a female that's just really well designed, the way she's put together from front to rear and balances up and structure and foot size and body shape and type uh, just puts a lot of nice things together. You know, she's feminine sculled. She's got that real brood cow type of look, and I really appreciate that about her. She's really powerful in overall design and maternal look in her design as well. Uh, you know, if you're going to change this one, or if I, I just pick on her, and I shouldn't really pick on her because she's a really nice female, I just like to freshen up her underline just a little bit. But I, I understand. I know how it gets this time of the year. These are older heifers. They've been on feed a while. It's awful hard to do that. So I'm being a little critical on one that I think is put together and made really, really nice. For me, the black heifer comes second. Again, as far as structure and her overall integrity of skeletal make and design and length of spine and the way she's built from the ground up, I, I think she follows our first place heifer. Really well made in that area. Maybe a little bit more moderate in overall type and kind, uh, but again, I think a female that's really long-sided has a lot of good things there, just not quite as exquisite as her class winner. I like the overall power and balance of this heifer that rounds off the class. Uh, this female, again, is really square and true out that hip. I love the length from hooks to pins on this female as comparison to some of the other heifers that we've seen today. To me, she just gets a little harder through that center portion of her body, a little bit tighter in that flank. I like to soften her up just a bit through the center portion of her body. Results from class 28 over here in the maintainer ring. First place exhibited by Parker Lockhart of Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. Second place in that class exhibited by Braden Roberts of Roth, Oklahoma. And third place, we go to Caden Graves, also of Roth, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring those first and seconds in, and our judge will select his champion reserve junior yearling heifer. Over in the Shorehorn Plus ring, we have gotten started with your bull show. Class 1, late spring bull calves is currently in the ring. Well, nice way to start off the bull show here. I think we got a bull that comes to the top relatively easy for me between these two. <coughs> He's just got a little more bone, a little more foot to him uh, than the bull that's going to come out here in second. He's bigger hipped. Uh, he's a little wider when I get right behind him, especially down through his twist and his stifle. Maybe put the uh, tail head down in him just a little bit. He gets a little higher there in his pen set, uh, but I really like the way he gets out and moves. Uh, the red bull that's going to come out here in second just doesn't have the width down in his twist, down through his stifle, doesn't set down quite on as big a foot and leg as the bull that we're starting the class with, but a uh, nice pair to start off our, start off our show. Well, over here in your Shorehorn Plus Bull Show, we have the results from class one. First place went to CCF, Maximilian exhibited and bred known by Ethan Crow of Lawton, Oklahoma. Second place in that class, and this will also be your division champion reserve, exhibited by Matthew Goodner of Collinsville, Oklahoma. We're now going to bring in your next class in your bowl show. This will be class four, early spring bull calves. My apologies on the last class. We do have those results. Flips first place went to Matthew Goodner, and second place in that class was Ethan Crow.
Being in our uh, junior yearling division here on the maintainer side, and again, just four really good females out here. And you know, that one class, like I said, that quality, you could have split that class and there'd probably be another set of females out here that'd still be just as impressive that we have standing out here right now. Uh, but again, I think a, a really good set of females. Uh, you know, there's, there's differences between them and it depends on what you want to do. Uh, you know, if you talk about these two, these two class winners, you know, that one out of that first class, you know, like from, I said from the side, you know, she gives you such a nice silhouette and such a nice feminine type of package. What really surprises me and what goes through my head is you get behind her, I mean, this female is powerful. I mean, she is wide and has a lot of dimension and you wouldn't see that you wouldn't think of that when you analyze her from the side that she'd be that powerful and that massive as far as muscle shape and yet still is in a very feminine type of package and I guess that's that's really impressive to me and yet she still goes around and and handles herself around the ring very good uh, that heifer out of that second class you know there was just three in that one uh, but again I thought she fit in there and, and, and rivaled that and won that class very easily and you know if she was in this other class she rivals our class winner and our second place winner as well you know this female you love the overall maternal dimension that she has the center portion of her rib cage and carries that back you know is she as powerful as the other one no but she doesn't have to be you know the one thing that I said like freshen up her underline just a touch when you get in front of this heifer she gets a little bit bolder in that shoulder for me I'd like to tone that down just a touch and tuck her in just a little bit more but again that's being critical of an awful awful good one I think it gets uh, there's one for me that wins this division then I think it gets really close for reserve I think you're splitting hairs but uh, if you would put your hands together because I tell you this is, a, this is an excellent set of cattle in this division well nice pair of bulls here on the shorthorn plus side uh, the bull I'm going to start with I think wins it uh, just in his shoulder structure I think he's just a little smoother uh, right there at the ba uh, bottom of his shoulder I like that about him. He ties together really nice up through that front end. Maybe just a little squarer in his hooks depends than the bull that's going to come out here in second. If I change them, I'd like to change both of them as far as their sheath. Uh, they both may be carrying a little extra sheath, but uh, two real nice bulls here uh, that are uh, real close placing, but I'm going to go with the bull to me that I think is just a little better in the shoulder makeup for me today. Well, congratulations over here in the maintainer ring, your champion in our junior yearling division, exhibited by Turner Longacre of Kellyville, Oklahoma, and reserve champion in that division. We'll go to Addison Baumert of Harper, Iowa. Congratulations to those exhibitors. We're now going to bring in your division champion and reserves. Our judge is going to select his grand and reserve grand champion, junior maintainer females. Back over in our Shorthorn Plus bull ring. Results of class four. This is also your division champion. Champion went to Jacob Nickel of McPherson, Kansas with JN Jungle Cat 261 ET. And reserve in that division. Go to Robert and Beverly Alden of Hamilton, Missouri. Well, just a single entry here on the Shorthorn Plus side, and uh, uh, what a bull. I mean, he's a uh, beautiful color. Do you like that blue roan color? He sets down on a really good foot and leg. Love him up through his front end. I like that an awful lot about him. Big square hipped. Uh, he's another one that uh, I'm going to be anxious to get back out here and compare him to some other ones uh, uh, when we get back out here for the final drive. That's a nice calf to win this class. Well, congratulations in the bull ring. Your junior bull calf champion coming out of class seven goes to Kane Agater of Seward, Nebraska with JSF Kane Pepper CW 928K. We'll now bring in class 10 over here in your Shorehorn Plus bull ring.
Well, at this time, over here in ring two, we're bringing in your division champion and reserves here in your junior maintainer show. Your champion coming out of that first division, congratulations, went to Chloe Clark, Muldrow, Oklahoma. Reserve in that division was exhibited by Denton Cook of Foss, Oklahoma. Coming in out of your fall heifer calf division, champion exhibited by Carly Clark of Muldrow, Oklahoma. Reserve champion went to Riley Short of Masonville, Iowa. Coming in out of the summer yearling division, champion exhibited by Ivy Fawcett of Rehite, South Dakota, and reserve in that division was exhibited by Morgan Neal of Bellevue, Ohio. Coming in out of your final division, and congratulations, we'll go to Turner Longacre of Kellyville, Oklahoma, and reserve champion was exhibited by Addison Baumert of Harper, Iowa. Ladies and gentlemen, here in Jim Norick, let's put our hands together for our junior maintainer exhibitors. Well, another single entry here on the Shorthorn Plus side. And again, uh, boy, what a nice calf that uh, he could have withstood a lot of competition himself. He is one that extremely long-bodied, nice hip, got a long stifle to him, uh, a lot of long muscle to him. Really good up through that front end. Uh, again, this will be another one that I uh, can't wait to get him back out here to compare him to something else. That's a nice calf there to win this class. And congratulations. Back over here in the Shorthorn Plus Bull Show, your senior bull calf champion will go to Chandler Livestock of Springfield, Missouri with AHCL sellout 77J. We're now going to bring in class 15 over here in your Shorthorn ring. This will be late spring yearling bulls. Ladies and gentlemen, over here in ring two, we would like to say thank you to your judge this afternoon, Mr. Scott Beyer of Ringle, Wisconsin. If we can put our hands together for Mr. Beyer. I didn't mean to take up time, but I like that song. But uh, I'll tell you, first of all, again, I didn't work, be back here Sunday, too. But uh, again, I'd just like to thank the Maine Angie Association and the Cattlemen's Congress for inviting me here today and evaluating your cattle. It's been an honor and it's always a privilege and something we take very seriously in our family as well. Uh, I can't, uh, my hat's off to the breeders and exhibitors in the Maine Angus show and the maintainer show. Just an unbelievable set of cattle. Uh, I knew they would be good, but uh, I'll tell you what, there's several classes, boy, it was really tough. There's a lot of quality, there's a lot of future here, uh, good cattle all the way through. Um, we get the, out here in this champion drive, and, you know, there's some give and take, and the, all the quality is unbelievable. So, to me, it, it just comes down to personal preference, and I go back and forth in my mind which way I want to go and which way I want to do, but either way, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, it's splitting hairs between champion and reserve. Uh, I think there's two females out here that are just tremendous. Um, you know, we talk about our calves and those calf classes. And, and like I said earlier, and I know I went against my grain, and I usually don't use a calf 
because uh, I give so much credit to having those big bred females ready and fresh and, and being able to be functional here today. And I know what kind of a job that is to get those cattle in that preparation. So I give those, those older females a lot more credit because they've got a lot more going on right now. And these calves certainly have a lot of future to them. Uh, but again, I think we need to mention these calves because that calf division was really, really good. And uh, a, another guy would probably have two different calves out here possibly. But I think these calves have a lot of future to them. I really like our division winner. Uh, she's got a lot of unique pieces uh, put together very well as far as from the ground up and structure and mass and power and still has that show ring presence and still has that feminine look with all the power and mass that she has. That reserve calf, you know, she was, uh, she's maybe a little bit of a different type. She's maybe more my type of speed as far as a maternal looking type of female, a little bit flatter and smoother, uh, not quite as stout made, but boy, that one I think is awfully, awfully good as well. Uh, just has that overall nice maternal look. We get into that fall division, and again, you know, that in, and I said that, and I hope nobody took it wrong. You know, there wasn't one in there that I just wow, you know, wowed me. There was three really nice females in there, and I don't want to take anything away from these two that are out here because I think they're good, and they, they have a lot of good qualities to them. They maybe just don't have that extra added pizzazz as maybe some of the other divisions, but I think these two falls are very, very good females and very functional and can go on and do a lot of things. That uh, intermediate division, you know, it wasn't very big, and this heifer here, uh, she won that division easy. I mean... Uh, she's just so exquisite in her overall design and so feminine, but yet still very functional. She has that maternal look, has that rib shape and that rib cage. I love the swoop to the lower portion of her rib cage as well. You know, when you set this one in motion, she travels really good. You know, if you're going to pick on this one just a little bit, because we've never made a perfect one, but if you're going to pick on her, she maybe comes together just a touch up front, uh, rolling when she gets them out on the move. But boy, this one's so designed, so neat, and, and so awesome looking from the side, and yet still very functional. I think it's awful hard to make one like that. And we get to that last division, and again, that, uh, that class that these two heifers came out of, like I said, you could have split that class, and you'd have another pair of heifers out here for another division. Uh, but uh, it's very impressive, that whole class was. And like I said, the young man's heifer there uh, from the side, how much power and mass that this one possesses, and yet still handles herself so well on the move and gets around and travels. You know, she is exquisite as maybe the one ahead of her. As far as looking at phenotype, maybe not. But as far as muscle and mass and what she has, yes, she is very exquisite. So there's some give and take, and I go back and forth in my mind, but uh, I just want my hats off to you. I want to thank the junior board for helping in the ring. Very nice job. Let's give those folks a really nice round of applause, and I'm going to look at them one more time and get you a champion reserve. On the Shorthorn Plus side here, uh, we got a bull that comes to the top road easy between these two. He's one that's extremely long-sided, ties together up through that front end, really nice. Uh, uh, one that uh, I like an awful lot. Uh, we'll be able to see him back out here for the champion drive, and he's a, a nice calf, clean in his sheath. Uh, I like him an awful lot. Uh, uh, the young lady's bull that's going to come out here in second just gives up some power and weight per day of age to the bull that we're starting the class with. Maybe just not as attractive on the profile. Sets down just on a little smaller foot. Maybe gets to one up, get up on those toes off those uh, hind two a little more than I'd like to see. Wants to pop them pasterns every once in a while when he gets out here and gets on the move. Well, congratulations, your grand champion maintainer female here in our junior show. Coming out of that final division, Turner Longacre, Kellyville, Oklahoma, with BBR Journey 693 JET. And congratulations, your reserve grand champion, maintainer female here in our junior show, exhibited by Ivy Fawcett with RKK Izzy 161J coming from Re Heights, South Dakota. Again, congratulations to those exhibitors. We're going to get the ring cleared and we'll get started with your open maintainer female show. Back over in the Shorthorn Ring, results from class 15 in your intermediate bowl division. Your champion was exhibited by Mitchell Barrows of Owasso, Oklahoma with TESCC Almighty Zoo 755 JET. 
Second place in reserve in that class exhibited by Stepping Stone Ranch of Edson, Kansas. Now in the ring is your final class here in our Shorthorn Plus Bull Show. This will be class 18 early spring yearling bulls. Well, over here on the Shorthorn Plus side, uh, what a bull to win this class. I mean, he is uh, so big-footed and so sound. I mean, he doesn't miss a beat when he gets out here on the move. He, uh, he's really uh, nice up through that front end. Big square hip. I really appreciate how his hip structure is. Uh, uh, just not a lot of holes in that bull right there to win this class. I'm anxious to get him back out here and compare him to a few others. Uh, uh, the bull that comes in second just overpowers the one that's... Uh, going to come out here in third. I think that's the biggest advantage he has. He maybe gets a little shorter in his stride off those hind legs. I'd like to make him move just a little freer and easier right there off them hind two. But he too is a bull that has a tremendous hip structure in him when you get to looking at him. Carries that muscle shape down through his stifle and down into his twist. Uh, the young lady's bull that's going to come out here in third is one that gets a little wastier in his sheath. He just gives up too much power and mass to the two bulls that's right in front of him today. Well, congratulations over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring. Results out of your final division. Your junior yearling bull champion goes to Schaefer Show Cattle of Hagerstown, Indiana with TSSC BT Limit Up 1099 JET. Reserve champion in that division was exhibited by LH Show Cattle of Americus, Kansas. And third place in that class. And congratulations. Go to Stepping Stone Ranch in Edson, Kansas. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to bring in all of our division champion reserves over here in your Shorthorn Plus ring. And our judge will be selecting his grand and reserve grand champion, Shorthorn Plus Bull. While we bring those division champion reserves in, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and thank our judge once again, Jeff Gooden of Kingville, Missouri.
Well, over here in our maintainer ring, we are going to get started with our open maintainer female show. This will be class 29. Maintainers spring heifer calves born May to June of 2022. Well, if you would, let's put our hands together for these uh, Shorthorn Plus bull exhibitors. Uh, but we didn't have a lot of numbers, but I tell you what, uh, uh, these division champions, uh, when they get them back out here, these six, this is this six really good bulls. Uh, uh, there's not a lot of holes in any of these, uh, uh, in my opinion. You know, you get to some of these shows, you get pretty weak in a couple divisions and no more numbers than we had. Uh, that's, this is, I'm pretty proud of what I got back out here. Uh, I'm going to talk them all just a little bit here, uh, uh, but the bull that won the first division, I think he's one that his best days are still ahead of him. He may be right now is uh, a little weaker in that heart, but boy, he has a long front end and big square hip. Uh, I like that a lot about a lot of, a lot about him. Uh, the bull that won the second division, love the way that front end ties together. He too's really big hipped and big footed, big boned. He maybe gets just a little wastier right there in his sheath. Maybe not quite as long bodied as a couple of the other ones, but uh, he's got a really deep body, so I think that takes away from him a little bit. The bull that won the next uh, division is one that sure catches your eye. Boy, he, he just ties together really nice up through that front end. He's cleaning the sheath really nice up through that shoulder and neck area. Ever so slightly, he maybe rolls out just a little bit when you get right behind him, but he by far is probably the thickest bull that carries it down through his stifle of any of them out here when we get him on the move and you get right behind him. I think uh, that's the advantage he has maybe over a couple of the other ones. Uh, the bull that's next, that's probably where he lacks just a little bit. Boy, from a profile, I like this one an awful lot. He really ties together up through his front end. He too's got a big hip in him. The only time I get this point is when I get right behind him get him on the move. He's maybe, I'd like to spread him out just a little bit. Then the young lady's bull that was next is one again, really up-headed. You like his front end? Maybe just gets a little weaker right there in his heart. Not as soft in his middle as some of the other bulls. Then the bull that won the last division, just big footed, big bone, powerful hip. Like his front end, just not a lot of holes in that bull. Again, it's been my pleasure. And again, I'd like to thank the uh, Congress and the Short Orange Association for having me. Uh, look forward to Sunday. Thank you. Well, congratulations, your grand champion, Shorthorn Plus Bull here at the Cattlemen's Congress. Coming out of that last division, Schaefer Show Cattle, Hagerstown, Indiana, with TSSC BT Limit Up 1099 JET. Really a good class here to start off.
really a good class here to start off the maintainer division and and I think there's some depth and quality throughout this class and, and, and I hope that's an indication of what we're going to see today but with that said the heifer that's going to win this class it's facing backwards right now uh, there was never any question I think that's the one that best can combine structural integrity look balance, has enough power and dimension. Is she ideal just in the way that she handles her spine? No, but I think um, that that one's awfully, awfully good and a good place for me to start. I'll admit, this black and white heifer here that's going to go second um, probably doesn't hit you real hard and, and doesn't come here with the bells and the whistles, but when you lay down the foundations of what good cattle are, I think this is the one that I'm most comfortable with going forward. I think she's got as much reach and go is anything in this class. She's not the biggest. She's not overwhelming in terms of her design and her look, uh, but she's good in her function. She's good in her reach when we ask her to go, and I still think that that one's attractive, so I like that heifer a good bit. Maybe the one that jumps out and grabs you from a look and balance and attractiveness standpoint is the heifer that's going to go in third. And, and for me, she's maybe not just quite my speed. She's a little rounder in her muscle pattern, uh, one that's just a little... I don't know how to describe it, just I, I can't dig on that skull shape and that head, but you want to talk about one that's got some shape and got some power. She's good enough in terms of her structure. That's a neat heifer, just maybe not 100% my speed. I like this heifer here that's going to go forth, and, and one that I think uh, as she continues to grow and develop, I think her build is as good as anything in this class. Uh, maybe doesn't have that extra presence and, and, and put together quite like some of the other cattle that we've seen today. But fundamentally, I think that that one has a bright future. Uh, I think her structure's good. I think her hip and her hind leg design is very, very good. A good functional one's going to come next, and she's a little bit more conventional in her body type, a little bit plainer, if you will, when you study her there at the base of her neck and into her chest, and that's why she just kind of rubs down a little, just a little bit lower, uh, because you can see she doesn't want to go just and give you the most reach on the front side of her skeleton, couple that with this being a little bit plainer overall. Striking one's going to come next, and one that has that look and outlier um, feature, extremely long neck, good shouldered. Uh, it's just when we ask that one to go on either side of her skeleton, I need to free her up. Round out the class with two more moderate heifers. They're certainly functional in their type and kind. Just need a little bit more pizzazz and bells and whistles to move up any higher. Good class of maintainer females. Well, congratulations. Back over here in the Shorthorn Plus ring, your reserve grand champion. Your reserve grand champion Shorthorn Plus Bull was exhibited by Kane Agater with JSF Kane Pepper CW 928K. Again, congratulations to our Shorthorn exhibitors. A special thank you to our junior board and staff with the Shorthorn Association.